lots of other newfangled services. Today, we're still the first. The first bank to offer discount brokerage services and a plus system banking card good nationwide. The first national bank of Omaha. Still the bank Omaha calls first. Member FDIC. It's Sweet 98 Big Guy Bingo. Just five little bingo numbers could win you this classic Rolls Royce Bentley. Or play bingo for your very own Deauville Condominium by Hal Grove. Or bingo for a $10,000 mink coat from Cattleman's Fur Salon. Thousands upon thousands in Broadkey jewelry. Cash, cash. Rec room shop and Richmond Gordon prizes. Listen to Sweet 98 now. If you've been waiting for a truly big sale to come along before you bought new carpet or furniture, the sale you've been waiting for has arrived. Until 9 p.m. today only, Michaels and Council Bluffs is conducting a wall-to-wall -wall clearance of their entire stock. Not just selected items in ugly colors, but everything. All at genuine price reductions. 60 extra salespeople, but hurry. This single-day sellout sale is from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. today only at Michaels Carpet and Furniture in Council Bluffs. It's been a big day in college football. Coach, take a look at the scoreboard, and right off the top, we've got a big upset in the Big 8. Ohio State went down to Norman, beat Oklahoma 24-14. It's got to be a surprise. I saw that game, uh, a good part of it, and Ohio State just dominated the most of the time. Oklahoma fumbled one crucial, uh, crucial point in the game, and they did not look as sharp as they did against Stanford. Texas beat Auburn 20-7. to Longhorn showed that they really are a top-10 team. That was a surprise. I thought at home Auburn might do better, but Texas dominated the game. They had 20 nothing, I believe, at the half. Here's a big surprise. Michigan State beat Notre Dame 28-23. A lot of people picked Notre Dame to go all the way. Right. Notre Dame, again, has stumbled, and I don't imagine Jerry Faust is having a happy evening. Michigan State has always given them trouble, and today was no exception. Arizona, a big win, 45-6 to over Washington State couple of more top 20 teams. Number 8, Michigan, leads number 16, Washington, 24-17 to the fourth. Tulane upset Florida State 34-28. That's a surprise. That was a surprise. And, uh, of course, uh, Georgia and Clemson, I think, played a tie, 16-16 tie. That was sort of surprising. Mm -hmm. But uh, Alabama looked like they might have a pretty good ball club. Right. They win uh, 40 to nothing over yeah. Mississippi. First, North Carolina beat Miami of Ohio 48-17. There's that Georgia-Clemson tie. And Bama rolled 40 to nothing. Ray right. Perkins has got them going early. Right. And uh, then our neighbors over there in Iowa uh, came back. They were behind Penn State for a good part of the game. They uh, come back and won the game 42-34. Penn State now 0-3, coming off the national championship. Two games later on tonight, Southern Cal is at Oregon State. Indiana State is at Florida. Nothing in yet from West Virginia and Maryland. Likewise, Iowa State Vanderbilt's later on tonight. Here's kind of a shocker to Big 8 fans. Wisconsin beat Missouri 21-20. Remember we picked that the other day, Bob? Yeah, well, you picked upset. that one. Right. Uh, Kansas looked uh, surprisingly strong, or else uh, Wichita State is pretty bad. Right. First, K-State and, and TCU, nothing I, I in on think that yet. They, I think they played a night. Right. A, it's Kansas State's first home night game. Kansas State was uh, spectacular this afternoon. Pro or Kansas University, yes. excuse me. They're a... Uh, Maybe a pretty decent ball club, better than we thought. Well, they, they got off to a bad start, but they look good in this game. Depending on how Wichita State had lost their first game, they may not be too strong. But Kansas is looking a lot better. At least they put a lot of points in the board. Now in a couple of weeks, Nebraska plays Syracuse. Northwestern playing Syracuse in the Carrier Dome tonight, one of the other indoor night games. An outdoor, no, this is an indoor night game too. UNO up at the Dakota Dome to take on South Dakota. No score yet on that game, but Ross will have all the highlights tomorrow night with Maverick coach Sandy Buddha on Maverick football. Up next, Ross shows us how this year's Nebraska players feel about this year's Minnesota players. Stay with us. For years, you've been told what length of time your money had to be on deposit. Now, American Charter's Time Access Certificate lets you choose the term you want. Make mine 19 months, then I can pay cash for the car. The longer your term, the higher your interest. I'd like 49 months for college. For as little as $500, you can have time access from American Charter. It's of the people, for the people. American Charter. American Charter. No one sells more appliances than Nebraska Furniture Mart. It's simple. Not only do you get the lowest prices anywhere guaranteed, but now you can get cash back direct from Hot Point on selected appliances. A 17-foot deluxe glass shelf refrigerator, just $4.99.
An efficient counter saver microwave, only four thirty nine. And a sleek hot point pot washer dishwasher, just two ninety five. Nebraska Furniture Mart, truly one of a kind. Northwestern Bell is part of the biggest information network in the world. It moves 90% of all business information, computer data, graphics, video signals, and it's right at your fingertips. The Northwestern Bell Information Network. It opens a world of possibilities. If you have information to move, nothing moves more of it to more places more quickly, more reliably than the information network of Northwestern Bell. Hey, Hey, what's going on? Been like this ever since Culligan started offering water conditioners for a low monthly rate. Oh, how low? That low? No wonder. Uh, I'll get it. Now you can rent the best water conditioner made for a low monthly rate. It pays to call Culligan. Hello? Hey, Culligan, man. To qualify, you must mention this Cornhusker special when you call your Culligan man. Back at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome, the stands starting to fill up some 20,000 Nebraska fans among the crowd of 62,000 expected tonight in the building they call the Hump Dome. Last time Nebraska-Minnesota play was back in 1974. Huskers won that game 54 to nothing. And a lot of people think tonight's game could go the same way. But how do this year's Nebraska players feel about their matchup tonight with Minnesota? Here's Ross Jernstrom. So far this season, the Huskers have looked like the number one team in the nation. Nebraska has outscored its first two opponents, Penn State and Wyoming, 100 to 26. Husker coach Tom Osborne says Nebraska still hasn't been tested, but that may change tonight in Minneapolis. Osborne believes the Gophers might prove to be the toughest Nebraska foe this year, even though Minnesota is picked to finish last in the Big Ten. Uh, we, we were impressed, and I think the players have been impressed by looking at the films of Minnesota mm -hmm. and Rice. Uh, even though Minnesota barely squeaked it out and had to come from behind to win, they had had a lot of unfortunate uh, things, some turnovers, you know, one at their own two-yard line, one at the 10-yard line, and then another one. That, so all 17 points that Rice scored were uh, as a result of turnovers and very short drives. One of the reasons the Huskers might be concerned about this game is Minnesota quarterback Greg Murphy. Last weekend against Rice, Murphy completed 10 of 22 passes for 165 yards in a 21-17 come-from-behind win. Nebraska's pass defense has been suspect this year, especially in the second half. Osborne says that concerns him and could be worse if Minnesota is successful in the first half. He's a junior college player, and this was the first game that he had played for Minnesota, and I'm sure bringing them back to win will give him a lot of confidence and give their team a lot of confidence. And uh, so I expect that they'll play very hard and uh, will be a difficult team to beat. Are you going to have to apply a lot of pressure on their quarterback? Yeah, th that will be w one of the keys to it. Like, you know, any time you go against a team that passes a lot, if you don't get the pressure on the quarterback, then it puts a lot of pressure on the defensive backs. We might come with some pressure depending on how we react, uh, depending if we can get to them with three or four guys. If we can't, we'll come with a little pressure probably. Tonight's game is a homecoming for middle guard Ken Graver. The junior from Minneapolis has become Nebraska's strongest defensive lineman since walking on three years ago. I originally walked on at Nebraska. I was not really recruited by any major schools except for Iowa offered me a scholarship after the All-Star game at Minnesota, but I had already made plans to come down here and everything was, was set on that, so I decided to stay here. Did you ever want to play for the Gophers? Uh, I, I don't know if I... Yeah. I, did, I wanted to and I didn't want to at the same time. I'm glad they didn't offer me a scholarship because then I might have gone there and I'm glad I didn't go there. If Minnesota is going to have a chance of winning tonight, the Gophers must stop Nebraska's Heisman Trophy candidate Mike Rozier. The senior Ibach looks in top form after scoring four touchdowns and running for 191 yards last week against Wyoming. The state game made by Keaton, I, mean, I really couldn't do nothing. The Wyoming game, I guess they keyed on Irvin and the receivers and then left me open a little bit. You know, so, um, you know, our offensive team got so much, so, so many things we could do, you know, we could throw, we could run, we could run options, you know, anything. You know, so I don't think any team could really stop us. Let's hope Mike Rozier is right. This is Ross Jernstrom reporting. Thank you, Ross. You know, in case you're wondering, Nebraska will come out tonight in their visiting uniforms, the white jerseys and the red pants. 
and to help us up here in the booth and help you back at home, they will wear their names on the back of the shoulder pads. Should help us all out in identifying who's got the ball and who's making the big play in this game. Now we've seen how Minnesota, or seen how Nebraska feels about Minnesota, but how does Minnesota stack up against this year's Cornhuskers? We'll be back to meet the Golden Gopher lineup right after this. Household Finance is backing the Vitteritis. I didn't know how our son would feel about his new sister. Naturally, we had to build a room onto the house for her, but I couldn't let him think he was any less important than the moment he came into my life. If your homeowner's working for your family's future, Household Finance wants to back you with a homeowner loan that turns equity into capital for your goals. We're here today giving folks a chance, backing you all the way, Household Finance. Bookcase beds, colonial beds, modern beds, soft-sided beds, big beds, little beds, cheap beds, expensive beds, whatever style you're looking for, the Rec Room Shop is the place. During our gigantic waterbed liquidation sale, prices have been slashed on our entire inventory of quality waterbeds and bedroom furniture. Now you can have a complete waterbed, including frame, pedestal, mattress, liner, and heater for only $114.98. At the Rec Room Shop, and we say prices have been slashed, we mean it. Hurry down today to the Rec Room Shop, 970 South 72nd. Back live at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome in Minneapolis, you see the Golden Gophers of Minnesota warming up in the field, getting ready to take on the Cornhuskers in about 15 or 20 minutes. Now, to give you an idea of what it's been like in the Minnesota camp this week, Coach Joe Salem has really been on edge for much of the week. In fact, Coach Salem went so far as to throw us out of his practice the other night, obviously not excited to see any members of the Nebraska media, and for the first time in recent memory, as long as anyone can remember, Coach Joe Salem actually closed the Minnesota practices to his own Minneapolis media. That may be an indication of how he feels about this Nebraska game tonight. But how will Minnesota stack up against Nebraska? Let's take a look at the Minnesota Golden Gophers. One national magazine calls Minnesota the worst team in college football. They may not win the Big Ten, but they were good enough to beat Rice 21-17 last week on the road. Coach Joe Salem has made some wholesale changes on his staff, a staff that guided the Gophers to a 3-8 and eight season last year. One of the new additions is offensive line coach Lawrence Cooley, a former player and assistant coach at Nebraska. Uh, I found myself very comfortable there. I've got a lot of great friends. Uh, not only the, the coaches that were there, but outside uh, the athletic field. And also, I, I grew real close to a lot of the players. Yeah. Uh, they were good kids. Uh, and the most of the ones that are here right now that we'll be playing against Saturday uh, was my first coaching experience. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it was tough. With Cooley's knowledge of the Nebraska system and the players, it gives the Gophers a little extra this week. I think it helps us preparing for them because I know some of the minor things, some of the little things that uh, we could not pick up on film mm -hmm. or by word of mouth, uh, yes. Now, how much it's going to help us? Well, you know, we can't go out there and play football for them. Quarterback Greg Murphy leads the Minnesota attack, an offense that should give the Huskers a handful of different looks. As a player, Murphy is similar to one of Nebraska's quarterbacks. I would probably compare him to like a, a Craig Sundberg in the fact that he's a good passer, uh, does not have a lot of speed, uh, is very intelligent, and is a good team leader. And that is actually why he won the battle at quarterback for us. Uh, he came from a junior college that won 22 straight games. Uh -huh. And uh, his leadership has come on over, and uh, he, he leads our team well. Uh, Tony Hunter, who was sick most of two days and who was hurt also, uh, missed most of two-day practice. In fact, we just got him healthy for the first game. I think he'll see a lot more action uh, this week. Uh, Alan Reed, who broke the trap for a touchdown that, that won us the Rice game, is just a little fire plug who will give you 110% on every play. Uh, he's back from last year. We expect a lot from him. And then uh, Dave Puck, who's our fullback, who picked up 94 yards. He's a uh, big 6'3", 210-pound fullback. They'll just hammer up there. Cooley says that this week there's been one big question on the Minnesota coaching staff. Well, how are we going to stop it? Well, you don't stop them. You stop phases of their offense, but you don't stop them completely. Um, I said, take away some of the things that you can take away. I go and then go out and play football and hope that your players can rise to the occasion, and hopefully Nebraska will put the ball on the ground. With all his Nebraska ties, Lawrence admits to some mixed feelings as the kickoff draws near. I get nervous right about right now. Uh, there's, like I said, there's a lot of good friends, not only on the coaching staff, but even within the players. And uh, 
After this game, I wish them the best of luck. I really do. But we're going to give them all we got. I want to thank Lawrence Cooley for taking the time to talk to us about his Minnesota Golden Gopher team. Up next on the pregame show, we'll meet a former Minnesota resident turned Nebraska quarterback. Ross Jerstrom talks to Dennis Burge, and we'll look at the Metro Dome right after this. This card brings you the best way to bank all over town. Now it also brings you a free gift and a chance to win a Caribbean cruise for two. It's the call of the wild. And Ford answers with Bronco 2, a brand new kick in four-wheeling. The new smaller Bronco 2 takes rough terrain and snow in stride with four-wheel drive. Inside, there's a round-town comfort for four and split-fold seats for extra cargo. And Bronco 2 is just the right size for easy maneuvering in tight places. Plus, V6 power no competitor can touch. See the all-new Ford Bronco 2. It's a brand new kick. Come in for a test drive today at your Metro Ford dealer. You're gonna like the freedom when a new day is dawning. You're gonna like the freedom. Fresh coffee's here for you. In our neighborhood, we start our day with 7-Eleven coffee. We love the fast service and delicious blend. What a way to start the day. Come on, start your day with that great steam and brew. At your 7-Eleven, freedom's waiting for you. Which items are among the hundreds on sale during the Brandeis Super Sale? Yeah, A. Missy Fall Coordinates. Wow. Five to three, three B. Van Usen Sports Shirts. Eleven ninety nine. Wow. C. Carter's Sleepwear. Oh, it's me. D. A twenty piece stoneware set. That's for me. E. Jansen Crewneck sweaters. Looks e. F. The entire stock of fall dresses. That's it. No, fall dresses. It's, I hope it's, a it's all of the above and lots more. Hey. Super savings throughout the store. Only at the Super Sale at Brandeis. Sale in Sunday. This plaque was presented to a Carter Lake foster family at the White House last June because the family represents traditional American family values. Nominations are now being sought for the second annual Great American Family Award. If you know a family deserving of this honor, call 345-9118 for a nomination form. The stadium is filling up here in Minnesota as the Golden Gopher Marching Band entertains the crowd before tonight's Nebraska-Minnesota game. This game has special meaning for a man who grew up in Minnesota, but became one of Nebraska's greatest quarterbacks. In fact, Bob Devaney says he may be his greatest quarterback of all time. For a look at Dennis Claridge, here's Ross Jernstrom. 20 years ago, the star quarterback of the Nebraska football team was Dennis Claridge. The former Husker signal caller is now a dentist in Lincoln. Tonight's game against the Gophers has a special meaning for Claridge, since he came from Minnesota. Is that right? You're getting yours off? Today, Claridge is a successful orthodontist in Lincoln. When he attended the University of Nebraska, he was Mr. Everything. In 1963, Claridge led Nebraska to its first conference championship in 23 years. He also scored on a 68-yard run in the Orange Bowl to help Nebraska beat Auburn. The Huskers finished the season at 10 and 1. Those are great memories for Claridge. His office contains several reminders of his days as a Husker quarterback. On his shelf, Claridge keeps the Tom Novak trophy, presented to the Husker senior who best exemplifies the courage and determination of the Nebraska Center. Claridge came to Nebraska from Minneapolis, but in the fall of 1959, he was thinking about playing football at Minnesota. In fact, I was enrolled there uh, in the fall, had my books, uh, dorm room, everything was all ready to go. Uh, Nebraska came up and beat Minnesota uh, the week before school started, and I went down and asked uh, Bill Jennings if he'd still like me to come to Nebraska, and he said yes, so uh, I came back to Nebraska. Four years later, Claridge went back to Minneapolis to play the Gophers. Minnesota was a national power at the time. It was the Huskers' second game of the season. A sellout crowd was on hand to watch the game. That game at that time was very important to me because uh, there had been some press. Uh, uh, the coach up there at that time, Murray Wormuth, uh, wasn't real happy. There were four or five kids from Nebraska on the team, um, uh, from Minnesota on the Nebraska team, excuse me. Uh, there were some kids uh, there that I had played against that were on the team, uh, Minnesota team. 
uh, I was really nervous and uptight. Claridge had a good reason to be nervous. On Minnesota's second possession, the Gophers tossed a 45-yard pass all the way down to the one-yard line of the Huskers. Two plays later, the Minnesota quarterback scored a touchdown to give the Gophers a 7-0 lead. But Claridge brought the Huskers back. Nebraska drove 37 yards behind the running of Willie Ross and Bruce Smith. Then from the 8-yard line, Claridge rolled left and kept the ball himself for a touchdown. The game was all tied up at 7-all. That's the way the score stood until the fourth quarter. Nebraska had the ball in its own 35. Claridge went back to pass and tossed the ball downfield to Tony Jeter for a 65-yard touchdown. The Huskers held on to win the game 14-7 over Minnesota. It was uh, a real thrill, uh, mainly because I was recruited from by Minnesota, you know, and chose to come here. There were a few hard feelings uh, along the way on both sides, I think. Uh, Minnesota had gone on and won the national championship, I think, in probably 61. And so all my buddies and everybody in Minnesota said, boy, what a sucker that Claridge is, you know. He could have stayed here and been on the national championship team. Tonight, Claridge is in Minneapolis for the game. And what's his prediction on the outcome? My true feeling is probably about 60, 60 to 65 to 10 to 14. Um, I would like to think that it would be closer than that. Uh, I really don't think it will be. This is Ross Jernstrom reporting. Two thousand college football fans standing and singing the national anthem, echoing through the cavernous Hubert H. Humphrey Metro Dome. You know, this really is quite a place to play football. Quite a building from the outside, and quite a building from the inside. Let's take a tour inside the Minneapolis Metro Dome. The Hubert H. Humphrey Metro Dome first opened in the spring of 1982. The building is owned by the state of Minnesota, and construction was financed by a $55 million municipal bond issue. The dome seats 62,000 for football and 55,000 for baseball. But what makes this building different is the roof. Ten acres of Teflon-coated woven fiberglass supported by 20 giant fans within the stadium. The fans literally blow the roof up like a balloon some 190 feet above the playing surface. This morning, the Minnesota Twins played baseball against the Toronto Blue Jays on this same field. It takes the stadium crew just a couple of hours to restripe the field, cover the bases, and lower the pitcher's mound into the floor. It's an ideal place to watch a game. The fans tell me there is not a bad seat in the house. But how do the Nebraska players and coaches feel about playing in it? Uh, it's gigantic. It's, you know, it's a little different than we're used to. It's just, uh, it's so big, and it's going to take a little time, I think, adjusting to it, maybe. Defending on passes, will the roof and the lights cause you any problems? I think it might help because you can judge, might be able to judge the ball and see where really, you know, at the outside, you, every once in a while with the wind and everything it varies, but in here there's no wind, so I think it could possibly help us. Well, it's nice looking, but I don't know how, how easy it'll be to play. The lighting seems kind of difficult, and the ground's pretty hard. Does it make a difference playing indoors? Uh, not really. It won't be cold. Yeah? yeah? No wind to worry about. No, I don't have to worry about a wind. I heard the ball carries real good inside there, so I'd be able to get some deep passes. Does it change the way a defender might see the ball? If you've got a ball in the air and a guy's got to look up and judge it against the ceiling, would that change? Yes, I think that will because, like I say, the ball carries real good in here, and then with the lighting, too, you know, it would be real difficult to judge a ball. Well, I've been impressed with it. I think, I think it's, uh, you know, I haven't seen it really situated for football yet. I guess they've got a few more seats to fold out, but I would imagine there wouldn't be any real bad seats in the house. And particularly uh, later in the season, I can imagine it would be a real asset because, you know, they can have some cold weather as we can in Nebraska. And uh, so it's, it's real nice and uh, it appears to be a, a good playing surface. It's not AstroTurf, which we're used to. Mm -hmm but it's the same surface Oklahoma has, so maybe it'll get us ready for Oklahoma. Do you think it presents any problems to your team adjusting to the building? I don't think so. We, the doors are a little harder to get open because of the air pressure. You know, it looked kind of bad if some of our linemen couldn't get the doors open. You know, we'd feel like we had to go back to the weight room. <laughs> we got some coaches who couldn't do it. No problems as far as, as the lights or the ceiling no. adjusting no. to that? No, it's a nice place, so we're... It might be loud. That's the only thing I'm worried about. You know, if we yeah. can't hear our snap count, but there's nothing we can do about that. Despite
crowd seems to be split in loyalty. About half of the people here are for Minnesota. The other half are all wearing red, and they're for Nebraska. Coach, what effect do you think the crowd will have on the team tonight? Well, I don't think it probably have a whole lot of effect. I think the crowd noise is more amplified in an indoor enclosed stadium like this. So it might make it a little harder for the audibles to be heard by the team. The quarterback will have to call them out a little louder. But uh, it, it, I think uh, you're right that the crowd is about evenly divided. Coach, we're about 10 minutes away from kickoff. Tom has got the guys back in the locker room now. What are you telling the team? What are the last minute things you're going through before you come back out of the field? Well, they're going over a few details uh, that they hope they haven't missed along the way. It's just kind of a summary of things. And the coach at this time is thinking back and thinking, now oh, I've covered everything I can during the week and that. But actually, these last few minutes, uh, they might be cautioning somebody on, on some look for something on a kickoff, like a throwback or something like that, or, you know, just something unusual that they might bring up at the last minute. But most of the time, they're just getting them pulled together, unified, ready to go out in the field and hope that they have covered everything that they should have during the week. For player and coach alike, is this kind of a nervous time when you're waiting to get out of the locker room and onto the field? Yes, it is. It's a time when uh, you have the butterflies while you have them there. Do they set up the first play of the game when they're in the locker room? Do they know when they come out of the field what they're going to run on the first play? Uh, yes. Usually the coach will give them the first two plays maybe of a series. And then, of course, the quarterback will have a right to check off in certain situations. And then from that time on, why Tom can send the plays in or the opposing coach can send the plays in either by a position player, like I think we use our ends a great deal in relaying plays. Other teams might use guards or backs, but... Uh, they send the play in then, and of course they leave to the quarterback. They will let him call some plays, but when they start the game, the quarterback knows what he's going to see or what they believe he'll see, and they have some plays that they'd like to have him try. Now, I know one thing the coach talks about in the last few minutes is what the captains will do with the coin toss. This game being inside kind of eliminates all the variables in that coin toss, doesn't it? Well, yeah, if you, if you win the toss, you better take the football because the wind is no advantage in here. Is Tom saying to these guys, now look, we've got to play Minnesota like any other team, or is he saying we can beat them and we should beat them big? What do you think his speech is? Well, I don't think Tom will say that we should beat them big, Bob. Uh, he may down this, I think we have a chance to do this. But Tom is very cautious, and he don't let a team get overconfident. So I think he'll try to go out there and point them for this ball game, saying that they're starting out even and they have to prove who's the better team, because I, I think the thing he guards about very carefully is overconfidence. How about underconfidence on the other side? Does Minnesota fear Nebraska, do you think? Well, I, I'm sure that Joe Salem has tried to build that team up to where they think that they can beat Nebraska. And I think those players are going out there knowing that they have a chance, but they know they have to play very well. Coach, the teams are about ready to come out on the field. We'll be back to give you the starting lineups as we anticipate the kickoff. So stay with us. You and your Subaru ready to take on any challenge in any weather. Experience that confidence in a Subaru from National Auto, where our selection will surprise you. Choose from many stylish Subaru models and colors, and cost not as much as you might think. And when you deal with National Auto, even less. National Auto, two blocks south of South Road's Bellevue. For Subaru selection and deals, come challenge National Auto, the dealer with the right stuff. Last year, 90,000 high school graduates joined the Army. Some came for the challenge, some for the excitement, some for the new Army College Fund. For every dollar they put in, Uncle Sam puts in five or more. So after two years in the Army, they can have up to $15,200 for college. Call for your free booklet on the Army College Fund. You'll be in good company. In the Army. Uh, yes, I'd like a hamburger with extra tomatoes, no pickle, no onion, and... Step aside. Uh, uh, step aside. Step aside. Please, step aside. Step aside. Kindly step aside. Sir, a step aside. At some hamburger places, when you order special toppings, they say you'll have to wait. Sir. And could you... Step aside. At Wendy's, you can order your hamburger with whatever toppings you want and get it without ever having to step aside. You want something better. You're Wendy's kind of people. Donahue, weekday mornings at 9. Live from the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome in Minneapolis, Minnesota, 
Channel 7 Sports presents NCAA football. From the Big Ten, the Golden Gophers of Minnesota take on the number one ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers. With exclusive coverage of tonight's game, here are KETV Sports Director Bob Cullinan and University of Nebraska Athletic Director Bob Devaney. Sixty two thousand football fans on hand of the Metrodome tonight anticipating the kickoff. We're waiting for the two teams to arrive on the field and coach it should be a great ball game for Carlisker fans tonight. Right. There's a tremendous amount of re enthusiasm up here tonight Bob and as we mentioned before there's a lot of Nebraska people. We had a tough time getting tickets from Minnesota but they, the fans seem to have gotten tickets someplace and I'd say we have at least 20,000 people in the stands here from Nebraska. You know I think it speaks well for the Nebraska population and for the Nebraska students as well. Some 700 tickets were turned back into the Minnesota ticket office the other day. Unsold tickets from the Minnesota students. Uh, you hardly ever see unsold tickets at Lincoln. No I think uh, out of uh, 51,000 students I think only about 4,000 of them bought season tickets according to the report I have where at Nebraska, there's usually about uh, 400 or less out of the whole student population that don't pick up their student tickets. Coach, the, uh, the co-captain is just coming out of the field now. There's been a couple of minutes of delay here as they get everything ready in the Metrodome. Does that bother you as a coach to, to have to sit too long in the locker room when you're ready to take them out in the field? Uh, it does, Bob. And playing a night game when you're not used to playing night games is difficult in itself. Uh, Tom has had to find something for these players to do all afternoon. And by this time, ordinarily, the game is over. And so it is a problem with a night game, and any time you stretch it longer doesn't help any. Coach, the captains are coming out of the field. We'll be back with the starting lineup and the kickoff of the Nebraska-Minnesota game right after this. Always planning, always hoping, someday soon the door would open. Trying hard and working steady, we're together. Now we're ready, life just got better. We knew you could do it. Life just got better. That we have to do it. Guarantee mutual life just got better. The Office. Without organization, it is confused. A vast wasteland. Shepherd's Business Interiors creates a new dimension of work environments with steel case systems designed to breathe life into your inanimate world. Office potential converts to productivity as people in their environment reach full efficiency. Office systems for today and beyond at Shepherd's Business Interiors, 42nd and Dodge. Curtis Mathis National Trade-In Days are on. Oh, George, I can't wait to trade this old TV for up to $300 off on a Curtis Mathis video recorder or camera. Ah, wow, with a four-year warranty. Oh, audio equipment or color TV. With a four-year warranty. Oh, a big screen TV or gorgeous cabinet. With a four-year warranty. Oh, with their exclusive four-year warranty. That means quality. National Trade-In Days now at your Curtis Mathis Home Entertainment Center. Anthony's has a special invitation. You're invited for dinner. Anthony and his entire staff are waiting to make your visit with us a real memory maker. Our award-winning menu brings you the best of steaks, seafoods, or salads. All prepared to give you a special taste treat. Fabulous food, fabulous entertainment. You're invited for dinner at Anthony's tonight. live at the Metrodome. Both, uh, both teams now out in the field. Coach, I think uh, an equal amount of, of applause for Nebraska and for Minnesota. Right. I think the Nebraska fans, while they might be slightly outnumbered, they're a little more enthusiastic. The Minnesota fans have to be sold, I think, on this football team. Out of the center of the field, the captain's just coming off the field from the coin toss. Nebraska won the toss, and they will receive. Nebraska will defend the south end zone here in the Metrodome. That is the left side of the screen as you look at it. And Nebraska will come out, of course, with Turner Gill at quarterback, the fullback, number 25, Mark Shaleen, the I-back, Mike Rozier. And, Coach, uh, you can't say enough good things about Mike Rozier. Well, Mike Rozier is truly a, a great candidate for any honor, such as the Heisman Trophy. And that wingback they got in that backfield, uh, Irving Fryer, is just a great football player. They have a, they have a great, great backfield. Vance Carlson, I talked to him yesterday. 
he's refereeing this game. He has refereed about 30 Nebraska football games in his career. Huskers having four captains this year. That's kind of a rarity. Number 64, Mike Tranmer. 61, Mike Keeler. Number 12, Turner Gale. And, of course, number 71, Dean Steinkuhler. Huskers ready to tee up the ball. Kicking off for the Huskers will be number one, Dave Schneider. Schneider, a 5'7", 175-pound player. Out of, or rather, uh, Nebraska receiving the ball. Let's check that again. Deep back for the Huskers is 27, Erring Fryer, and 28, Jeff Smith. Jeff Smith and Fryer are both capable of breaking a uh, run all the way. And uh, I know that Minnesota is very apprehensive here on any kick return because of Nebraska's kick return potential. Kicking the ball off for Minnesota. Let's check, see who that is. That is number 21. Jim Gallery, their kicker. He's a 6'1 senior out of Morton, Minnesota. No breeze, 72 degrees, and an absolutely perfect place to play college football, Coach. Yes, they, they, if they don't get a lot of snow, the only problem they've had with the Metrodome is one time they got a lot of snow and it started to cave in, but I don't think that there will be a problem like that this evening. 62,000 on hand. We're ready to play college football. Gallery will kick it off. Breyer and Smith, the deep backs. And we're underway in the Metrodome. Uh, Breyer deep in the end zone. He'll take this one as a touchback on the 20. There's pretty much of a rule that on a high kick like that, the coach will tell him uh, to stay in the end zone. The chances of him getting out of there back past the 20 are not too great. Nebraska will have the ball first in the first period here. Coming out of Nebraska's offense, number 12, quarterback Turner Gill, Shaleen and Rozier, the fullback and the eyeback. Breyer is the wingback, tight end Monty Ingebrigtsen, at number 83, and getting his first start ever at split end, number 88, Scott Kimball. And this is the most explosive backfield maybe that Nebraska's ever had in the history of the school. Gill brings him out of the I formation. Fryer in motion. Gill pitch back to Rozier. Smothered under at the 21. And Minnesota's really charged up at, at the present time. They stopped Rozier for a very short game, and they showed a tremendous amount of enthusiasm. I think they're going to come after us. I wouldn't be surprised if they try to force us to throw the ball. Here's that big offensive line. Trenowitz, Grimminger, Steinkuller, Sherlock, and Raritan. They average just under 270 pounds per man and about six foot three and a half. Ricky Simmons split to the bottom of the screen. Gill gives to Shaleen, gets a yard, and no more. A second down and long call. Nebraska goes into the middle. It'll bring up a third down and long. We'll call it third down and eight. Uh, here's the interior lineman for Minnesota. Left end is number 95, Anthony Burke. He's getting his first start ever. Burke, a freshman here at Minnesota. There's the defensive backs and linebackers. Watch number 32, Peter Najarian. Nebraska wanted him bad, but he played here at Minnesota. Minnesota's again up very tight. Their backs are almost on the line of scrimmage. Third down and eight. Gill passing across the middle. It's incomplete. It was off of Fryer's hand. Fryer, uh, uh, Fryer had a chance at that ball. That was Najarian in on the coverage that, that time. Was, he said uh, to watch uh, for him. Uh, Najarian really all over the field. It was a diagonal pass and just bounced off of Fryer's hand. Watch. Right there, there it goes. Right there. And Irving Fryer had a chance but couldn't hang on. Nebraska is forced to punt. Back deep to punt for Nebraska. Number 48, Scott Livingston, the junior college transfer from Cerritos Junior College in California. And they're rushing. He left 10 men. They rushed 10 men that time, but he got the kick off. There shouldn't be much of a return. That is Reed on the return for Minnesota. He's driven out of bounds by number 71, Dean Steinkuller. And the Minnesota Golden Gophers will take over. It appears that Minnesota's gambling. They played real tough up close to the line on defense, and they sent 10 men after the punter. Here's the Minnesota backfield. Murphy, the quarterback. Reed is the eye back. The fullback is David Puck. The flanker, Dwayne McMullen, tight end. Jay Carroll and the split end, number 49, Lungan Howard. That was a 39-yard punt and only a six-yard return. That is Reed in motion. Murphy throwing on first down. Has Reed on the right side, and he's tackled down at the 50. Number 33, Dave Burke on the tackle. It's a swing pass, a little swing back pass to the tailback coming out of the backfield. Let's check that, Coach. They said he dropped the ball. They're not calling it a completion. No, they, they, I guess they must have ruled that ball hit the ground. It looked like he caught it from here, but uh, the officials were a lot closer, so there's no gain at second and ten. You see the Minnesota line, Rasmussen, the big star of their line. He is a senior captain. His father also played here at Minnesota. He was a good football player, too. Second down and 10 at the 44. Reed in motion again. 
Murphy looking to pass on second down. Airs the ball out. He way overthrows number 49, Lungan Howard. He had Howard open, and if, if the pass had been completed, it might have been a touchdown because he was behind the defender. I tell you, Howard ran a great uh, pattern on that one. Beat Mike McCashlin pretty bad, but Murphy just couldn't get the ball to him. It'll bring up a third down at 10 now for the Gophers. Here's the Nebraska defensive line. Bill Weber at uh, left end with Mike Keeler, Mike Tranmer, and Rob Stuckey in the middle. Scott Strasburger is the defensive end on the near side. The linebackers at backs, Dom, Knox, Harris, McCashlin, Clark, and Burke. Third down and long for the Gophers. Obvious passing situation. Murphy, a deep drop, looking over the middle. Gets it away and throws it away. It was good coverage that time. Nebraska was playing the pass. They dropped off eight men, and they covered the pass very well. The pass was overthrown, but it, the receiver was well covered. Intended receiver on that one, tight end Jay Carroll. So Minnesota will be forced to punt the ball away. Fourth down to 10. They get nowhere on their first drive. Coach Nebraska's defense has to be proud of this. Yes, and now, now you're going to see something that uh, Fleet Fisher has been watching for a long while. You're going to see a punt return, and they think that either of these two fellows, Burke or Smith or Fryer, could go. But this is a great kick. It's way up in the air. It goes to Jeff Smith. He gets five, maybe six yards on the return. Uh, that punter did a great job. He hung the ball up there uh, a long while. He gave Minnesota a chance to cover the punt. It's going to be hard to get a good punt return if he keeps the ball up there in the air that long. A 42-yard punt by Blanchard. No score of the ball game. 13-21 left of the first. We'll be back. There's a word to describe the Mexican food here at Romeo's. It's primo. That's because every day our chefs start with the finest, freshest ingredients available, then carefully blend and cook them to order from Romeo's special recipes. The result? You'll come back, you'll come back to Romeo's, to Romeo's again and again. So bring your family and friends and join us for primo Mexican food at Romeo's. It's the Mexican restaurant everybody always comes back to. Back at the Minneapolis Metrodome on first down, Mark Shaleen gets maybe three yards. It'll bring up second down and seven. Huskers with the ball now. 13 minutes, or rather 12 minutes, 50 seconds left in the first. No score. Rozier tries the left side, has a big hole. Rozier across the 40. Rozier to the 50, the 45. He could go all the way. Mike Rozier to the 30 and down to the 27. It was a great run by Mike Rozier. He used his blockers very well. He started down the left side. He got some blocking downfield, and then he cut back over the right, and hit the last man made a diving tackle to save a touchdown. A second down and long call. Let's take a look at it again, Coach. Here's Mike going to the ball. He's getting some good blocking here. Now he cuts back against the grain. He shakes off a tackle, and this is the guy right here misses him. Now the diving tackle that you're going to see right here brought him down. He shook, shook off two tackles. There is Mark Shaleen right up the middle for the touchdown. That time the trap play worked. They trap up the middle there, and Shaleen burst into the end zone. Uh, this can be very, very uh, discouraging for Minnesota, these last two plays. First, Rozier goes 52 yards, and Mark Shaleen goes 27 yards. They make it look easy as the Huskers have a 6-0 lead. Dave Schneider on now to attempt the point after. Turner Gill will hold. Huskers have struck fast here in the first period. Uh, Nebraska has tremendous backfield speed. Schneider's kick is up and no good. Schneider misses the extra point with 12 minutes and 20 seconds left in the first period. It's Nebraska 6 and Minnesota nothing. We'll be right back. Coming soon to a mailbox near you. The Envelope, saving you money with coupons and bargains good all over town. Watch for The Envelope in your mailbox this week. At MP Dodge, our sales power gets results, period. Hi, Kim for John Craft Chevrolet. Shopping for a new car or truck? Stop out at John Craft Chevrolet and save, where the customer is always number one. Back live at the Minneapolis Metro Dome, Nebraska with a 6-0 lead. Shalene with a great trap play right into the end zone. And the Husker ground game is really working tonight, Coach. 
Uh, they had two great plays one after another. The Nebraska backfield has such tremendous speed. They have the fastest player in the Big 8 Conference in Irving Fryer at wingback. Mark Shaleen is the fastest fullback in the Big 8 Conference. And uh, Mike Rozier is certainly one of the fastest. And Turner Gill is the fastest quarterback in the Big 8 Conference. So they've got quite a combination of backs in there running the football. You know, nobody touched Shaleen. He blew right through that hole. And that, the, kid, the kid is fabulous. Runs like a fire plug. And that offensive line that is uh, supposedly their inexperience. They only have one uh, starter back, Dean Steinkohler. But that offensive line in the games we played so far have been tremendous. Number 48, Scott Livingston will tee it up. Deep back for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. He is number 24, Alan Reed. Minnesota gets a second chance at the ball here, and it's a short enough kick that uh, they might run it out. No, he's going to drop. He dropped the ball in the end zone. He put his knee down the end zone. The ball went in the end zone. It was sort of a driving kick. They wisely decide not to run that out. Number 35 for Minnesota. That's running back uh, Donovan Small. Wisely not taking that out of the end zone. It'll be gopher ball. First and 10 at their own 20. Now I think we'll be interested, Bob, to see if they come out throwing like they did uh, the first uh, series of downs. They threw three passes in a row. We may see some tricks out of Joe Salem tonight. I think he knows he can't beat Nebraska one-on-one. -on -one. He may put some gadget plays in. Murphy, still the quarterback. Man in motion, 83. That's the tight end, Carroll. Murphy throwing on first down. He's under pressure. Strasburger nails him. Well, the problem with uh, throwing the football like this is that... Uh, uh, the ball, and if they don't make first downs, the ball goes over to Nebraska a lot quicker. And uh, let's check the replay on that, Coach. Watch Murphy roll out. Strasburger comes in off the right side and just flat out runs him down. Right. Uh, Murphy is not a real good running quarterback here. He doesn't have great speed. Strasburger does a fine job. He's a fine defensive end. That'll bring up a second down and 15 now for the Gophers. They are deep in their own territory at the 15 yard line. Nebraska leads it 6 0. In motion is Reed. Murphy throwing on second down. Has Reed in the flat. Out to the 18 and dragged down by Dave Burke. And that is now uh, six passes in a row they've thrown, or five passes in a row they've thrown. Boy, you talk about tendencies. Minnesota all the way with the pass tonight. You wonder when they'll try to run the ball. Uh, I, I think they're going to try to throw it. And, uh, of course, they've got third and long yardage again here. It'll bring up a third down and 10. They're back at the original line of scrimmage. Split wide at the bottom of the screen is Dwayne McMullen. Murphy, the quarterback, single setback is Puck, the fullback. They're running uh, what we would call almost a spread formation. Here's a draw play. That's Puck out to the 26, and he's tripped up there by Knox and Burke. Number 44, linebacker Mike Knox slowed him down, and Burke put the nail on him. First running play gained about six yards, but they had a long ways to go, so he would be forced to punt. Uh, Minnesota's got their players spread all over the field in almost a spread formation with just one setback in some plays. I think they've got to generate a little running game, however. Fourth down and three now. Paul Blanchard back to punt. Interesting story about Blanchard. Blanchard is inflicted uh, with Hodgkin's disease, but he still wants to play football, and he's put in a gallant effort for the Gophers this year. Yeah, he's the son of uh, John Blanchard, former Yankee baseball player. Gets off a good kick. Fryer with the return at the 30-yard line. Breaks away from a tackler and maybe out to the 40. Number 38, Bob Suttler on the tackle. Irving Fryer, a return of six yards, a 39-yard punt by Blanchard. Huskers will take over with 10 minutes and nine seconds left in the first. Nebraska leads 6-0. And every time Fryer gets his hands on that ball on a punt return or a pass or anything, there's always a danger of him going all the way. Turner Gill brings him out at the 40-yard line. Nebraska's running from a wide split out there on the right side. Shaleen on the left side gets a yard, maybe two, until he's dragged down. You know, it's interesting, Coach. Minnesota's throwing almost entirely tonight, and Nebraska keeping the ball on the ground. You, you generally find teams that win the big games that are consistently good are running teams. I, that's, that's right. I, I think that in college football, you have to have a good base basic running game in order to be consistently successful and Nebraska has done this. Give Shalene two yards second down and eight for the Huskers. Gill looking to pass. Has time. Has a man open. 
and overthrows Irving Fryer. Yoke went back, and Fryer was running a down-and-out pattern. He might have had a step on uh, the receiver, but uh, he was fairly well covered on that, and I, I think that uh, Gill probably wisely threw it over his head there. Number seven, Phil Sutton, the left cornerback on the coverage. He's a six-foot, 191 senior out of Inglewood, California. Irving Fryer, what can you say about him that has been said already? Maybe one of the best players in America. Third down now and eight for the Huskers. Nebraska's in a wing formation. That is Rozier alongside Shaleen and Gill passing. Looking for Rozier, now going downfield and overthrows his man. I, I think perhaps, Bob, there was a mix-up in that pass pattern. Uh, Gill, uh, I don't think Gill and the tight end, uh, Engelbritson, I don't think they were together on that pass play because Engelbritson ran right straight down the field and Gill kind of threw a diagonal pattern. So there might have been a mistake there. Fourth down and eight, Livingston on the punt. Huskers ball at their 42. Livingston will hit it from about the Nebraska 30-yard line. Huskers fairly ineffective on that last uh, last series. They'll kick it away. A high snap. Livingston gets it off. It's a good, That's long a kick. Beautiful kick, and it drives him way back inside the 10. This is Reed at the five-yard line. He's smothered. That's a, great, that's a great punt. That uh, puts Minnesota in very poor field position. Reed, a gain of about five yards on the return, and a real good kick by Livingston. 53 yards and absolutely no wind in here, so that's an honest 53 yards, Coach. Yeah, that was a great punt. It hung up there in the air. It gave the, the coverage men great time to get down there, and Minnesota's pinned right back their own end of the field again, and it's interesting. It'll be interesting to see if they come out throwing now because they're in very poor field position. You have the Gophers way back at their own seven-yard line. Murphy brings them out with a single setback. David Puck behind Murphy. Murphy taking a lot of time, maybe checking off at the line. Man in motion. That is Hunter. He gives it off to Puck right through the center line. There's a flag on the play. It might be backfield in motion because I think the man that was going sideways in motion might have started toward the line. We'll see here. David you Puck. Know, I think the penalty is against Nebraska. It's a face mask penalty on the Huskers. Mm. You know the Gophers will take this one deep in their own end zone. This, they want all the breathing room they can get. This will, uh, if, if it's intentional, they can give them uh, enough for first down. They either will give them five or go on further. Looks like Vance Carlson is stepping off five yards against the Huskers. Right. Let's get the call. Nebraska, first down. It's first and ten for Minnesota. They're out on the 15-yard line, I believe. First and ten now for the Gophers. Right. Graber in now at middle guard for Nebraska. Graber, the lone Minnesota native on the Nebraska roster. And they're out on the 20. Murphy brings them up first down and ten. Single setback. Tight end in motion. Murphy looking on the right side. Has it complete to the tight end. Jay Carroll and out of bounds. Driven that, out by Mike McCaslin. That was very great coverage by McCaslin. Uh, he'd have been just a step closer. He'd have picked that off for a touchdown. Minnesota's going to have to watch throwing that pass out there to flat because they were lucky that time it wasn't picked off. Let's see how close that was, Coach. Right. Here's McCaslin right there by him. And... Uh, I think he would have gambled on it if he'd been just one step closer. Yeah, not many people backing Mike up, though, so I think he wisely took the tackle on that instead of going for the interception. It'll bring up a second down and nine, ball to the 20 for the Gophers, and a bit of confusion on the play. Murphy looking over the Nebraska defense. Hunter in motion. Murphy rolling out to the right. He's under right. pressure by Herman. He gets the ball away, and it's incomplete. Well, they, they may have ruled it complete. It oh, looked, I don't know about like that he, one. It looked like he might have trapped the ball, but uh, they called it complete, and it's going to be very close to a first down. Dwayne McMullen on the reception. It looked from this angle like the ball bounced. Yep, Here's another look at McMullen. Watch him coming across and watch when the ball comes in. Take a look. It's going to be kind of hard to see. Ooh. His, his body was sort of covering that ball. Let's put it this way, it was a tough call. Yeah, it's also a first down and 10 for the Gophers at their own 30. Carroll in motion. Murphy passing again. Looking down the middle, it's almost intercepted. Uh, again, it looked like there was a mix up there in the Minnesota pattern. Number 11, Neil Harris almost picked that ball off. It looks like it might have been intended for 83 Carroll, the tight end, but uh, Murphy uh, threw the ball somewhere that uh, the man wasn't. Watch it on the replay. 
Right. He throws a ball here, and, and the closest receiver is a Nebraska defensive player. Right well, I tell there. you, one more step, Neil Harris would have had that. Right. Uh, Minnesota's throwing that ball almost every down, and uh, as Daryl Roy used to say, there's a lot of bad things can happen when you throw the football. Second down and ten for the Gophers. You wonder if they'll throw it again. Murphy calls it out. He's throwing on second and ten. Across the middle has a man. McMullen and can't get it to him. McMullen had his man beat that time. Neil Harris on the defense, but Murphy just threw a bad ball. Uh, you're right. Uh, Minnesota has two first downs. One is the result of a penalty and uh, one on a pass play, a questionable pass play, but they're in a uh, long yardage situation now, and it's, it looks like they're going to go with, they're going to win or lose with the pass. Boy, it really looks that way. Murphy is three of seven now for only 17 yards, and the Gophers have a third down and 10 and at their own 30. They're in a spread formation again. They got three, uh, four receivers. That's Hunter in motion. Murphy wants to pass again. He's under a lot of pressure, gets it away, and it's incomplete. And again, the receiver was pretty well covered. He had a guy in front of him. He had a guy behind him. Lungeon Howard, the intended receiver on that one. It'll bring up a fourth down and 10, and Blanchard will have to punt it away again. You know, we talked about Paul Blanchard uh, being afflicted with Hodgkin's disease. They say he is probably the most inspirational player on this Minnesota team. And ironically, he started college at Creighton University, wanted to play baseball for the Blue Jays, but decided to come here to Minnesota and kick the ball for the Gophers. And Blanchard has done a whale of a job these past two years. Right, and he's kicking it to two of the better punt return people in the country right now. Irving Fryer and Jeff Smith back deep for Nebraska. Signal for a fair catch. It was wise. The ball hung up there for a long while. Jeff Smith signals for the fair catch with seven minutes and 46 seconds left for the first period. Huskers have a 6-0 lead. We'll be back. When supermarket hassles get you down. Oh, is this the express lane? Reach for the freedom of 7-Eleven. Like Milk is in aisle 6B4, right behind 12-7A. Like and even when your supermarket's closed, look for these signs at 7-Eleven for prices that will match or even beat supermarket prices. So why put up with supermarket hassles? At your 7-Eleven, freedom's waiting this season's forecast for ice and snow is unknown, but at Tire Zinc, we fear no forecast with the Explorer, Kelly's newest all-season radio. And we fear no competition because the Explorer starts at just $28.50. Tire Zinc remains number one because we offer you the highest quality at the lowest price. Before you buy any type tire, shop Tire Zinc last. We won't be undersold. Good shot of Tom Osborne on the sidelines. His Huskers have a 6-0 lead. A 43-yard punt by Blanchard. Turner Gill will bring him out first down to 10 at his own 27. To give inside to Celine, he gets a yard, maybe more. Uh, Minnesota is gambling very much on defense also. Uh, they're way, right up on the line of scrimmage. They have their entire team within a couple of yards of the line of scrimmage, and they're, they're trying to force Nebraska and Pierce to throw the football. But, of course, when they have all up so close like that, if you break a run like uh, Rozier did, you might go a long way. So far, Rozier unofficially two carries, 53 yards, second down and nine. The give to Rozier on the left side, across the 30 and driven out of bounds. Mike Rozier, the all-purpose running back. They've got to be keying on him all night, Coach. Right. Mike can run inside. He can run outside. Unlike uh, Marcus Dupree, who runs great outside but doesn't run very well inside, uh, Mike Rozier can run up the middle. He can run over people. If he has to block, he can do that. And he's a great all-around football player, runner, passer, pass receiver. Third down and five for the Huskers. Shaleen, the lone setback, Rozier in the slot to the right side. Fryer out wide to the left. He throws it to fire. It's complete. That's to the 50. All the it's way. off to the races. It is goodbye touchdown. Uh, there was nobody anywhere near Fryer. Irving Fryer, a great-looking touchdown. Turner Gill got the ball to him on the quick out, and nobody is going to catch number 27, Irving Fryer. What a great play. There, there had to be a, a mistake on the coverage there at Minnesota because there were two 
Nebraska pass receivers out there and only one Minnesota player out to cover them. And Fryer, the fastest player in the Big 8 Conference who can run a 4.2340, there is nobody going to catch him behind. I don't think anybody in the country is going to catch him. Irving Fryer on single coverage, he goes 68 yards on the touchdown. Huskers now have a 12-0 lead. And the question here, will they go for two or the automatic one? The semi-automatic one, I guess. Here's the replay. Watch. Just a quick out to Irving. And there it's he off is, to the all race. alone. There's nobody anywhere near him. Irving Fryer on single coverage out there. Let's see who tried to run him down. It's, it's kind of a futile effort by number 42. That's their free safety, Andre Harris. A 68-yard touchdown. Huskers are rolling here with the 6 0 lead. There it is again. And, you know, ironically, I think that's the first pass Nebraska's completed. Yeah, and it goes for 68 yards. Not a bad uh, way to open up the pass completions tonight. You know, they say Irving Fryer could be the best athlete on this team, and I think he really showed it there. The ball a little bit behind him. He adjusted to the ball, made the catch, took off 68 yards, and the Huskers have a 12-0 lead. The question now down on the field, will they go for one or will they go for two? They're going to go for two, Bob. Uh, they're lined up over here to side and gives them more, si more room to go to their right. And uh, I think they'll have some kind of an option runner pass here. Jeff Smith now in uh, for Mike Rozier. Mark Shaleen still the fullback. You see Smith just to the left of Turner Gill. Giving Rozier a little bit of a rest here. Not uh, not a very crucial play with the lead, Mike Rozier. But you wonder, in a situation like this, Coach, do you, do you want to get a quick pass off or do you want to blow them off the line and run it in? Well, uh, I, they're, they're set up so they can. they got a wide side of the field over there to their right. And I think it'll probably be some type of a rollout action type of pass. Or they could try to run it. But it, 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 the chances are that they're going to try to use that wide side. Now, of course... There's always a chance that they might try to hit the tight end over here on the left, too, on a, on a quick pass. But uh, usually when the long side of the field's over there, the quarterback will roll out, and he'll either throw or run, or else he'll uh, pitch out to the eye back and see if he can't sweep in there. Let's see if we called it. Nebraska now going for the two-point conversion in the eye. The wide receiver to the right is Kimball. Shaleen and Jeff Smith behind Turner Gill on the two-point try. Gill and rolls out to the left and throws side. it. It's complete. Goes they got the it, Irving Fryer. Right. Uh, Nebraska did not overload to the wide side. They, they switched to the short side of the field where they lined up, but they lined up in a balance formation, and Turner Gill rolled out to his left. Irving blocked. He released. He's all alone in the end zone. Turner lobs it to him, and the Huskers have a 14-0 lead. Unofficially now, we have played eight minutes of football. Nebraska has gained 159 yards. And Minnesota has gained only 25. And as long as Minnesota keeps throwing that ball, that clock does not run. And Nebraska's going to have plenty of opportunity, I think, to play offense. Coach, I look around at the stadium here. Easily half of this stadium, the red-clad Husker fans, Nebraska people really turned out for this game. And I think it says a lot of good things about the team. Uh, the, the Nebraska fans are the greatest fans of any fans in the country. They've shown that many times, and this is an illustration here. Uh, we could have sold probably 15 or 20,000 tickets, but Minnesota wouldn't give us only 6,000. But somehow or other, some Minnesota people must have, might have sold their tickets. There's Irving Fryer and Turner Gill. Livingston will kick it off for the Huskers. Seven minutes and two seconds left in the first period. Huskers have a 14-0 lead. Good boot drives the man back into the end zone. Well, there he decides on a delayed decision to run it out, and that usually is bad. Bringing it out for the Gophers is number 35, Donovan Small. He should have taken that one in the end zone, Coach. You never saw the 20. Right. He, he had uh, little chance, but then he hesitated for a fraction of a second, which cut down his chances. Tom Osborne talking to the offense uh, on the near side here. Osborne diagramming a play. We might see something like this coming in. It's hard to tell just what it is, but right now it seems Nebraska can do no wrong. Whatever they try seems to work. Uh, Tom Osborne has a great offensive mind in football, and, and he'll take advantage of every opportunity that he has. A team can't afford to make a defensive mistake, or he'll pick them apart. Minnesota first and 10 of the 16. Murphy looking to pass. He falls down, tosses it to Reed. Graber uh, tackling him down. He misses him, and it's Dave Burke on the tackle, and Reed gets maybe a yard. Right, they, they, uh, I think they probably figure they've got to mix that run in a little bit. I, I they, they don't have a good enough passing attack to throw that ball every down. Doesn't look like the running game is much better either. Uh, they, they're going, they're going to have problems moving the ball on Nebraska, I believe. 
You see Coach Joe Salem on the far sidelines. He's had kind of a restless, sleepless week, I can imagine, having to face the number one team in America. Second down now for the Golden Gophers. Give them three yards on that one, second down and seven. Murphy looking over the defense and passing on second and long. Well, on the right guy. side, has a man open. Great catch. It was a great catch and a great throw. Number four, Clark Johnson, the second string flanker. He's a 5'10", 173-pound sophomore out of Roseville, Minnesota, a suburb here in Minneapolis. Take another look at that one, Coach. All right. Now, this play wasn't all that badly covered by Nebraska. He was up there pretty close, but not quite close enough. Brett Clark and Dave Burke, but a great catch. Give credit to number four, Clark Johnson. And the Golden Gophers have a big gainer. That's their biggest play of the night so far. Right. That took them out of their territory, right out into the middle of the field now. And they have a chance for the first time to get into Nebraska territory. First down and 10 for the Gophers at their own 48-yard line. That, uh, that had to stun the Nebraska defense a little bit. It may, it may turn out to be a good thing, though. It woke the Nebraska team up. Right. They, uh, that was the best pass that, that uh, the quarterback Murphy has thrown. That was a well-thrown ball. Over on the near sideline, Joe Salem talking to Murphy. You know, they've shown a lot of pass tonight. That's the first one that's really worked. And in Salem's defense, he has put a lot of confidence in Murphy. He's a junior college transfer out of Sacramento, California. He came in last year and challenged for that first spring, or first string job in spring ball. He won it outright, and Salem said, he is my man for the year. There is no question in this camp that Murphy is the quarterback of the team, and Salem has showed a lot of confidence in the kid. Uh, Mur Murphy, I think, is a pretty good quarterback, but uh, so far there's been, you know, he hasn't thrown the ball real well until this last throw, and we'll see now if that's given him enough confidence so he'll do a better job throwing. Murphy with the single setback at the double wing. In motion is Hunter. Murphy loses the ball. Fumble. Who's got it? I think Minnesota, I believe, recovered there. Gophers recover their own fumble. Let's see who got the ball. I think Murphy got the ball back. Just yeah. a bad exchange between Rasmussen and Murphy. Uh, and Joe Salem has... Watch the snap. Let's see what happened. I think Murphy just pulled away too yeah. soon before he, he had like the he ball. He pulled out before he had the football. He's lucky to recover it. Yeah, Mike Knox almost got in on that one. Uh, I think Joe Salem has uh, mentioned that he thought they could throw against Nebraska because Nebraska doesn't have great speed in their defensive backfield. It'll bring up a second down and nine for the Gophers. Now a gain of one on the fumble. Murphy, again, draw play. This is oh, Reed. He is dragged down by Graber. That's real, that's real fine coverage there. Middle guard Ken Graber, the Minnesota native, so far playing a very fired-up ball game. He just blew right past his man. And nailed Reed on that one. Graber probably one of the real, I guess you could call him a free spirit type of player. Uh, Graber is, is a good football player. I think that he was uh, kind of disappointed that he wasn't recruited by Joe Salem. Right. I think he's a Minnesota player, and I think he, he uh, was not recruited, I don't believe, by Minnesota. Give them a loss of eight. It'll be third down and 17 for the Gophers. The defense loves a situation like this. They know they're going to pass. Murphy under a lot of pressure. He's nailed at the 31. Number 96 in on the defense for Nebraska. Let's check. That is Jim Scow out of Omaha, Ron Colley, and linebacker number 51, Mark Dom. Nailed Murphy way back. Here is Mark Dom. Watch him blow right through the line. In three plays, Minnesota lost a total of 18 yards there. And uh, now they're forced to punt from back in their own territory, about the 32-yard line. Dom hit him low, and Scow hit him high. And the Gophers will have to punt. Fourth down and 27. Blanchard in for the kick. Gets a good snap, gets the ball away, receiving for Nebraska. A little lower kick this time. Takes Irving Fryer takes it at the 32. Gets up to the 40, and he's driven back to the 38-yard line. 344 left for the first. Nebraska with a 14-0 lead. We'll be back. Newcomers to Omaha back in 1863 found a rough and tumble prairie town. And they found us, the first national bank from Omaha West. Our first president founded Creighton University. And through the years, we've always been first in serving our community. Today, we're still the first. With a Plus System banking card good nationwide, discount brokerage services, variable rate loans, and more. The First National Bank of Omaha. Still the bank Omaha calls first. Member FDIC. From the furnaces at Ford, it's Mustang GT. The boss for 1983. Hot 
new styling. New four-barrel carburetor, a five-liter high-output engine. The Boss, the 175-horsepower Mustang GT. One heart piece of American steel. Come in for a test drive today at your Metro Ford dealer. Three minutes, 44 seconds left in the first period. Nebraska with the ball at a 14-0 lead, Coach. And you wonder if they get the ball in on this drive, it might demoralize Minnesota pretty bad. Uh, you're right, Bob. Uh, Minnesota didn't get off a real good punt. Nebraska's out in good field position. Gill gives to Rozier right through the middle. Gets maybe two or three yards across the 40-yard line. Check that now. That's that was Jeff, uh, Smith, Jeff Smith, I believe. Smith, number 28, carried that time. You know, it's one thing Tom has done this year. He has alternated a lot of players in the backfield. There are so many good backs back there. He's giving everybody a chance to play. Right. He's got a, a group of good backs, and uh, uh, it keeps them from being injured. If they don't get too tired in there, there's less chance of injury. Give him four, second down and six. Gill runs the option, pitches off to Smith. He's got some room in front of him. Jeff Smith to the 20, the 10, touchdown! Look at him go! He is nobody's going to touch him. Uh, there's a flag back here. Uh, I, I don't know what, but, but there's a flag back on the 45-yard line in Nebraska. I don't know if it's on Nebraska or not. We'll see. It's a clip, so the touchdown will be called back. We'll bring it back. Good effort by Jeff Smith. See if he can pick up the clip. Where is it? Turner runs the option. It was, a great, it was a great pitch, a great run by Jeff Smith, and a well-executed play. That could have been the clip right there. Yeah. Wide receiver on their cornerback. Andre Harris was the man who was uh, clipped on that play, I believe. He just missed the tackle. Smitty just ran right through his hands. They're going to march this one back a long way. Well, you Let's got get the to... call from Vance Carlson. Flipping on the Huskers will bring up a second down and long for Nebraska. Second down and 25. Jeff Smith's resting now, and you have Mike Rozier back there. Now let's watch. Here's Turner on the option play. Fakes it to Rathman, goes down the line, pitches at the last minute to Smith. And I don't think we'll see the clip on that one. Second down now and long. Gill passing. Delay pattern. It's incomplete intended for Irving Fryer. Number eight. Right cornerback Kerry Glenn, the junior out of St. Louis. Good defensive play that time. He was all over Irving. I tell you what, Turner Gill has mixed things up here pretty well. Of course, I think Coach Osborne is calling a lot of the plays from sending the split receivers in, alternating uh, the two wide receivers there. Third down and 18 now for the Huskers from the 30-yard line. Mike Rozier in a dieback. Gill looking to pass. Over the middle. Irving Fryer is open to the 40, to the 30. He's gone. I don't see. There's no flag there. That's a touchdown. Uh, Fryer again was wide open. Irving Fryer, a 70-yard touchdown from Turner Gill. And the Huskers go up top 20 to nothing. Take a look at it again. Minnesota has forced uh, Nebraska to throw the ball by bringing their people up so close. They gambled, they plugged there, and now they had a one-on-one -on -one coverage, and you can't cover Irving Fryer one-on-one. -on -one. Bill Sutton, the last man to have a shot at Fryer, Irving just flat out ran away from him. Schneider on now to attempt the extra point. It's up and good. With two minutes and 50 seconds left in the first period, it's Nebraska 21, Minnesota nothing. We'll be back. The new WOW radio will make an American dream come true for one of our listeners. Perhaps you. WOW radio has built a dream home that you could win, valued at over $90,000. You can tour this dream home and register to win it in Rose Garden Estates at 168th and Pacific. For more details, just listen to WOW 59 Country or 94 FM Country. The magnificent win -a home from the new WOW. There's more in store for you at Brandeis. Look, come and see what you'll find. There's more for you. <laughs> We're having a good time. Come on. You like what you see. We got it all. So that I can relate. For you and for all that you do. There's more in store for you at Brandeis. 
back live at the Metrodome. Scott Livingston will kick off for Nebraska. Unofficially now, so far in the first period, Nebraska 238 total yards. Minnesota 40 total yards. Coach Huskers are uh, doing whatever they want tonight. Right, and here's another kickoff, and uh, the Minnesota punt or kickoff return man has got him in trouble before. Now he gets the ball right on the goal line. Donovan and Small across the 20. This is the best return. He breaks out to about the 28-yard line. 28-yard return by Donovan Small. You know, his own men really dragged him down that time. He tried to uh, tried to clear a way through, and his own men pulled him down. This this kickoff wasn't quite as high as the others, and he picked it up. He had pretty good chance to run it. It was kind of a low kick, and he had good blocking there, but as you say, he ran into his block. So far in the game, Coach, Minnesota has gained 46 yards passing. They have lost six yards rushing. And right. Murphy brings them out first and 10 at their own 28. They're in a passing formation again. They, they can't generate a whole lot of running from this formation. Murphy back to pass. Looking on the left side. Has a man complete at the 48-yard line and dragged out of bounds. That is number one. Dwayne McMullen. Neil Harris knocked him out. Good play. That was a good pass from Murphy and McMullen. Uh, the thing about it is that... Uh, you see the pass play again here. This is a tough pass to throw. This long out pattern here. Good looking ball really. McMullen playing in the middle to double coverage. Right. Brett Clark and uh, Neil Harris on the defense that time. Gophers best play of the game so far. First down to 10 at the Nebraska 47. In motion is Hunter. The give to Puck. He goes nowhere. Everybody in on the tackle that time. Number 75, Rob Stuckey in there. 51, Mark Dom, and 61, Mike Keeler combined to stop Puck. And maybe a loss of a yard that time. Well, when they have just that one back, that one setback back there, unless the quarterback is an option-type runner where he can go down the line, and the only running play they have is either a pitch or a draw play or a quick trap. And they, they really don't have much of a variety. So they're in this formation, they're much better suited to throwing the ball. Loss of one on the play. It'll be second down and 11. You know Murphy's going to throw here. He fakes the pitch, goes back. He's under pressure. He's got a lot of heat, gets the ball away, and it's complete to McMullen. Complete for a first down. Uh, Murphy kept his poise there. He was rushed badly, and uh, McMullen just kept coming across the field, and Murphy uh, watched him and hit him with the football. It was a pretty well-coordinated play. This McMullen's and, a good athlete. Right, and a certain amount of this was improvised, I believe. Yeah, he saw Murphy scrambling, came back and adjusted to the ball and adjusted very well. Right. Well, th this will uh, give uh, Bob Thornton's defensive backs a pretty good workout. Yeah. First down and 10 now for the Govers at the Nebraska 33. Minnesota putting on their best drive of the game so far late in the first period. The give to Puck on the right side, and again, he gets nowhere on the run. Mark Dom firing in from the linebacker spot. I think Puck might have lost another yard. Mark Dom and Mike Knox are, are two fine linebackers. They don't have great speed, but they're strong, and they, they really tackle very well. You know, you and I talked about it this afternoon. Nebraska not known for fast linebackers. I believe uh, Gettys may have been the only good fast linebacker you had, but these guys are big, and they get the job done. Right. They're, they're good linebackers. They're good, steady linebackers. And, and, you know, Mike Knox used to be a fullback, and he did intercept one pass for a touchdown. Second down and 11. Murphy passing. Has a man complete to Lundgren Howard at the 23. And Neil that, Harris on the tackle. And that time we plugged the linebacker. Uh, Nebraska plugged the linebacker that time, but uh, they, Murphy got rid of the ball. And the Gophers have another first down. They are moving the ball right down the field on Nebraska. You know, we talked about the fact they might get demoralized down 21-0, but this play shows that Minnesota is still ready to play. And their fans are coming to life, too. They're, this is the first time we've seen a lot of enthusiasm by the Minnesota fans, but they're really making a lot of noise now. First down and 10 for the Gophers at the Nebraska 22. Hunter in motion. Murphy gives to Puck, goes through the line, inside the 15 and down to the 12. And that's pretty close to a first down. Uh, in fact, it's very close, and that's the best running play they have made today. They, that was a good play off the left side of their line. Minnesota's offense has adjusted, and they are moving the ball on Nebraska here. The clock winding down to the first period. Take a look at the last play of the first period. 
right up the middle goes David Puck. Huskers have a 21 0 lead. We'll be back. It's Sweet 98 Big Guy Bingo. Just five little bingo numbers could win you this classic Rolls Royce Bentley. Or play bingo for your very own Deauville Condominium by Hal Grove. Or bingo for a $10,000 mink coat from Cattleman's Fur Salon. Thousands upon thousands in Broadkey jewelry. Cash, cash, rec room shop and Richmond Gordman prizes. Listen to Sweet 98 now. At some hamburger places, somewhere, back there, hamburgers are cooked, put in boxes, then put under a heat lamp where they spend some time, somewhere, back there. At Wendy's, every hamburger is served immediately, hot off the grill so it tastes fresh and hot and juicy. Wendy's hamburgers never spend time back there. You want something better, your Wendy's kind of people. Fremont, Nebraska, a nice town and home to a lot of special people, people like Bill Rump. I've lived in Fremont all my life, and I've seen a lot of changes take place. In a lot of ways, though, it's still the same town it always was. Fremont is the name of Bill's bank, too, Fremont National Bank. I've always done my banking at Fremont National. Why not? It's good enough for my father, it's good enough for my son. Fremont National Bank, Fremont's bank for more than a century. Bookcase beds, colonial beds, modern beds, soft-sided beds, big beds, little beds, cheap beds, expensive beds, whatever style you're looking for, the Rec Room Shop is the place. During our gigantic waterbed liquidation sale, prices went slashed on our entire inventory of quality waterbeds and bedroom furniture. Now you can have a complete waterbed, including frame, pedestal, mattress, liner, and heater for only $114.98. At the Rec Room Shop, and we say prices have been slashed, we mean it. Hurry down today to the Rec Room Shop, 970 South 72nd. Back at the Metrodome, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minnesota with a second down and one. Murphy rolls out looking for the first down. He has it inside the five. He's near the goal line. The ball pops loose, and wait a minute. They call Murphy down at the one-yard line. On a second and short call, he keeps the ball, and the Gophers are coming right at him. Murphy, Murphy very wisely kept the ball. He rolled out. He didn't have a receiver open. Uh, he did a pretty good job running the football, and uh, right now uh, they're in a position to score a touchdown here. I think they've got uh, they got first down and goal to go on the one-yard line. Minnesota is taking it right to Nebraska. The Gophers down 21 nothing, but they're not giving up. Hunter and Puck behind Murphy. First down and goal. Carroll in motion. Murphy to Puck on the left side. The touchdown. Touchdown. Bob, they actually... They actually made that look pretty easy, pretty methodical, that touchdown. That whole drive, very impressive by the Gophers. Watch Murphy give it up to Puck. They just power it right ahead. Well, it'll be interesting to see just how their defense reacts to this now. Minnesota's on the board. They're back in the ball game, so to speak. And now we'll see if they can stop Nebraska because their first quarter, they did not do much in the way of stopping us. So done officially in the first quarter, Nebraska with 238 yards on the ground. Minnesota only 99. And most of those yards late in the first period. On now to try to the extra point, Jim Gallery. Minnesota crowd has come to life too, as has the team. Gallery's kick is up and good. And with 14 minutes, 21 seconds left in the second period, it's Nebraska 21 and Minnesota 7. We'll be right back. Yeah, this is me for my pancake. For that little extra care. They said three eggs, but it looks like five. That village in extra something that makes you declare. Nobody treats me quite like Village Inn. For the taste of a special treat. A real German apple pancake. That bring you back again. Nobody quite steps up to Village Inn. Visit Village Inn in Omaha, Lincoln, Council Bluffs, Bellevue, and Fremont. The race was hard, but now it's true. You're hot and dry and dusty, too. So you follow your thirst to the taste of you got? first Cause it's something big waiting for me and you Coffee big, the most refreshing <laughs> taste around Coffee <laughs> big, Coffee big Woo! And now 
enjoy new caffeine-free Coke. The can is gold. The taste from Coke. Coke or new caffeine-free Coke. Either way, you'll say Coke is it. Temporary Metro, though, the Minnesota Golden Gophers have gone 72 yards in eight plays. Puck, the one-yard dive for the touchdown, and the Gophers are on the board. Nebraska leads 21-7, and, Coach, I think that drive has breathed some new life into the Minnesota team. It certainly has. It was a surprisingly well-executed drive. Minnesota did a great job of moving the football. Nebraska may have been a little relaxed, but we'll see what happens now. Gallery will kick it off. Deep back for Nebraska. It's a good kick. It's right out of the park. Irving Fryer lets that one go. No way he was going to touch that. Huskers will get the touchback at the 20-yard line. Interesting stat, Coach. In the first period, Minnesota ran 23 plays. Nebraska ran 15. But the Huskers outgained the Gophers 238 yards to 99. Uh, they made those long strikes. The pass, the two passes to Fryer and the long run by Rozier ate up a lot of the yardage. And now we'll see just what, what, how Minnesota is going to react on defense because if they can hold Nebraska, they can make a game of it. Turner Gill brings them out of the 20-yard line. High formation gives to Jeff Smith. He gets out maybe two or three yards on the left side. Right, and uh, Minnesota gambled a little that time. They plugged the outside uh, cornerback on that play. Tom Rathman now in at fullback. Rathman, number 26 out of Grand Island, Nebraska, spelling Mark Shaleen. Rathman, a converted tight end, and they say he may be one of the better fullbacks in Nebraska once he gets some playing time under his belt. Rathman is a very fine athlete. He's, they think a lot of him. Second down now and seven for the Huskers. Gill gives inside. Minnesota's reacted well so far. They've stopped these two running plays with very short yardage. I think it's third now and about uh, eight yards to go, seven or eight. That was Rathman, the man we just talked about. He dives into the line and gets maybe a yard at most. And the Huskers uh, faced with a third and long situation. Turner Gill is going to have to put the ball up on third down and six. He's got him spread out. He's got some wide receivers. There's a swing pass. Mike Rose there at the 20, and he's nailed. And that Minnesota team has reacted. Their strong side linebacker, number three, Andre Gilbert, read Mike Rose there perfectly and just brought him down. Right, it was a kind of a swing pass, almost a screen out there to Mike Rose there, a delay. There's a flag on the play, a preliminary call to his personal foul on Minnesota. Well, this changes the complexion of the game again. Yeah, that could be a break for the Huskers. They were driven back uh, near the original line of scrimmage. Right, this, uh, this appears to be a first down. And this could, again, uh, hurt Minnesota badly. They had uh, done a great job. Here's the call. Dead ball foul, personal foul, Minnesota, first down. Must have been a piling on fall after yeah. Rozier was down. Somebody must have had, must have been a late hit. Huskers get a big break. They'll get a first down out of the Minnesota 37-yard line. That would have been a fourth down play coming up, but the Huskers get the big break. Kimball split to the near side. Gill looking to pass, rolls Gill. out. Now he's going to keep the ball across the 40 to midfield and down to the 42. There's a, for another first down. Good heads up play by Gill. Coach, does he have the option to throw on that or is that a run all the way? Well, I think he called a pass play and uh, Gill didn't see anybody there to stop him and, and his receiver was covered and he just started, he it took off running. Now they do have a bootleg type of play that is a, di a diagram for him to run the ball. Now, I couldn't tell on that. I know he did have a receiver downfield. I think it was uh, more or less an option pass or run. Good heads up play by Gill. First and 10 at the 42. Option play, the pitch to Irving Fryer around the right side. Irving Fryer could be gone. Irving Fryer, touchdown. Irving Fryer goes 42 yards, his third touchdown of the night. Huskers are up 27 to 7. And on that play, there was the option. They ran the option to the wing back coming around. Instead of running the option to the eye back, they ran it to Irving Fryer coming around from the wing back position. And Gill pitched to Fryer, and Fryer gets some good blocking downfield and just outruns him. Fryer had one man to beat, 42 for Minnesota. Let's check see who that is. Free safety Andre Harris. Snyder's point after is up and good. And with 12 minutes and 30 seconds left in the first half, it's Nebraska 28 and Minnesota 7. We'll be back. 
Household Finance is backing Tom Emmerich. I try and go on a one-in-one -one basis. You tell a person what's expected of them, they're going to do it. And I think there's a lot of personal pride and satisfaction in what a person does. If you're working for a better life, like Tom Emmerich, you're the person we want to back at Household Finance with personal loans up to $5,000 or more. We're here today to the chance. Boys and young men never seem to stop growing, so their needs for clothing are ever-changing. Krug's Men and Boys understands those changes. Krug's personal service has grown up with generations of Omaha young men, and that personal attention is as much a Krug's tradition as the clothing itself. Well-styled, classic. Whether he needs casual, sporty, or dress clothes, Krug's Men and Boys is a tradition he deserves. Krug's for boys, Krug's for men shoes. Countryside Village, Pacific at 87th. Nebraska goes 80 yards in five plays. Irving Fryer, a 41-yard touchdown. Huskers up 28-7. Coach, we talked about Minnesota getting that touchdown. It might have brought them back in the game, but Nebraska just fired right back at him, and Minnesota's down again. Uh, I know that Joe Salem is going to be looking at that. Uh, whoever did the piling on, he had Nebraska stop. They had a punt, had fourth down and 10, and then all of a sudden they had a first down, and then uh, very quickly a touchdown that was uh, in the game so far that was uh, a penalty that was disastrous for Minnesota yeah that's probably the biggest play of the game so far Livingston kicked deep in the end zone Donovan Small learning not to take the ball out of that end zone Gophers will have a first and ten at their own 20 and you've got to wonder they had some success running the ball in that last drive you think they'll come out passing again this deep in their own territory I think they're going to mix up the passing and the running uh, they've got just one setback again, which is kind of difficult to run from, or run a consistent thing. I think they're going to basically try to throw the ball, but mix in a running play. Carroll in motion. Puck is the single setback. Murphy looking oh, to pass. That's a dangerous one. Yeah, over through Carroll. Uh, they, they put a man in motion, and uh, several times he hasn't been covered real well, but that time the man in motion was covered well. Yeah, Scott Strasburger out there on Carroll, and he, uh, he was all over. I think Murphy might have thrown that away. Uh, they, uh, it was interesting, the last drive Minnesota had offensively, they looked like a different football team. Now, they're second and ten, and they're still in a passing formation. There's an injured man on the Minnesota sideline. We'll try to check, see who that is. Second down and ten for the Gophers. Murphy, passing on second down. A lot of heat by Keeler, but he gets the ball off. And let's see, is it intercepted? No, it's incomplete. Intended that time for number four, Clark Johnson. And he threw it into a crowd. There were two yeah. Nebraska players there that probably had a better chance to catch the ball than the uh, Minnesota receiver. Kind of an ill-advised pass, like you say. Right. Murphy's throwing right, right into, into double coverage. Right in there. Yeah. Ooh. He was lucky almost that, picked that one off. Lucky that wasn't intercepted. Yeah, it'll bring up a third down and ten now for the Gophers. An obvious passing situation. Huskers can tee off on this one. I think you're going to see a little pressure on the passer here. Murphy rolls out. A lot of heat on him. Cranmer almost gets him. He gets the ball away, and it's incomplete. It'll bring up a fourth and ten, and the Gophers will have to kick it away. Right, and the momentum uh, seems to have changed back toward Nebraska after that one Minnesota drive. Uh, Nebraska's come back now and seems to have things pretty well in hand. Let's watch on the play now. Jeff Maritko got a good block on Tranmer right there. Allowed Murphy to get the time to throw the ball away, but he couldn't connect. And the Gophers have a fourth down. And uh, the receiver was pretty well covered, too. Yeah, Blanchard now back to kick the ball for the Gophers. Let's check, see some confusion on the field. They don't have enough players. Yeah, Minnesota wisely takes the timeout. We'll take a timeout, too. 12-13 left in the first half. Huskers are up 28-7. Excuse me, miss. Can you tell me the secret of Renz's success? Is it Renz's unique blend of ground beef, onion, and cabbage? Is it because Renz's hamburgers are always fresh, never pre-cooked or frozen? Or maybe it's Renz's old-fashioned onion ring, sliced, double-dipped, and breaded by hand. Come on, you can tell me. What's the secret? Renz's tastes good. Discover the secret of Renz's success at the Renz's location nearest you. You and your Subaru, ready to take on any challenge in any weather. 
Experience that confidence in a Subaru from National Auto, where our selection will surprise you. Choose from many stylish Subaru models and colors. And cost? Not as much as you might think. And when you deal with National Auto, even less. National Auto, two blocks south of South Roads, Bellevue. For Subaru selection and deals, come challenge National Auto, the dealer with the right stuff. Fourth down and ten for the Gophers. They've got to punt it away. Minnesota now 0 for 5 on third down conversions. And Blanchard is going to have to kick it away. He's standing back at his own six. Blanchard's had quite a workout today. That's not one of his best kicks. That's kind no. of a bad kick. It's a low kick. Jeff Smith now cuts up to the 45 and no more. That's the second uh, kick in the row. Blanchard has uh, not really gotten a foot in the ball. For a while there, he was punting very well. But the last two kicks have given Nebraska pretty good field position. A low kick that time traveled 40 yards. Jeff Smith with a five-yard return. Unofficially now, Nebraska 303 yards gained. Minnesota 112. The that's, Huskers dominating the game. That's a lot of yardage for less. Uh, they haven't even played the half of the football game. They're We're just, on our way to a 600-yard day, maybe. Mike Rosier to the right side, spins and dives for eight yards. Rosier has uh, had a rest. Uh, uh, Jeff Smith has spelled him during this ball game, and I think Mike's about ready to ramble again, and I, I think if he gets by that line of scrimmage, he's liable to go anytime. Number 95, Anthony Burke on the tackle that time. He's only a freshman getting his first start ever for the Gophers. And Gill brings him up to the line. It'll be a second down and two. A great situation for the Huskers. Rozier on the right side has the first down and more. Uh, Minnesota has, I believe, eight freshmen on their top two offensive and, and defensive teams. So they're certainly uh, trying to rebuild, but uh, they can't play a team like Nebraska, I don't think, very well with uh, that type of experience. Mike Rozier gets four yards on that carry and a first down into Minnesota territory. Rozier is the kind of back, Irving Fryer said that when someone looks into Rozier's eyes, they think, oh my goodness, here he comes again. It's got to frighten a kid, especially a freshman. They got uh, Rozier up now in a wingback uh, formation with just one setback, the fullback. And there's a reverse with Rozier carrying. It's very well covered. Minnesota covered that play well. Yeah. Rarden was pulling around from his... Uh, his right tackle spot, and I think Rozier just flat ran into his own lead blocker. Uh, Scott Reardon weighs 278 pounds or so, and uh, maybe a little more than that. He's pulling around front of Rozier. He's fast. We got a lot of fast linemen there, mm -hmm. but it's hard to stay in front of Mike Rozier in a play like that. Give Peter Najarian credit for the tackle on that one. It'll bring up now a third down for the Huskers. Gill passing. Lots of time over the middle. It's un, un, in and, and out of the hands that's of Rozier. Something that don't happen very often. Mike no. Rozier dropped a delayed pass over the middle, and uh, now we come into a fourth down situation. Turner had all kinds of time. He really got the ball there, and like you say. Wait a now the third. Mike just dropped yeah, the ball. It's, yeah, it's not a fourth down. It's third down and nine. Right. Third down and nine for the Huskers. They're back in the eye. Kimball wide to this side. Gill wants to pass. There's a delay to the... Oh. It's overthrown, intended for Kimball that time. Turner threw into double coverage. Right, the tight end was open coming across uh, field number uh, 80. Crane coming across the field. Uh, looked like he was pretty open, but uh, Gill went to the deep receiver. Now we have a kicking situation here. Terry Glenn and Craig White on the coverage. Coach, uh, a ball Turner might like back. Right, that could have been an interception. Kimball getting his first start ever as a Cornhusker. He's a California player out of Camarillo, California. Fourth down and 10 now, and Livingston will punt it away. We'll probably hang this one up here, hoping to get the ball to drop inside the 10 someplace. It drops inside the no, 10, no. and will they get it? No, they won't. No. Ball goes into the end zone. We could have fielded the ball if there was nobody around there. We could have fielded it yeah. without Shane, letting it bounce. Shane Swanson tried to get a hand on that ball. I believe they'll call it a touchback. Gopher right. ball now, first and ten at their own 20. Let's uh, let's check and see. I believe we have some changes now in the Minnesota lineup. It looks like number 12, Andy Hare, in at quarterback for the Gophers. That injured man we saw along the sidelines may have been Greg Murphy. Touchback. 
There's the official call on that play. Yes, number 12. Andy Hare now in a quarterback for the Gophers. Hare, a 6'2", 190-pound junior out of Appleton, Wisconsin. Apparently, Greg Murphy shaken up and unable to play. This changes the Minnesota offense. Well, Hare has still got him in a semi-type of a spread formation using motion to his left. And they roll out to the right, and he's going to try to run the ball, and he throws it. He throws to a man that's pretty well covered, and I think he intentionally threw it into the ground because... The receiver was very yeah. well covered. Intended for number 29, Fred Hartwig. You wonder on the condition of uh, Murphy because uh, he really, like we had said, is the quarterback of the future and of the present for the Golden Gophers. And there has to be something fairly seriously wrong because Joe Salem would not take him out just for, uh, just for a change of look in the offense. Well, uh, number 12, Andy Hare, a junior quarterback. And the Gophers will most likely throw now on second down and 10. Minnesota Hare rolling out, out again. again. He's being chased. Scow, a lot of pressure. He gets him. He's in a lot of trouble. Number 96, Jim Scow, defensive tackle of Omaha, Ron Collie High. He's only a sophomore, and he runs Hair down. Good play by Scow. Minnesota's back in, in deep trouble now. Uh, probably as good a thing as they could do would be to punt the ball out of there, but I think they probably will not do that. They're, they're I don't know whether they're going to try to throw it or not. Now watch the replay. Hare under all kinds of pressure. Scow right. just flat runs him down at the seven-yard line. And the quarterback can't go away from the line of scrimmage that way. He, he, he can't afford to go back like that. Third and 23 for the Gophers. And they're going to keep it on the ground. Tony Hunter up the middle across the 10 and no more. Tony uh, Hunter, kind of an interesting story, Coach. He quit football this spring. Told Coach Joe Salem he didn't want anything to do with the Gophers. He went back home. Mom and Dad said, you get back and finish what you started, and they took him back. Right. He's back there playing now. He didn't start the ball game. It'd be interesting to see uh, how he gets along in there. Minnesota's going to punt again, and Hunter, Nebraska's going to have good field position. Hunter was a leading ground gainer a year ago. He's been pretty ineffectual tonight. Fourth down and 19, and Blanchard will kick it away from his own end zone. Deep back for the Huskers. That's good kick. He gets off a good kick, but... He could is, get a run back here. This is Jeff Smith. There it is. Jeff Smith at the 30, the 20, and down at the 13. With Smith and Fryer back there, you've got a chance for a touchdown anytime anybody punts to him. They're a couple of the finest kick return men in the country, and both of them can go all the way. They both have great speed. Watch Shane Swanson gets a good block. Neil Harris drives his man to the outside. There's some very good blocking in that play to get uh, Smith to the outside here. The Real fullback, good. David Puck, number 44, eventually gets credit for the tackle. Huskers now knock it on the door. First down to 10 at the Gopher 13. Nate Mason now in at quarterback. Pitches to Jeff Smith. Across the 10, touchdown. Well, you've got eight minutes and 34 seconds to go, and Nebraska is now 34 points on the board. And the Huskers doing it with quite a few second-teamers in the game. Rathman, the second-team fullback. Nate Mason, the second-team quarterback. Great pitch to Smith, dances through the line, and goes in untouched. I think you, you've got almost an entire second unit in there now, and I think from now on, uh, Tom probably will use those first stringers somewhat sparingly. Snyder's extra point is up and good. And with eight minutes and 34 seconds left in the first half, Nebraska leads Minnesota 35 to 7. We'll be back. Nebraska Furniture Mart is the single largest home furnishing store in the nation. Fact, Nebraska Furniture Mart is committed to offering the best selection and the lowest prices guaranteed in writing. Fact, Nebraska Furniture Mart has the quality hot point appliances you want. Fact, Nebraska Furniture Mart offers beautiful displays, convenience, and parking. Nebraska Furniture Mart, truly one of a kind. I'm Jim Abens, and I'm moving up to 15 country. That's 15 on your AM dial. Beginning Monday, start your day with lots of great modern country music and the news and information you need on the new 15 country. And all day long on 15 country, you'll get more of the modern country music you love. I guarantee you more of your favorite modern country music every hour on 15 Country. Move up the AM dial to 15. 15 Country. More music, no bull. 
back live at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome. Jeff Smith, a 13-yard touchdown. Huskers up 35-7. to Unofficially now, Jeff Smith, 78 yards on the ground. Mike Rozier, 69 yards. And the Huskers will kick the ball off to the Gophers. Livingston to kick off. Back so deep for Minnesota. Deep. And I don't think they'll try to run that. No. Down I think Donovan Small learned his lesson early on in that first yeah. period. He's not going to take it. And, you know, it's going to be interesting to see just how much uh, Tom Osborne uses Mike Rozier from here on in. Mike is a, certainly a candidate for the Heisman Trophy, and uh, this is picked a great deal on statistics. And Mike uh, right now has 69 yards, and if he don't average a little over 100 yards a game, it's a little tougher for him. So I hope Mike gets a chance to break one or two long runs before they decide to give him a rest forever on this game. Gophers down 35 to nothing, first and 10 now at their own 20-yard line. Andy Hare, still the quarterback in place of the injured Greg Murphy. Hare, the gift to Puck on the left side, and he is drilled. Graber in on the tackle that time. Very difficult for Minnesota to generate a running attack with just that one back back there. There's not much deception. Yeah, Coach, and you you'd mentioned Mike Knox, the linebacker. He used to be a running back in high school. I saw him when he played at, at Douglas County High School. Watch Knox number 44 here. Imagine a kid of his size playing high school football. He so dominated the game, uh, his team was successful only because of him. Mike is a great athlete. He's a great kid. He also helped our wrestling team. We were without a heavyweight for a while this winter, and he wrestled heavyweight for us. Uh, but he had been away from wrestling for a while, and he won some and lost a few. There's a whistle on the play. It looks like Ken Graber. Graber was a little over anxious that time, made contact with the center. Yeah, we mentioned Graber, one of the free spirits on this Nebraska team. I could remember uh, Graber down in, in Miami at the Orange Bowl game the first day of the trip. He caught a fish, and he put the fish in a plastic bag and forgot about it under his bed until we left five days later. It was, it was a sight you didn't really want to behold. Illegal procedure. I, I'd Nebraska. hate to have been Graber's roommate. Second down. <laughs> I think Graber's roommate might have slept in the hall that night. Uh, Minnesota's now back in the I formation. Uh, they have a little better opportunity to run the ball with those two setbacks there. They've got a second and four after the penalty. The pitch back to Hunter. It's a real good job by the cornerback. Nebraska cornerback number two. That's Mike McCashlin. Mike that I've McCashlin looked at did a very fine job of coming up meeting that play. Hunter trying for the first down on that play. He will not get it. Brings up a third down and three. Gopher ball at their own 27. Hunter started the uh, fall campaign as the fifth string halfback. He worked his way up to second string uh, for the Rice game last week. He came in here as second string behind Alan Reed. And you've got to think that, uh, that Hunter is the halfback of the future on this Minnesota team. Well, he's going to get a little chance to run the ball today here. They're once more they're in a formation where they got two backs back there. Third down and short for the Gophers. Whoop, there's a fumble. fumble. Who's got it? Uh, they they uh, ruled it. I believe that Minnesota has the ball here. Yeah, David Puck lost the handle on that ball. I think he fell right on top of it. Let's check. Puck, the lone fullback here. The spin and the give. He, he never, never had it. Never had the ball. Luckily, he did have it when he hit the ground. Very lucky that time to recover it. Now we see Blanchard get another chance to punt. They say Blanchard has lost around 15 pounds in this fall camp because of Hodgkin's disease, but still, he has not missed a practice, not missed a workout, and he's doing a pretty good job yes. tonight. Gets away a good kick. He's getting a good workout. There's a fair catch. Irving Fryer calls for the fair catch. That was Nebraska a fine will punt. take over. Yeah, good punt by Blanchard that time. A 37-yard kick, but the important part about that, Blanchard had a nice high kick, a lot of hang time, and his defenders could get down and cover Irving Fryer. Well, there's six minutes and 18 seconds left to go in this first half. It'll be kind of interesting to see just what kind of attack Nebraska will uh, try to do here. They've got Nate Mason in a quarterback, and Nate may keep the ball on the ground a little more. First down and 10 of the 33. Nate runs the option. He'll keep it up to the 40. And down to the 45. Uh, Nate Mason's a pretty good option quarterback. Uh, he's developed into a fairly good passer, but he is a, a very fine runner. A lot of second-team Nebraska players in now. Second-team center Brad Mielding is in. And I believe also right tackle number 65, Tim Roth. Here's Mason, though, getting that one all on his own. 
Peter Najarian on the tackle that time, along with Andre Harris. Minnesota still playing with many first-teamers, but Tom Osborne is substituting very, very freely. Is that a friend of yours, Coach? I don't know. I, I don't think he has a friend. He don't look like he's got a friend down there. That'll bring up a first down and 10. Mason gets the first down to the 45. Here's the reverse to Irving Fryer on the left side. Irving Fryer cuts back and a good effort. Left cornerback Phil Sutton ran him down, but Irving Fryer made something out of nothing on that play. Uh, he had a wall set up. It was a, a wall set up on the left side of the field, and Fryer ran as far as he could with the help of his blockers, and he cut back across the field, and it looked for a minute like he might get away, which he has done so many times tonight. Nebraska showing a new, uh, new look in that play. Nate Mason to Mike Rozier to Irving Fryer coming around, and the Huskers have a first down inside the Minnesota 35. Mason pumps, and he's going to run out and gets the ball away, and it's tipped out of Irving Fryer's hands. And Check it. It's intercepted. Number 23. First. Craig White intercepts the Gophers. I think that's the first turnover of the ball game, Bob. Yep. Craig White, a player Nebraska tried to recruit, comes up with a big interception. Gophers down 35 to 7, but they've got the ball now. Well, uh, Nate was doing something there that he doesn't do quite as well, and he decides to throw the ball. He's under pressure here, and there's a good interception. He played the ball all the way that time. Yes, uh, Irving never really had a chance. White with a good defensive effort. Go for first down at their own 29. Hare is still the quarterback. Murphy's still on the bench. Murphy must be injured. We'll, we'll find out to start the second half. I think if he's back in the game... But if he isn't, I think you're going to, he is hurt. Hare rolls out. He's going to keep it across the 35 and near the 40. Made Dave about, Burke and Mike Knox drove him out. Made about eight yards on the play. He got outside of containment there. Coach, is that a wise thing to do when your first team quarterback is on the bench? Do you like to see your second teamer taking it upfield like that? I think he's running for his life, Bob. I think he's, the only thing, other thing he could do is probably lay down. And no, I, you, you, I think uh, Joe Salem is. Uh, concerned about that uh, unless he's got another quarterback over there that's about of the same caliber but uh, I think Minnesota right now is just grab bagging they're going to try to do whatever they can to get a first down and hopefully a score before the half is over give him nine yards second down and one gives inside to puck he has the first down and more puck down at the 50. Good inside draw play. You know, Minnesota has set up to pass so many times that Nebraska may be vulnerable to that draw. The draw is a good play when you're throwing the ball successfully. Uh, Nebraska's got a lot of these young fellas in there now on defense that Wyoming was able to score on uh, a yep. week ago. And uh, this, this gives them a good chance to get a workout. And I think uh, it gives them a lot of experience for the future. And I don't think we're going to worry too much about what's going to happen in the next four minutes. Good gainer by Puck. It's first down for Minnesota at the Nebraska 49. Hunter in motion. Hare rolls out. Looks to pass. Looking long. And it's intercepted. Number 33, Dave Burke. But there's a flag on the play. I, I think uh, well, it shouldn't be called. It, it's not, it shouldn't be an interference call, I don't believe. Lundgren Howard protesting. Let's see what the referee calls. It looks like it's going in Minnesota's favor. Well, they call pass interference. I'd like to see that again. I, it'd be interesting one to see. Pass interference against the Huskers. You saw Vance Carlson make the call, and Minnesota will have the ball at the Nebraska. Here, here we're going to see the play again. Here, we'll see. Uh, the, the back judge must have made the call. First down. Now I think Billy Weber pushed off right there. That was it. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. The, the, the defensive back not the man that intercepted the ball, but the defensive back did interfere with the. the receivers efforts to come back after the ball number 87 Bill Weber pushed Lundgren Howard and the Gophers have a first down to 10 at the Nebraska 15 Hunter the lone setback Hare the quarterback Hunter up the middle gets maybe a yard Minnesota can get on the board again here why uh, that's going to be about as many points as two teams scored in the first half ordinarily that game last week Nebraska led Wyoming 42 to 3 at halftime let's take a look at Mike Knox boom puts the hit on Hunter just one on one 
hard-nosed football. Hunter gets maybe a yard down to the 14. Second down and nine. Huskers penalized five times now for 54 yards. Minnesota once for 15 yards. That one penalty was a big one, though. Hare passing into the end zone, has a man open, and it's no, out, out of bounds. Of He's out of the end zone. Intended for Dwayne McMullen, made the catch, but it was out of bounds. Mike McCaslin defending. You know, if the end zone had been maybe a yard or two longer, that might have been a touchdown. Yeah, they, they'd have been uh, playing in the Canadian League with that bigger end zone. They'd probably been all right. It goes as an incomplete pass. It'll bring up a third down and long, third and nine for the Gophers inside the Husker 15. It's, it'd be interesting if they don't uh, get a first down here, whether they'll try for a field goal or go for it on fourth down. Here behind Rasmussen, third and nine. Looking to pass, rolling Oops, out. He's going he the wrong direction again. Mark Don chasing him down. Hare is in trouble. Gets the ball away. And Brett Clark tips it away in the end zone. Uh, Brett Clark had it in his hands and dropped it there. Yeah. The ball intended for 83, the tight end, Jay Carroll. Brett says, boy, wish I'd had that one. Yeah, he feels pretty bad about it because he, he's got pretty good hands. Look at Mark Don come right through the middle. They plugged the linebackers there. Minnesota now 0 of 7 on first downs. Watch hair roll out, and they're, Brett Clark could have had it. They're, uh, Ooh. yeah, he had the ball. They're going for the first, uh, for the three points here instead of the touchdown. And uh, Jim Gallery now on for the field goal. They'll snap the ball and set it down at the 21. It'll be a 31-yard field goal. Kick is up, and it is good. Jim Gallery, a 31-yard field goal. And with 3.28 left of the first half, the Gophers get on the board again. Huskers still lead it 35 to 10. Minnesota got something out of that drive, Coach, but I don't think that's exactly what they had in mind. No, uh, and I tell you, this, this is going to end up, Bob, by being one of the longer football games uh, uh, played, uh, I think, this year because right now they have 3 minutes and 28, uh, 3 minutes and 28 seconds to go. And they are still got, uh, you know, that's still the first half. Yeah, we have played football for about an hour and 20 minutes, and there's maybe 15 minutes left. Right. Uh, when you throw the ball around a lot like Minnesota has been doing, the, the time goes very slowly. That scoring drive, Minnesota goes 40 yards in five plays. And they get on the board with the 31-yard Jim Gallery field goal. 328 left in the first half. And they were aided by an interference call on Nebraska that ate up a big chunk of the yardage. Yeah, I think Nebraska would love to have that play back. Gallery will kick it off at the 40-yard line. A perfectly still, motionless night inside the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome. Boy, I tell you, this is a great place to play football. Gallery gets off a good kick. It'll go into the end zone. And Irving Fryer will not return it. Huskers get it first and 10 at their own 20. Well, we've got Turner Gill coming back out on the field, looks like this time. Let's check the offense now for Nebraska. Kimball is the wide receiver, Shane Swanson the wingback. The tight end is number 80, Todd Frayne, a sophomore out of Trainer, Iowa. Nebraska on the 60-man travel limit, I believe, for this game. Right. Last week against Wyoming, Coach Tom Osborne played 85 players, but only 60 here, and these 60 will get a workout tonight. Gill passing on first down, pump fake. They're looking for the screen, and Gill throws it away. He had to throw it away, and Minnesota covered that screen very well that time. Defensive tackle Craig Paulson in, really pressuring Turner. He tried to get it to Mark Shaleen, but I think he threw it away. Yes, he. I think he threw the ball into the ground. I think the closest person was an ineligible receiver. It'll bring up a second down and 10 for the Huskers. 3.23 left in the first half. Huskers. Ricky with Simmons comes in with a play from Coach Osborne here. 35-10 lead. Gill now 3 for 10. He has thrown 109 straight balls without an interception. On second down, the give up the middle. Uh, the previous record for uh, balls without an interception was by Jerry Taggy, who threw 88 passes without an interception. Now Gill is well past that figure, and the rate he's going, he could keep on for quite a while. Jeff Smith right up the middle on that play. He's playing quite a bit in this first half. And Turner Gill back in now at quarterback, and you've got to wonder, 
will you throw the ball in a situation like this, Coach? You've got a third down and five deep in your own territory. Well, I don't think he's going to worry about, you know, that. I think he's going to run the option play here. Jeff Smith outside. He has the first down and more. Down to the 37. A uh, little extra contact after the play. Uh, this option play they run with Gill carrying the football is potentially a long yardage play. It could break for a... Uh, it, it is probably a, about as good a chance of making big yardage as a forward pass. Number 93, Ivan Zubar on the tackle that time. He's Minnesota's defensive tackle. Ivan Zubar said a lot of things about Nebraska, and he uh, personally really wanted to take it to the Huskers, but so far, 237 left in the first half. The Huskers are taking it to the Gophers. Gill passing now on first down, letting it loose. to Simmons. Intended for Ricky Simmons. And the Nebraska fans want a flag, but they don't get it. I, I think that the ball was over Simmons' head. Uh, I, I think the, I don't think that was an interference call. The guy did grab him, but the ball had gone over his head. Hey, you watch. see a replay of that. Kerry Glenn defending on the play. I, I think you see that the ball is out of reach. He's not going to get that. Questionable call. The fans uh, watching that on the replay monitor here in the stadium. The they don't like it. It's yeah. Nebraska fans at this end. It's almost like a home game here, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. Second down and 10 after the incompletion. Gill rolling out to the right. He's going to keep it behind Trainowitz. Outruns his blockers across the 50 to the 40. Turner could go. But they drag him down at the 15. Number 20, Larry Joyner. Second string defensive back brings down Turner Gill. Uh, Trinovich got a very good block on that play. He come around and picked the guy off. It was just about ready to tackle him. Uh, Gill and this was a fine run by Gill but this is something we all hate to see is Gill limping Turner Gill coming up limping let's see if we can tell what happened he cuts back runs away from White and Joyner comes in drags him down uh, and Turner Gill out of the ball game now Nate Mason in at quarterback for the Huskers Mike Turner Gill being looked at on the near side. Mike Rozier is now at fullback. Mark Shaleen, or Mike Rozier is at high back. And there's Shaleen almost breaks through on a trap play. Shaleen inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. The concern now is for Turner Gill. We can see him walking on the near or the far sideline. Nate Mason in a quarterback. And, uh, Coach, anytime your number one quarterback goes down, you've got to worry. Shaleen, though, a good run here. Right. Okay. Shaleen gets inside for a gain of nine to the eight-yard line. It'll bring up a second down and one. They sent a trainer out after number 20, uh, John uh, Joyner. Uh, right, Larry Joyner. Larry Joyner. They sent a trainer out, two trainers to get him off the field. I, they must have, some of the players must have indicated that maybe he was had his bell rung a little bit. Ironically, Joyner, the man who put the hit on Turner Gill to send him out of the game. So, Nate Mason, second down and one at the seven. I formation to give to Mike Rozier. Touchdown. <laughs> Mike Rozier blows right through there. Seven yards makes it look easy, Coach. That was a great hole by the line. Nobody touched Mike here going into the end zone. Shaleen, a good hit on 23 White. It was a great job of blocking. Nebraska now with a 41-10 lead. Dave Schneider on to attempt the point after touchdown. Sunberg will hold. The kick is up. And it's good. One minute and 30 seconds left in the first half. Nebraska with a 42-10 lead. A game very similar, Coach, to the way Nebraska played against Wyoming last week. And we have a 52-point first half. I've got to wonder, what is the record in modern-day college football for most points scored in a total game? If they keep it up like this, we could be lighting up that scoreboard. Right. And they could be burning out the lights in the Metrodome here. Someone told me the other day that uh, he had some bad news for me that the clock and the scoreboard in the Metrodome only go to two digits. He said if Nebraska goes above 100 points, they'll, they'll have no way to register it. I told him I, I doubted that would happen. But it sure is nice to think about. Huskers go 80 yards on that drive in seven plays. Rozier, a seven-yard touchdown. The point after by Schneider is good, and the Huskers are up 42 to 10 with a minute and a half left in the first. The thing about it, Bob, is this Nebraska team can score quickly from so many different ways with so many different players. 
they've thrown passes for touchdown. They've broken long runs for touchdown. They've run the option play. They've run the quick trap up the middle. And uh, they, they just seem to be able to strike so many ways. They're certainly, I think, the greatest offensive team in the country and probably will be leading the nation in all phases of offensive football after this game. Danny Wingard kicks it off to Donovan Small. He gets a good run back, his best of the night, out to the 24-yard line. McCashlin and Ritter bring him down there. So the Golden Gophers in business. One minute, 25 seconds left in the first half. They'll have a first and 10 at their own 25. Unofficially now, Coach, in the first half, Nebraska 441 yards in total offense. Minnesota, 120. Uh, 120 yards, a fairly respectable first half, but not against 400 yards of offense. Let's check the quarterback for the Golden Gophers. I believe Hare is still in there replacing Murphy. They've got number But Murphy nine. is back in now. Murphy's back in the game. He gives off to Hunter. He gets five out to the 30. Apparently yeah. Murphy's injury not too serious. Joe Salem put him back in for this final drive. You know, as a former coach, uh, I know uh, Joe Salem's going to have a very difficult time finding something to talk about at the half that is uh, at all cheering. Coach, did you ever get beat this bad at halftime? Uh, not at halftime. Uh, we got beat down at Norman, Oklahoma, 47 to nothing one time. Uh, uh, but uh, we weren't quite this bad at half. To give off to Hunter again, he's near a first down out to about the 34-yard line. McCashland and 44 knocks in on the tackle. Gophers on a second and five situation. Keep the ball on the ground, and that's kind of strange, Coach. They've thrown the ball the entire night, and now in the closing minute of the first half when they need some yards, they're not throwing. I think, Bob, they want to get in there to, to the dressing room and regroup. <laughs> 20, yeah, 25 seconds left in the first half. Ed Cairo will talk to Coach Joe Salem when we uh, wind up this first half, and I'm wondering what Joe Salem will say to us. He's going to have a difficult time saying anything that uh, is going to be too enthusiastic. Now they're, they're right there in a the formation where now that looks like they're just going to let the clock run out. I think they took too much time on that one, Coach. Yeah. Whistles on the field. Yeah, they yeah. could have dropped on the ball and let it run out that way. Five seconds left on the clock, and Minnesota took too much time. That's a, that's a mistake that well, really the, is almost inexcusable the, at this point. The crowd is not going to like that. The, the crowd is going to think, like you mentioned, Bob, that here they are way down. The other game, Minnesota. Uh, they're going to wonder why they didn't try to get on the board. Yeah, this will be the last play of the game. Five seconds left in the first half. Again, we'll try to go down to Ed Cairo on the sidelines to get a word with Joe Salem. And again, more confusion. That's, that's it. Clock winds down. Minnesota does not get a playoff. And the Golden Gophers go to one side. The Huskers go to the other side. And it'll be a happy Nebraska locker room. Nebraska with a 42-10 lead at halftime. Yeah, this is the kind of a game that uh, the coach, Nebraska coaching staff uh, are going to be a little bit relaxed in the half. They're going to try to point out some mistakes that they that has been have been made, but uh, it's going to be pretty hard to be too critical at this point. Yeah, 42 to 10, Nebraska has done a few things wrong, but most things they have done have been right. Now, Joe Salem down to the sidelines. Let's go down to Joe Salem and Ed Cairo for a comment on this first half. We're here at halftime on the sidelines with Joe Salem, coach of the University of Minnesota. Joe, your guys are obviously down, but they certainly haven't let up. Well, I don't know. You know, they're just a much better football team than we are. And, uh, and it's just a situation where you can't, uh, we can't stop them. We had to gamble, do some things that, that we hope might give us a break or whatever. But I said before the game, if they execute and do what they want to do, uh, you know, we weren't going to beat them. And it's obvious we're not going to beat them. I mean, we just got to come back and get regrouped and, and try to make some plays and try to do something second half. But uh, uh, I, we probably won't have anybody left here in about half an hour. Will you come back and try to do the kinds of things you did in the first half, the peripheral stuff? Well, we'll try to stay with what we what we said we do to come in. But, uh, you know, they're, they're beating us every way you say. Uh, they get the long run. They're getting the easy play. That's one thing we said we can't give them. But uh, we'll come back and stay with what we've been doing in the first half, hopefully execute a little bit better and, and get some yardage to do something. But, uh, you know, we, we just got a thing now getting our act back together and not worry about winning the game at this point. Joe, thanks for being with us. See you later. That's it, Bob. Back up to you. Thank you, Ed. Nebraska with a 42-10 lead at halftime. We break for the halftime as the fans come out on the field. Let's go back to Omaha for a special edition of Newswatch 7 right after this.
Where else would you find so many good names at such good prices? So many departments chock full of good products and values to make you feel, well, good. We've got it and we've got it good at Kmart. Kmart, we've got it and we've got it good. Once Northwestern Bell telephone lines moved only voices from one place to another, then computer data, graphics, video signals. Today, Northwestern Bell is part of an information network that moves 90% of all business information, the biggest information network in the world. If you have information to move, nothing moves more of it to more places more quickly, more reliably than the information network of Northwestern Bell. Life-saving transplant operations, once only a faint hope, are now performed regularly. Pioneering work at the University of Minnesota has made it possible for critically ill patients to return to productive and happy lives. Kidney, pancreas, inner ear, cornea, bone marrow, and heart transplant techniques have been greatly advanced at the Health Sciences Center. The University of Minnesota, providing a healthy return on investment to the nation and the world. Little House on the Prairie, weekdays at 4. Time. This is a special edition of Newswatch 7 with Dan Gray, weather with meteorologist Jim Flowers, and Ross Turnstrom with a sports update. And good evening, everyone. My partner Carol Schrader is ill tonight. U.S. Agriculture Secretary John Block says there likely will not be a continuing pick program, at least for grain crops. Block was in Omaha today to attend a fundraiser for Nebraska Congressman Hal Dobb. Jerry Fannin tells us what he had to say. This year's pick program was helped by Mother Nature in the reduction of crops all across the Midwest. In Omaha today, Ag Secretary John Block said pick has not been all that successful. I would uh, say that we will not have a pick program for feed grains. I think that our supplies are tight enough there that a pick program would be unrealistic. Block says he has no idea yet how many states will qualify for disaster assistance. In Nebraska, 12 southeastern counties will apply for the low interest loans from the Farmers Home Administration. Block says he expects that most will qualify. Qualification meaning at least 30% crop loss in a given county. On another subject, that of using a grain embargo to punish the Soviets for shooting down the Korean airliner. It really was not given major consideration. I, I would concede there are those that might like to do it. But overall, when you get to the president, and I have full confidence in his understanding of the situation, it just was, it's just not the thing to do. For Newswatch 7 at halftime, I'm Jerry Fannin. And in other news, Soviet Foreign Minister Andrei Gromyko today canceled his scheduled trip to the United States. Gromyko had planned to attend the United Nations General Assembly meeting next week. According to the Soviet news agency TASS, the trip was canceled because U.S. officials refused to guarantee Gromyko's safety. However, the State Department says it was prepared to make all the necessary arrangements. The United States and Syria moved closer to open conflict today. After the home of the American ambassador in Lebanon came under attack today, U.S. warships fired on Druze artillery positions in the area east of Beirut. And in retaliation, a Syrian military spokesman today threatened to shell the U.S. fleet. Heavy fighting between Lebanese and Druze forces is also reported in towns near Beirut. Meantime, in this country, Senate Majority Leader Howard Baker is spending the weekend working out details aimed at breaking an impasse over the U.S. role in Lebanon. There were changes in the night as you slept. Some familiar voices you've heard now have a new home. KYNN Radio signed off at midnight last night. 20 minutes later, signed on as the new WOW Radio. The move came as the culmination of Great Empire Broadcasting's purchase of the old WOW's call letters and the frequency of 59 on the AM radio dial. They'll be known as 59 Country and feature the same voices you once heard on the former KYNN, along with a few of the features you may have heard on the old WOW. Country music, farm reports, news will remain as the main format. Now, as for the old KYNN, it too has a new owner, Albemarle Communications. The staff of what used to be WOW Radio will now occupy the frequency of 1490 on the AM dial. Albemarle also has bought radio station Z92FM. 
That station's staff and rock format will remain the same. Confused? Well, Stu Nicholson will further unravel the crosstown radio swap tonight on Newswatch 7 after the ball game. No confusion about our weather and some serious weather to our east. There could be, Dan. In fact, there is a severe thunderstorm watch in effect for most of Iowa until about 1 a.m. You can see the axis of that watch. It uh, runs from just southwest of Spencer, Iowa, over towards Cedar Rapids. As I mentioned, that watch is in effect until 1 a.m. tomorrow morning. If we take a look at the counties affected by that watch, they are just to the east-northeast of Omaha, and uh, we will keep you updated throughout the evening hours if any severe weather, in fact, develops. Let's take a look at our current readings right now in Omaha. Clear skies, 82 degrees. Lincoln is clear and 81. Relative humidity, 41%. Winds are southwesterly at 12 miles an hour. The barometric pressure has been rising from 29.53 inches. On our national map, the reason for that severe weather watch is a deepening area of low pressure now located in eastern South Dakota. Warm front trails from that right down across central Illinois. Look at these late afternoon temperatures, 60 degrees up at Bismarck. That in contrast to 96 degrees at Topeka. That temperature contrast should fuel some hefty thunderstorms a little bit later on tonight. Otherwise, on our national map, just scattered light rain from eastern Montana into Wyoming and also over into northern Minnesota. The low should continue its eastward track. A cold front sitting just off to our west will move in a little bit later on tonight and keep temperatures just a few degrees cooler by mid-afternoon tomorrow. Let's check my forecast and see how things are looking for tonight. As I mentioned, a severe thunderstorm watch in effect for western Iowa until 1 a.m., otherwise partly cloudy and breezy tonight with that risk of showers and a low near 60. For Sunday, partly cloudy and warm with high temperatures in the middle 80s. Winds will shift into the east-northeast at about 10 miles an hour. For Sunday night, partly cloudy and warm. The low should fall off to 62. For Monday, partly sunny and mild, there could be some rain developing just north of Omaha by late afternoon. High temperatures cut back because of the clouds and some uh, cooler air moving in, only rising into the middle 70s. Okay, Dan? kind of moving back into the 80s tomorrow, but then in and the then 70s cooling and, down and, and the rest cooling of the down week is... Even more by uh, Wednesday, maybe only in the lower 60s. So kind of Wednesday. normal again. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Jim. Coming up next, Ross Jernstrom with highlights and scores of the other college games today. Stay with us. Beds, colonial beds, modern beds, soft-sided beds, big beds, little beds, cheap beds, expensive beds, whatever style you're looking for, the Red Room Shop is the place. During our gigantic waterbed liquidation sale, prices have been slashed on our entire inventory of quality waterbeds and bedroom furniture. Now you can have a complete waterbed, including frame, pedestal, mattress, liner, and heater for only $114.98. At the Red Room Shop, and we say prices have been slashed, we mean it. Hurry down today to the Red Room Shop, 970 South 72nd. Last year, this tough Ford 4x4 pickup clawed its way up this monster mountain of boulders. And here's the 84 Ford 4x4 about to climb the same mountain, but this time with a 3,500-pound competitor on its back. Ford has a 6.9-liter diesel, the most powerful diesel engine you can get in a pickup. And only Ford has independent front suspension. And remember this, Ford is America's best-built full-size pickup. No wonder Ford 4x4s always seem to end up at the top of the heap. The best-built American trucks are built for tough. Two separate traffic accidents have claimed the lives of three Nebraskans over the weekend. In Cass County this weekend, 46-year-old Charles Rowe and 22-year-old Tom Smith, both of Blair, were drivers of cars that hit head-on on U.S. Highway 7375, just about three miles north of Union. The third fatality occurred in Richardson County. Police say a 60-year-old Nemaha County man died when his pickup truck collided with a car near Schubert. Well, no doubt about it. Certainly a good half for Nebraska and uh, a lot of other college games going on That's today. right. When the polls come out next week, there should be a big shakeup in the yeah. polls, but no doubt who is number one. All the teams in the top ten were in action today, and four of them lost. Those teams who suffered their first defeat were Oklahoma, Auburn, Notre Dame, and Florida State. In Norman, the Sooners just couldn't stop the arm of Ohio State quarterback Mike Tomczak. For the day, Tomczak completed 15 passes for 234 yards. Here he hits John Frank for the Buckeyes' first touchdown. Then, in the second quarter, he tosses another TDD Frank. Marcus Dupree left the game with a bruised knee in the second quarter. Ohio State wins 24-14. to in its first contest of the season, Texas beat Auburn 20-7. The Longhorns used an 80-yard touchdown pass here. 
and a 66-yard punt return to take a 20 to nothing halftime lead. Auburn's only touchdown came with two minutes left. The horns look very tough. Looking at the top 20 now, Ohio State beat Oklahoma 24 to 14. There we go. Texas beat Auburn 20 to 7. In other games, Michigan State upset Notre Dame 28-23. It was Arizona 45 and Washington State 6. Elsewhere, this score just in. Washington beat Michigan 25-24. So that makes five teams in the top 10 who got beat. Tulane shocked Florida State. In other games, North Carolina beat Miami of Ohio. Clemson and Georgia tied 16 all. Elsewhere, Alabama blanked Mississippi. Iowa beat Penn State 42-34. The Nittany Lions are now 0-3. In other games, Oregon State leads USC 7-0 in the first quarter. Florida leads Indiana State 10-7 at ha the half. Elsewhere, West Virginia and Maryland. It's Maryland 10 and West Virginia 3 in the second quarter. Iowa State leads Vanderbilt 17-0 at halftime. In other games, Wisconsin beat Missouri by 1 point, 21-20. At the half, Kansas State leads TCU 7-3. Elsewhere in the Big 8, Kansas beat Wichita State 57-6. And Syracuse, Nebraska's opponent in two weeks, leads Northwestern 21-0 at the half. And UCLA, Nebraska's next opponent, is losing to Arizona State 23-10 in the third quarter. UNO leads South Dakota 10-3 in the third quarter, too. Okay, I know Bob Cullinan had predicted a 65-14 win <laughs> for Nebraska tonight. Uh, that's not out of the question at this point. That's right. It? I don't think they can get 14, though, unless they get two safeties. <laughs> that's true. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Russ. Coming up on Newswatch 7 after the game, more on the comments today by Agriculture Secretary John Block, as well as the latest on the controversy surrounding Korean Flight 7. You can join Jerry Fan and Ross Jernstrom and meteorologist Don Novak after the Nebraska-Minnesota game. And, of course, Bob Cullinan and Bob Devaney will be up next with all the second-half action. Thank you for joining us. Have a good night. Eggs and eggs. All brands are the same, right? Wrong. Not all come from carefully monitored eggs. And not all eggs are checked by on-site USDA inspectors for quality. And only one brand is refrigerated within hours after laying. The freshest egg, a nature-made egg. Reach for a carton of freshness today. Fresh from my Nature-made eggs are found exclusively at Baker's. Why are meteorologists important to Newswatch 7? Well, if there's anything in a news broadcast that has universal interest and appeal, it's the weather. Everyone wants to know what it's going to be like. We feel very strongly that meteorologists are in a better position to give you accurate, timely information, information that you need to make decisions on what you may be doing over the next uh, few days. We have not one, not two, but three meteorologists, people who make their own forecasts, people who don't rely on any other private service or who don't rely on the National Weather Service. And we support these trained meteorologists, these trained people, with the best possible equipment that we can acquire for them to help them do their jobs so that they can inform you in a better, more accurate way. Meteorologists Jim Flowers, Joe Calhoun, and Don Novak. Three good reasons why people are turning to Newswatch 7. Airline, hotel, restaurant, and fast food outlets need fresh meat products with shape, weight, composition, and price control. Here at UNL's Institute of Agriculture and Natural Resources, we have pioneered the manufacturing and processing technology to tailor make a product to a particular market for the future. Back live at the Minneapolis Metrodome, Huskers with a 42-10 lead at halftime. Coach, the first half stats are awfully impressive. Rushing for Nebraska, 24 carries, 292 yards. Minnesota, 21 carries and 40 yards. And Nebraska has the edge in passing, too. Huskers have thrown for 136 yards, and Minnesota has thrown for 96. You wonder, uh, is there anything Nebraska can do that doesn't work? Well, 
The funny thing is, on the passing statistics, they've completed three of 11. Yeah. And uh, they've made all this yardage on three plays and scored touchdowns on it. The running game has been consistently good. They used a variety of running endeavors. They run straight mm -hmm. at uh, the Gophers. They run option plays. They run pitch outs. They run trap plays. They've, they've done about anything they wanted to do. They've given their offense a good test in this ball game. And of course, the offensive line impresses me more every time I, I see yep. them play football. They, they've done a fine job opening those holes. Unofficially now in the first half, Nebraska 428 total yards. Minnesota 136, but the individual stats are even more impressive. Rushing for Nebraska, Irving Fryer, two carries, 63 yards, and one touchdown. Mike Rozier, seven carries, 77 yards, and a touchdown. Mark Shaleen, six carries, 44 yards. Jeff Smith, five carries, 27 yards. And Turner Gill, two carries and 68 yards. Well, that's a very well-balanced uh, group of runners. There. There's nobody has dominated. It seems like everybody that gets their hands on the ball has done very well. Turner is three of 10 passing for 136 yards and two touchdowns. Both touchdowns to Irving Fryer. Irving has two catches and 138 yards receiving in the first half. Livingston punting for Nebraska. He has four punts and a 43.7 average. And again, uh, it's tough to find something bad about Nebraska's first half effort. Uh, they've done very well. There was one spell where Minnesota marched the ball down the field with a score of 21 and nothing and scored a touchdown. I, I imagine they'll look for some faults in the defense during that drive, but that's the only time that they have really not looked quite well. Jill Salem said at halftime, Coach, that, that he knows they can't win the ball game. Will he tell the team that uh, when they're in there at halftime? Will he say, guys, the game's over, just play it out? No, I don't think so. Joe, Joe said that, I, I guess, in a realistic sense, but he won't say that to the team. Uh, I think he'll kind of emphasize the, the all-out effort in order to uh, go out there and, and, you know, be respectable and have the, you know, the fans stick with him and that. Uh, I don't think he'll come right flat out and tell them we know we're not going to win now because that would be very, very discouraging. Yeah. And I think if the players went around and mentioned that, that wouldn't be very good for Joe Salem either. I, I, I don't think so. I think he'll try to encourage them as much as he can. I don't think he'll jump on them too hard. Uh, he's got a tough job just kind of building their spirit up, getting them to... He might have trouble getting some of them to come out of the dressing room. <laughs> Coach, the Nebraska team coming back out onto the field. I want to pass along a score in the third period now. UNO leads South Dakota 10-3, to so it looks like Tom Osborne's winning and Sandy Boot is winning, too. Right. You know one thing I forgot to mention here? I enjoyed the halftime of the Minnesota yep. band. They, 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 were, they were great. And, right on cue. Right. And I, I, I read in the program prior to the game that uh, there were no injuries, that they were at full strength. So they gave a tremendous performance. And, and I enjoyed the halftime. I, I hope the second half uh, goes along, you know, uh, that we do very well on there. And Minnesota kind of keeps the ball on the ground a little bit here so they don't keep the stadium open till the lights go off. Now, at least the uh, band came to play. We're standing by for Ed Cairo and Tom Osborne down to the sidelines. Let's go down to Ed Cairo for a word of Nebraska coach Tom Osborne as we get set to start the second half. Ed? Welcome again to the sidelines just before the start of the second half and Coach Tom Osborne. Tom, your team certainly hasn't lost any enthusiasm for football for this second half. Well, we hope they play hard. You know, this is kind of where we let down last week. And we, uh, when you're playing, you want to play well. And so we're hoping these guys will come back and play well, execute well. And we've got a few guys a little bit tired, but I'm sure Minnesota does too. 32-point lead, Tom. Do you start experimenting, looking at people at this point? Not for a little while. We'll play our first units for maybe the first six, seven, eight minutes if we continue to sustain things, and then we'll start putting a lot of people in. We've already played a lot of people. Coach yeah. Tom Osborne of Nebraska, thank you very much thank for being with us. Bob, let's go back upstairs to start the second half with you. Okay, thank you, Ed. Minnesota will receive as we start the second half, and Coach Tom touched on that briefly. Nebraska had a letdown against Wyoming last week. Is that a concern when you've got such a big lead that the guys might kind of lay down and the other team get hyped up? Well, uh, last week uh, they did that, but you know, uh, Wyoming uh, was, I don't know how they come out today, but they were leading a good Air Force team uh, early in the ball game, so Wyoming may have been a better football team than we give them credit for. I don't think we'll see that happen today. Nebraska will kick off as we start the second half, and the first half was all Nebraska. The Huskers gaining 428 total yards to 136 yards for the Golden Gophers. And a bit of a clarification out of the first half. Murphy was taken out of quarterback, and Hare replaced him in the starting uh, position there. Apparently, Coach Joe Salem having a lot of confidence in Hare. Murphy was not uh, injured in the first half, 
and Hare they consider to be the better runner, so they put him in to try to challenge the Nebraska attack. But the Huskers have a 42-10 lead as we start the second half. Now here's a driving kickoff that goes uh, right to the back of the end zone and uh, will not be run out. So Minnesota put the ball in play on their 20-yard line. You know, something that we haven't mentioned and might mention, uh, there's a fine bunch of football players out there playing for the University of Nebraska, but you know, there are also a lot of very fine students on this squad. Yep. This squad has a very fine academic record, and I think we can be proud of that along with their prowess as a football team. Coach, I got a surprising score to pass along. UCLA and Arizona, a final score, 26-26, a tie. Well, there's been quite a few ties today, and uh, that uh, it didn't surprise me too much. On first down, Minnesota runs the ball. That's Hunter. He runs right out of his shoe and gains eight yards on first down out to the 28. It's uh, kind of hard to figure just how good uh, UCLA will be. They played some tough football. Watch Hunter lose his shoe. Right there. He just flat ran out of his shoe. This kid's quick. Uh, Hunter showed some good running ability there in that play, and uh, uh, he's got just a short distance to go for first down. I mean, it's second and one. They'll call it officially second down and two. Murphy gives inside to Puck, and he has the first down. Number 75, Rob Stuckey, and 51, Mark Dom on the tackle. Gopher showed a lot of pass in the first half. Second half, it's uh, two running plays. Kind of surprising. I, I think, Bob, that Minnesota should try to work up some kind of a running attack here. If they're going to plan for the future, they can't just come out here and throw the ball on every play like they did the first half. I think they've got to go to try to work up a running attack. This puck is a big kid. 6'4", 210 pounds, only a sophomore out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Minnesota now in the eye. They didn't show much eye in the first half. Murphy may be audibling, takes a lot of time, gives to Hunter on the left side, gets a yard. On the tackle, number 44, Mike Knox, and 64, Mike Tranmer, starting in middle guard now. Check it now. We've got a replacement in the lineup, number 37 for Minnesota, a new running back in there. That is Valdez Baylor, tailback, 6-foot, 196-pound sophomore out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I think Joe Salem is going to try to take a look at uh, a lot of his players. Now they're back in that uh, really double slot formation, and this is the one they throw the ball out of an awful lot. Carroll in the slot to the near side, Hunter to the far side, Puck the lone running back. Murphy airs it out, and it's just tipped away from number one, Dwayne McMullen. There's a pass. There's a inter there's Let's a see. flag on the play. Uh, we'll Brett have to Clark. Wait and see what happens. Brett Clark with the defensive move on that one. Uh, we'll see what the flag is. Here's the isolation on McMullen. Yeah, the, recover the coverage on McMullen was very good. There's one man in front of him. There's another man coming up from behind who takes the ball and actually, I believe, intercepts it, but I think he, they really went out of bounds. That looked like a clean play to me. I didn't see any contact. We'll wait and check and see what the flag is. Well, I, I'm not sure that it isn't against Minnesota. Yeah, they're talking to defensive captain Mike Keeler. Right. You know, Keeler has come a long way. He's a player of Omaha right. Burke High School. A year ago at this time, Keeler in the hospital with cancer surgery. Here's the official call. That's a loss of down foul, an eligible downfield, Minnesota, third down. Right. That's. I wondered why they took a five-yard penalty, but I can see when it was a loss of down, they would take it. So it'll bring up a second down at 14. The Gophers again in that passing formation. Puck, the lone running back. 33 Hunter on the near side. Carroll in the slot on the far side. Murphy, the quarterback. Long count. Gives it to Puck. The play up the middle gets maybe to the 31. Maybe across the 30. We'll check. And now it's coming up fourth down and 15. Here's the first half stats officially, Coach. Huskers rushing for 292 yards. Total yards, 428. The only place Nebraska losing in penalties. Four penalties for 59 yards. Minnesota, two for 20 yards. Uh, the fumble situation. Minnesota fumbled twice, but they did not lose the ball. And Nebraska had one interception. Blanchard will kick it away to Nebraska. That's deep back for the Huskers. Smith and Fryer. This, let's check, see who it is now. Tom Osborne also substituting freely. Irving Fryer on the return that time. A seven-yard return out of Blanchard's punt. And the Huskers will take over. First down and 10 in yep. their own territory. Well, I, I think uh, Tom has got most of the first stringers in here. I, I haven't been able to tell whether Mike Rozier is at the eye back or not. Good stick on Irving Fryer yeah. that time. Uh, Mike Rozier is at the eye back. Mike Rozier, Shalene, Fryer, Gill. Turner Gill, first down and 10 at the 41-yard line. 
Rozier off the right side gets maybe four to the 45. Uh, Mike Rozier, I think, had 70-some yards. Uh, he got a lot of yardage last week. He did not get his 100 yards in the first game, I don't believe, against Penn State, where he was very close to it. But right. uh, I'd like to see him uh, pop a few runs here. While he's in there, I'd like to see Mike break one long one here. Last week against Wyoming, Rozier, 191 yards and four touchdowns. He became the Nebraska all-time leading ball carrier. Second down and seven. Gill to Rozier again across the 45 near the 50-yard uh, line. Uh, Minnesota defense, both of those plays pretty well, and, and Mike got about all he could out of me. Uh, he, he had a cut back inside, and it's now, I believe, third and about uh, four, four yards to right. go here. Officially third down and five at the 47-yard line. We may see Turner pass on this down. Huskers have kept the ball on the ground so far. It's their opening drive here in the second half. Huskers with a 42-10 lead, 11-36 left in the third. On third down so far, Turner's either throwing the ball or run the option most of the time. Here's the pitch out. Prior in motion, Rozier with the carry. He gets the first down and more. Mike Rozier across the 50, down to the 41-yard line. Husker is another first and 10. Number 88, Bruce Holmes on the defense that time. Holmes, a 6'2 sophomore. Here's another look at Mike Rozier. Mike uses his blockers uh, to the best of his advantage. He cuts back inside of a block there. He gets every bit of yardage. On every play, Mike carries the ball. He gets about every bit of yardage that he possibly can get. He makes very few mistakes carrying the football. Gill passing on first and ten. He's pressured, gets the ball away at short, intended for Fryer. On the defense that time, number eight, Kerry Glenn, the right cornerback. Huskers now will have a second and ten. Fryer was open. Uh, Turner just kind of looked like he underthrew him or else he was afraid that the defensive back was too close. You mentioned, Coach, earlier on that the uh, split receivers bring in the play. This time, Scott Kimball in now at the play to Turner Gill. Right. Uh, Coach Osborne alternates uh, Simmons and, and Kimball. Huskers now with their starting lineup in the uh, ball game. Second down and 10. Mike Rozier on the right side. Gets outside. Turns the corner inside the 30-yard line. Uh, Mike Rozier just outran the defensive end. Nobody blocked the defensive end. Uh, Mike just plain outrun him and then cut up field for the first down. This is Nebraska's bread and butter play, really the pitch play, and Mike Rozier really does well on these. There he goes, out and around. I think that's what they call the 41 pitch play, number 23 it's on the tackle that time. Craig that White along with... to the left. That'd probably be 49. Okay, 49 to the right, 41 to the left. Well, for... Well, since if it's to the right, it was 41. Yeah, it would be 41. Okay. Husker's you're, first you're right. down and 10. Inside the 30, Gill passing. It's complete and no. dropped. Uh, Ricky Simmons, the intended receiver, could not connect on the ball. Mike Rozier now, unofficially, 107 yards on 11 carries. And for his career at Nebraska, now Mike Rozier, 3,001 yards. Here's a look at Ricky Simmons dropping that ball. He has it in his hands. It would have been a good catch. Huskers now second down at 10 to the 29. You see Ricky Simmons on the sidelines. Kimball now in at wide receiver. He's split to the bottom of the screen. Rozier the eye back. Shaleen the fullback. This is Shaleen and nowhere. I'll say this for Minnesota, Bob. They've given up yardage very grudgingly in this drive here. Uh, they, they really have uh, played pretty well. Watch him take Shaleen's uh, helmet off here. These Minnesota players are fired right. up. They're, they're, they're hitting in there. They, that's one of the few times they've stopped that trap play, but they stopped it dead that time. And Shaleen's helmet bounces away. It'll bring up a third down and 11 for the Huskers. Their opening drive in the third period. And a 42-10 Nebraska lead. 10-19 left in the third. They got Fryer and Simmons split out wide here. And there Gill rolls out. This is a option runner pass and he runs. Turner will keep it inside the 15 down to the 12. And I'm not sure that that wasn't a designated running play. It looked like they, Turner intended to run from the word go. He had plenty of interference out in front of him. He Good. takes out here and he, right now you see a block by Rozier. Good lead block by number 94. Right. Tight end Brian Hemer right. gets in there too and leads Turner down. Turner Gill is, is a fine runner and he uh He's got good speed. He's the fastest quarterback, as I mentioned, in the Big 8 Conference. Blazing speed for Turner Gill. First and 10 of the 12. Mike Rozier inside the 10 to the 5. He fights in. Is he in for the touchdown? No. Well, they rule he's not quite. It looked like he hit that pylon, but uh, he didn't quite get in there, according to the official. 
Mike Rozier gains 11 down to the one. Watch the good lead block. Number 58, Harry Griminger, leads him around. They pull the guard, 72, Raritan. Mike, Mike shakes, shakes off one tackler, and he carries that other one almost into the end zone. Here he comes again, right at you, Mike Rozier. Good block by Raritan, 72 right there. Rozier almost made it in. It'll be a first and goal at the one. You've got to think Rozier on this play. Double tight end, Turner Gill calls the signals. Rozier over the top, touchdown. And Rozier is now turning what was a, sort of a mediocre day into a real good one again. We'll check the stats on Mike Rozier unofficially now. 119 yards on 13 carries, and this is second touchdown of the day. Mike goes up over the top here. He just launches. Huskers now with a 48-10 lead. Livingston on now to try the extra point. Turner Gill will hold. You know, an interesting thing, Bob, on the runs that uh, Rozier made to the outside, we have these great big interior linemen out in front of them. That's a remarkable job of blocking. Livingston's PAT is good with 9.41 left in the third. Nebraska leads 49-10. We'll be back. For years, you've been told what length of time your money had to be on deposit. Now, American Charter's Time Access Certificate lets you choose the term you want. Make mine 19 months, then I can pay cash for the car. The longer your term, the higher your interest. I'd like 49 months for college. For as little as $500, you can have Time Access from American Charter. It's of the people, for the people. American Charter. McNugget Mania After Dark. Night falls, and across the nation, McDonald's Chicken McNuggets take on a whole new meaning. Dinner! Now, McDonald's introduces the new, even bigger McNuggets 20-piece size. McNuggets enough for dinner by candlelight, moonlight, even flashlight. McNuggets! McDonald's and you! A Nebraska football game is the perfect time to enjoy 20-piece packs of Chicken McNuggets. Have them at home when the game's on TV, or stop by McDonald's on your way to the stadium. Back at the Minneapolis Metrodome, the Golden Gopher making friends with the Husker crowd, some 20,000 strong here among the crowd of 62,000. Huskers have a 49-10 lead, 9.41 left in the ballgame. Dan Wingard now will kick off for Nebraska. This kid came out of Westside High originally as a quarterback coach, and he's come on to be a pretty good kicker. Right, he has, and uh, Donovan Small is back for uh, about the seventh or eighth time receiving a kickoff, and he's going to try to run this one out. He'll bring it out to the 10, to the 15, he 25. Gets he gets the block, and he's nailed. He goes out to 24-yard line there before he stopped that time. Brett Clark on the tackle, a good hit by Brett Clark. Dan Winger drilled that kick into the uh, two yards into the end zone, and the Gophers will have a first down and 10 at their own 24-yard line. Let's well, check Donovan Small again. He's made some good runs, and he's made some bad ones. This is probably his best effort of the night. Right. He's, he used pretty good judgment here. That ball was right on the goal line, and he had a fair chance to run it out. Look at Wingard. That was him on the tackle. Wingard and Brett Clark. Good effort by the kicker. Murphy gives off to Hunter. Tranmer drills him, and the linebackers bring him down. Probably a gain of about three or four on the play, and uh, uh, Minnesota has changed their tactics, definitely. They've... Uh, that guy looks like he's big enough to play right there. I think Tom ought to put a helmet on and put him in. <laughs> but, uh, uh, well, somebody's hurt on the Minnesota team here. Yeah, let's check, see who's down. That is number 33. That is Hunter down on the field. We'll take a break with 9.22 left in the third. Nebraska leads 49-10. We'll be back. Take a look at the reports on Toyota. You'll discover experts say Toyota is quality. And Old Mill Toyota can offer more selection and lower prices. That's why we're the number one Toyota dealer in Nebraska and Iowa. Shop around if you like, but if it doesn't say Old Mill Toyota, you're probably paying too much. I'm, I'm ready, ready for, for a, a test, test drive. drive. Thanks. Thanks. Just, Just doing, doing our job. job. Old Mill Toyota, 108th and Dodge. This car brings you the best way to bank all over town. Now it also brings you a free gift and a chance to win a Caribbean cruise for two. Coming soon to a mailbox near you. The Envelope, saving you money with coupons and bargains good all over town. Watch for The Envelope in your mailbox this week.
Dave Wingert here. We're having fun all day on KGOR Radio. Fun music, fun people, fun place to be. FM 100, see you in the morning. All right, sir. No better. Back at the Minneapolis Metro Dome, Tony Hunter up on his feet now. He took some kind of hit, Coach. They're going to help him off the field. Yeah, it looks like it might be a knee or an ankle here, and that's too bad for Tony Hunter and the Minnesota football team because if he is hurt seriously, it will cut into their running backs. In fact, Hunter had looked pretty good in the ball game here. You see him cutting back, and uh, I don't know just where he got that leg hurt, but there were about five Nebraska players converged on him all of a sudden there. Hunter, their leading ground gainer last year, quit the team. He's back now playing well in the first half but hobbling off in the third period. Go for ball now, second down and six at their own 29. Murphy, the quarterback, Puck, the lone running back. Once more, they use motion. Motion to the right. To give the Puck up the middle, he spins away from a tackle, and Dom brings him down at the 34. It was a pretty good effort on the part of Puck that time. He, he shook off a couple of tacklers. And it's very close to a first down. I believe they're going to measure. I think they're going to give it to him. First down and 10 for the Gophers. Yeah. David Puck could be a good fullback. He is a, a six foot four, 209 pounder. He's been a fairly consistent fullback. He's ran in there pretty tough. Uh, he's had quite a few opportunities to carry the ball. And when they've been in this spread formation, why he's really the only running back that's left to carry the ball. Last week against Rice, Puck the leading ground gainer. He had 94 yards. He's the lone back here. Murphy rolls out to the right, looking to pass over the middle. It's oh, incomplete. He had the receiver open. And he just made a bad pass. The receiver was open that time. That's one of the few times they've had a guy wide open. Valdez Baylor in now spelling the injured Tony Hunter. He comes out of the backfield. And he should have had this ball. Right, that ball was right in his hands. Baylor Ooh. only a sophomore. He's a backup on this Minnesota team. Check, yeah, he is a sophomore. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. It'll be a second down and 10 now for the Gophers. Split back formation with... Baylor and Puck behind Murphy. Murphy wants to pass. Goes to the left side, throws it away. Yeah, he threw that away. That uh, halfback that he was going to throw to was well, well covered. Charlie McBride caught that one. I didn't know a defensive line coach has such good hands. Charles is a well, very versatile athlete. You never know what to expect out of these coaches. Third down and 10 now. Murphy looks to the sideline, see what Joe Salem wants to call part of the Nebraska contingent. Probably Joe's about to the point say, son, you go ahead and call him. I haven't had much luck. Third down and 10. Gophers 0 for 10 on third down conversions. The draw play to Puck. Make that 0 for 11. Minnesota does not get the first down. It'll bring up a fourth down. And Blanchard will come on to kick it. Uh, how many times has Blanchard punted the ball today? Is a, a statistic statistician had that down. He's been back there punting it an awful lot. Coach in the first half Blanchard kicked the ball seven times averaged just under 40 yards and he's kicked it uh, two or three times. This is his third kick this half I believe or second. Yeah I think it's his second time so this makes kick number nine for Blanchard he's getting a workout gets this one off in time a good uh, kind of a short kick but it hangs up there. Jeff Smith at the 30. He's in the wall. There's a 40. Might go. Jeff Smith to the 50. Puck is the one man he's got to beat. He gets away oh, and trips up. Ball. David Puck tripped him up or Jeff Smith would have been gone. Jeff Smith a great run back. Blanchard does not get off a great kick and watch Smitty. Smith follows his blocking very well and Jeff has good speed and great acceleration here. Puck is the one man he's got to beat. I don't think there are two better punt return or kick return men in the country than uh, Jeff Smith and Irving Pryor. I think they're definitely the best. A 32-yard punt and a 39-yard return. Husker is first and 10 at the go for 31. There's a reverse. Irving Pryor on the left side. Touchdown! Pryor has been very successful running the ball. The few times he's had uh, his hands on the ball, he's probably averaged about 30 yards a try. This is Irving Pryor's fourth touchdown of the game, his second one on the ground. Good lead block by Raritan, and nobody's going to catch the fastest guy in the Nebraska team. Well, Pryor has tremendous speed. Uh, he, uh, anybody that can run a 4 2 3 40, that is fast. Did they ever time you in the 40, Coach? Do you have any idea what your time I, was? I don't think I could get uh, quite that close. I, I doubt whether I'd get much under 
I want to I, I want to put a watch on that. I couldn't run that 40 yard dash if they time me much under 50 seconds probably. They could time me with a sundial. Huskers now. Will there try the. Ah, uh, there's a flag on the play. Uh, somebody's in motion, or there's. We'll see what's going on here. The, the play was successful. Coach, I think we've got to call one back. I don't think Irving Fryer got in on that touchdown. He didn't. They didn't. What? Huh? We were too worried about each other's 40 times, and Irving Fryer did not get in for the touchdown. Where did he go? It's an illegal procedure play. Let's get the call. Procedure, Nebraska. They did not have seven men on the line of scrimmage. Oh, I'm sorry. I I thought the I thought we had him in well in the end zone. Boy, look up at the scoreboard, and it's still 49 to 10. Huskers trying to get in now. Well, uh, somewhere along the line, we. They called that one back with a penalty. We apologize for not catching that. Maybe right. the Huskers can put it in here. That's too much time there. Well, this is the thing that the offensive people, the offensive coaches kind of hate to see is something like this happening down here. Uh, when you're ready to score and having little things like that, uh, yeah, that's two penalties in a row. Nebraska will now have a first down and 12. Ball foul. Interior lineman moving before the snap. Nebraska still first down. Huskers jumped twice. Well, first. they've got uh, only just about a normal first down to go. They got about 12 yards to go for a touchdown here. First down. Huskers in the I formation. Turner Gill. Double tight end. Fakes to Rosier. Yeah. Rolls to the left side. To the one, and he's in. I think that is officially a touchdown, Bob. I think we can call that a touchdown. I think that's as good as we'll ever see one. Turner Gill rolls outside a 12-yard touchdown. And Gill looked like a fullback here. If they show a replay of that play, he just uh, put his shoulder down and just bowled his way into the end zone right over a man. Now watch him here as he comes out. I think this is almost a designated run. That blocking is tremendous here. Now watch when Turner gets right down the goal line here. He Boom. just goes right into those two men and goes on into the end zone. That's a great effort by Gill. The point after touchdown by Livingston is up and good. And with seven minutes and 17 seconds left in the third period, it's Nebraska 56, Minnesota 10. We'll be back. Why do 100,000-mile flyers choose United? When I travel, I don't like stops any more than the next guy. Neither does United. That's why United has more non-stop flights to the coast than any other airline. For a little extra, you can enjoy your meal, do some work, and arrive a lot earlier. Take a United non-stop to the coast. United has the only daily non-stop to Los Angeles. Life already has enough ups and downs. People who fly for a living fly United's friendly skies. Yeah, that's, that's Irving. That's Irving. Now let's see what happened to him here. Back live at the Minneapolis Metro Dome. Here's the touchdown by Irving Fryer that was called back. Watch his left foot. Uh oh. The right foot stepped I out. See. They really stepped out of bounds. I couldn't figure. I knew nobody tackled him. The right foot stepped out of bounds at the three yard line. Yeah. Irving just lost track of where he was on the field there. Uh, he, he didn't need to step out of bounds. Nobody forced him out. I think he just lost track how close to sideline yeah. he was. At this point, it's academic. Turner Gill ran right. in for the touchdown himself, and Huskers are up 56-10. Wingard will kick it off again, and Small will take it at the 2. He's got to run this one. Small to the 10, to the 15, and down to the 19. I tell you, Irving Fryer fooled me on that one, Coach. It looked like he was in oh, so yeah. easily. Yeah, that's I, I couldn't figure it out. I think it's uh, sort of inexcusable that I didn't see him call that back. I didn't. I don't know any reason why he would have stepped out of bounds, except that he just must have lost track of where he was on the play. Yeah, it might be a loss of concentration on his part. A lot of substitutions now. You see the first team offensive line for Nebraska taking a rest. The first team defense is uh, getting a lot of rest too. 
Holloway now in at linebacker, number 43, Tony Holloway out of Bellevue. Along with him, 46, Chad Daffer. Murphy brings him out of the eye, first and 10 of the 20. The give to Baylor. He gets a couple. Billy Weber brings him down. I think for the rest of the ball game, you're going to see Tom Osborne substituting very frequently and very freely. I, I doubt if we're going to see a whole lot of that first team offense or defense uh, uh, in this ball game anymore. We see Mark Shalene enjoying the Nebraska crowd on the sidelines along with uh, Raritan. Right. You have uh, the lineman there. And you have Mike Rozier sitting there in the bench quietly. Second out and eight for the Gophers at their own 22-yard line. They're down 56-10. The pitch to Baylor along the right side. Finds a hole. Has an opening. He's tripped up at the 37-yard line. On the tackle for Nebraska is number three. Let's check see who that is. We're seeing a lot of different players here in the second half. That time it was Gary Schneider, a 5'11", 185-pound sophomore. The safety out of O'Neill. Schneider, a good, uh, good breaker saver right here. Right. Uh, Schneider is uh, actually a... Uh, uh, 185 pounder all right and uh, he has not played a whole lot but I, I think they have they think quite a bit of him they think he's a pretty good prospect and it's a good thing that some of these younger fellows get a chance to play it, it really helps them as the season goes along because first, excuse me coach one of the first team players get hurt you put a, a fellow in there that hasn't had much opportunity to play and he's under a lot of pressure to make some mistakes Tell but, you, even the uh, even the sisters are on our side tonight. Yeah, everybody's happy from Nebraska. The Minnesota people are sitting there wondering and uh, might be thinking some bad thoughts. Murphy's pass incomplete on first down. Ricky Green broke it up. It'll bring up a second down and ten for the Gophers at their own 38. Split backs, Baylor and Puck behind Murphy. Murphy, the draw play to Puck, and he gets nowhere. Holloway on the tackle. If the passing attack is working real well, they have a little better chance on the draw play. Yeah. But when the passing attack is having problems, why it's tough to run that draw play because it's pretty hard to draw those uh, defensive linemen uh, through there uh, unless they block them out of there. They pretty hard to run a draw in this situation. Let's check and see who's in there now. Dave Ritter is at defensive end. Doug Herman at tackle. Jim Scow, number 96, at defensive tackle on the right side. And Scott Tucker, 89, the defensive end. You have an entire uh, second team defensive unit in there, sprinkled with a few third base. They show blitz, but don't come. Murphy gets the ball off a good completion. He's brought down by number three. That's Schneider again. The completion to number four, Clark Johnson, the flanker. And, and I know what the Nebraska coaches are thinking now. Uh, is this going to be another Wyoming second half? Uh, they're anxious to see that reserve team uh, show there because uh, last week against Wyoming, uh, Wyoming scored some points at, uh, against this group, and uh, Minnesota's moving the ball right now. We'll check that. It was Melvin Anderson, a 5'10 freshman on the catch that time. Gophers first and 10 at the 43. Murphy barks him out. Baylor in motion behind Puck. The give is to Baylor on the left side. He gets through to the 35, to the 30. Baylor down to the 21. Uh, I don't know where they've been hiding him, Bob. He looks like a pretty good runner. Baylor a good gainer and a first down. He looks like perhaps the most effective tailback that they've had there carrying the ball. This kid shows some speed. He gets around the right. corner. The Nebraska pursuit finally caught up with him, but he gets a first down at the Nebraska 21. Look at him one more time. He is the backup to Tony Hunter. Yeah, he's a third string uh, tailback. Right. Good block right there. Drove Wade Priner outside. And Baylor now gets him down to the 21. First and 10. Murphy rolls out. A lot of pressure. Puts it into the end zone. Throws it away. Ball intended that time for 89 again. Melvin Anderson. But I think Murphy wisely threw that one past him. Number six defending for Nebraska on the play. Todd Fisher. He's a sophomore. Out of Omaha, Burke, the second string left cornerback behind Neil Harris. Mostly second and a couple of third teamers in there, Coach. Right. Uh, uh, Tom is, is wants to give these people experience, and I know the coaches that coach these various positions are anxious to see this bunch play, and they're anxious to see them do a little better job on defense in this. And this worries them a little if uh, they if Minnesota should score on this team. 
Murphy passing, looking into the end zone. It's incomplete. Intended again for Melvin Anderson on a second down call. Right. Nebraska knows, however, if, if, if this team, if they can score on this team, why uh, it's going to shake the confidence of the coaches in using these reserve players when the game is very close. Got to keep in perspective, though. Minnesota running basically with their first team offense. Nebraska almost entirely second and third teamers. Oh, yes, there there there's no doubt. But I know that uh, I know their coach is looking at it. Uh, they, they look at it that this team should stop Minnesota also. Gophers now third down and 10. They are one of 12 in third down conversion. Murphy passing That's across the middle incomplete threw it away. That was a sort of a bad pass. I think he had one back coming across there pretty open number 37 coming across there pretty open but yeah. he just seemed to overthrow you would think they bring on the kicking team now and I think they will on a fourth down and 10 situation at the 21 yard line it would bring up about a 28 yard excuse me 38 yard field goal well within Jim Gallery's range now they're going to go for it let's check now gallery on the field he'll spot the ball at the 28 so it will be a 38 yard field goal <laughs> gallery Go ahead. During practice, Gallery was kicking. I mean, I saw him kick one 58-yard field goal during practice. He's a good kicker. This one's up and good. Jim Gallery nails the 38-yard field goal with 3.56 left in the third. It's Nebraska 56 and Minnesota 13. We'll be right back. If you'd like to start saving big money on long-distance phone calls, raise your right hand and call this number. You'll learn about Thrifty Call. The discount long distance service with a few extra touches. I can save 20, 40, 60 percent or more on every call. Anywhere in the continental USA. Any time of the day. Or night. Or night. Call us to hear all about Thrifty Call. The discount long distance phone service with a few extra touches. Listen to the deals the price maker is making for our spectacular September sale. Radigan Road in Missouri Valley lets you pick a Chevy Celebrity was 11315. Your choice only 9475. An old Sierra was 12202. Your choice only 10236. A Pontiac 6000 was 11262. Your choice only 9438. Or Buick Centuries was 1279. Your choice only 10100. Year end closeout prices on over 500 GM cars, trucks, and vans with 10.9% financing on selected models. Radigan Road in Missouri Valley. Back at the Metrodome, Jim Gallery, a 38-yard field goal. Gophers have cut the Nebraska lead to 56-13. Gallery will tee it up and coach two new deep backs for Nebraska. Right. You, you have Ricky Simmons and Paul Miles. Now, Miles is one of the fastest of the Nebraska backs. He's got great speed. He runs about a 4-3, 40-yard dash. And Miles will return it. He's up to the 15, to the 20, breaks outside, and they haul him down to the 21. Miles looked pretty good last week against the University of Wyoming, and uh, I, I know they're anxious to see him play in here. You know, Nebraska is so deep. Miles listed as the third team I back. I think on many teams, he'd be the first team star. M Miles uh, could play for a lot of teams. You're right. And uh, as Jeff Smith could, too. Yeah. We'll see who the I back is now for Nebraska with both Smith and Miles on the sidelines. They must be in with Mike Rozier. Mike Rozier. First and 10 for Nebraska at the 22. Nate Mason gives to Rosier on the right side. He bulls his way up at the 28. I, I know in this situation, Tom is torn as to whether to play Mike Rosier or not. But, you know, Mike, Mike's got a, a goal, whether we want to talk about it or not. It's, you know, he's a Heisman Trophy candidate. And uh, the more impressive yardage that he can run up is going to help him a lot. And... I think if anybody deserves a shot at the Heisman Trophy, why Mike deserves it. And the, the way Fryer and Gill have looked, why if Mike don't win it, why one of them might. Mike Rozier gains seven, second down and three. Uh, Rozier breaks to the outside. He has the first down to the 50. Goodbye. Mike Rozier, touchdown. There's a real rel run play. He's got great blocking there, and Mike just turned it on. That was a tremendous run, and uh, the blocking on it was just terrific. Monty Ingebrigtsen threw a great block on that one. Watch. Mike Rozier goes 72 yards. Here it is again. Now, there Mike's over the open. I don't think anybody touches Mike on this run. Here's Monty's block. Boom. Uh, he's, he's, he's all the way. Mike uh, runs a touchdown there. 
Uh, nobody touched him on it. It's a good job of blocking, good job of running. Unofficially now, Mike Rozier, 209 yards. And uh, we might not see a whole lot more of Mike. The point after by Livingston is up and good. Three minutes and one second left in the third period. And Nebraska has a 63-13 lead. Mike Rozier just gets better and better unofficially now. 209 yards on 16 carries. And, Coach, that might be the last play for Mike. Yeah, I, I would say that Mike, uh, you know, he's, he's had a great night. And uh, he scored a lot. Of, uh, must be, what, three or four touchdowns for him? Yeah, let me check. I think that's Mike Rozier's second touchdown. One, two, three. He this has three touchdowns. Third touchdown. And, He's gained over 200 yards, and I would think that probably he won't play a whole lot. I think it'll be Miles and Smith from here on at the I-back. I don't know whether they brought a fourth I-back or not. Now, see, they have a 60-man traveling squad, and, and uh, I'm not sure whether they brought four I-backs. I this. think they brought Doug DeBose, number 22. I All think right. he made the trip, so we might see a lot of Miles and DeBose. Right. I wouldn't be surprised you'd see both of them. Coach now total yards with about three minutes left in the third. Nebraska has gained 605 total yards. Minnesota, 224. Wingard will kick it off. Donovan Small at the one. To the 10. To the 15. And no more. I tell you, at the end of this ball game, uh, Nebraska, I think, is going to be certainly the total offense and the rushing offense leaders in the country and perhaps the scoring leader besides. Coach, I got a final score in college football tonight. Stanford goes to 0-2 on the season. Illinois beat Stanford 17-7. They need John Elway back. Uh, yeah, they do. They miss him. Minnesota now first down to 10 at their own 15. They are down 63-13. to 2.56 left in the third. Murphy still a quarterback. Puck the fullback. And Baylor the eye back. This is Baylor. He gets to the 15, to the 20, and to the 21. I tell you, Baylor has done a pretty good job. He's ran that ball tough. He's shown some speed. Uh, this, this has to be, I think, Bob, one of the longest football games that Joe Salem, if possibly the longest football game Joe Salem has coached and maybe ever will coach. The longest game in more ways than one, probably. Right. It's, it is. It is. Uh, it's, I, I know Joe just wishes he could keep the clock going at this stage. Nebraska with a lot of second and third teamers now. Woody Page on the tackle. Casterline also in there. The give is to Baylor and he is hogtied. Number 46, Chad Daffer, the backup linebacker with a good tackle. Baylor makes first down. He had a short down or short yardage situation and I believe they will give him the first down. Nebraska brought everybody. Close. Even brought the cheerleaders out here. Yeah, it's first down. You know, I wonder if, if these guys have any eligibility left. They could suit them up. Well, they might suit some of them up there. Better dead than sooner <laughs> red. That's what Earl Bruce was saying today. His Ohio State Buckeyes yeah. beat Oklahoma by 10 in Norman. Yeah. Coming off the field now, an injured Minnesota player. Number 64, that's their starting right guard, Jeff Maritko. Steve Puck will replace him. Steve Puck, the uh, brother of the running back, David Puck. You know, this is a, a situation where I think uh, Coach Salem is going to wonder how long he should keep his first string people in there because there's really, there's a fine, oh, he dropped it. Uh, but there's really uh, no point in, in getting these players hurt at this stage of the game because uh, he, he ought to try to probably save them for yeah. a time when he's got a little better chance to win because right now, uh, they're tired and they're, they run more of a chance of getting hurt and I know he wants to try to keep this as respectable as possible but I think at this stage he might be thinking of yeah. uh, using some of the reserves or more of the reserves. That ball intended there for Lunge and Howard a good effort but as he hit the ground the ball came loose. It'll bring up now a second down and 10 for the Gophers. Murphy their first team are still in a quarterback. Murphy the draw play to puck and boom. Herman nails him, along with a little help that time from number 85, Wade Preiner, and it'll be third down and long. i tell you one thing, that puck is going to be one tired lad at the end of the game. He's carried the ball quite a bit. He's had a lot of people holding on to him when he's been carrying it. Yeah. He's been hit pretty hard. He keeps getting up. 
Coach, in that last shot, I saw Craig Sunberg's dad in the crowd. I've got to think we'll see Sunberg on Nebraska's next drive. I, I wouldn't be surprised. He's going to play before the game's over. We've got another quarter to go after we got a minute and five seconds in this one. Third and eight, a mishandled snap. The ball goes off to Puck, and he gets nowhere. On the tackle that time, number 43, Tony Holloway, number 46, Chad Daffer, the backup linebackers. Here goes the punt return unit in there now. Here's two hometown products, Tony Holloway out of Bellevue and Chad Daffer out of Nebraska City. They combine on the tackle here. And out of fourth and six, the Gophers will punt it away from their own 30. Paul Blanchard has been busy today. This might be his, I think, 11th punt of the night. It's another pretty good punt off. Whoop, whoop, there's a mishandle there. There's both of the people wanted to return the punt that time. Yeah. Shane Swanson and Jeff Smith both back there. I think uh, they didn't really call out to one right. another who was going to right. do what. It, it looked like uh, Swanson was right there and Smith cut across in front of him. Let's check and see who's in now. Scott Schotker in at wide receiver. Brian Hemer is the tight end. Benning. And Craig Sundberg comes out of quarterback, as we expected. Mark Benning is one of the biggest of the Nebraska football players, about 290 pounds, uh, six foot, six and a half or seven. He's Craig. out of Denton, Texas. Craig Sundberg gives to Jeff Smith. He breaks out to the right side. A first down and more. Out near midfield. There's going to be a, a great number of Nebraska backs that have gained a lot of yardage today. You can Rozier and Fryer and Turner Gill, Shaleen, and you've got uh, Jeff Smith and uh, a lot of these other fellows that are running the ball in there now. Uh, just They're going to gain a lot of yardage. They're Going to come, most of them are going to be close to 100 yards. This will be the last play of the third period. They don't get it off. The clock runs out to end the third period. Nebraska leads Minnesota 63 to 13. We'll be right back. Case beds, colonial beds, modern beds, soft-sided beds, big beds, little beds, cheap beds, expensive beds, whatever style you're looking for, the Red Room Shop is the place. During our gigantic water bed liquidation sale, prices have been slashed on our entire inventory of quality water beds and bedroom furniture. Now you can have a complete water bed, including frame, pedestal, mattress, liner, and heater for only $114.98. At the Red Room Shop, and we say prices have been slashed, we mean it. Hurry down today to the Red Room Shop, 970 South 72nd. If there's anybody out there who's never tried pan pizza at Pizza Hut, boy, are you missing something. If you miss pan pizza at Pizza Hut, oh, look at the cheese. You're missing all that ah, cheese. Don't believe it. Lots of tasty toppings up. Mm, please. Your first won't be the last for that. Oh, so give it a try at your hometown Pizza Hut. Western Bell is part of the biggest information network in the world. It moves 90% of all business information, computer data, graphics, video signals, and it's right at your fingertips. The Northwestern Bell Information Network. It opens a world of possibilities. If you have information to move, nothing moves more of it to more places more quickly, more reliably than the information network of Northwestern Bell. Thunderbird. No sharp corners, no hard angles, no ornament more distinctive than the shape itself. A shape which effectively puts the wind to work. So the way Thunderbird looks helps the way it drives, the way it sits on its tires, the way it takes a turn. The result is a feel of driving that is pure Thunderbird. Come in for a test drive today at your Metro Ford dealer. Gray and Schrader, weeknights on Newswatch 7. Back at the Metro Dome, Nebraska leading 63 to 13. A score to pass along to you. With 28 seconds left, UNO is leading South Dakota 17 to 10. Nebraska now first down and 10. Craig Sunberg to Jeff Smith, and he gets nowhere. Coach unofficially now through three periods of play here at the Metro Dome. Nebraska 617 total yards. Minnesota 239. The impressive stat is Nebraska's rushing yards, 481 yards rushing in three periods of play. I tell you what, there's, uh, most teams in the country would be very happy with that for total offense for the entire game. Yeah. Second down to 10 now for the Huskers. Sunberg, the third quarterback to play. 
wants to pass, has Jeff Smith in the flat, across the 50 to the 40. Jeff Smith at the 30, the 25, he could go all the way. Jeff Smith, touchdown. Well, Jeff Smith probably got quite a few yards right now. I don't know what it is, but he's probably over 100. Craig Sunberg to Jeff Smith. And the Huskers they go have, up 69 to 13. Great little play here. Yeah, they'll have to call that. They can't call that running yards for Smith, so I guess we can't won't affect his average, but it's a great job of running after he caught that swing pass. Little hipper dipper there. That really took his defensive man out. This kid's a great eye back. Tell you, he may put Mike Rozier on the bench. Well, I, I don't know as he'll do that, but I'll tell you, he's a great back. <laughs> Point after touchdown is good. And with 14 minutes and 15 seconds left in the ballgame, it's Nebraska 70, Minnesota 13. We'll be back. Yeah, this is me for my pancakes. For that little extra care. They said three eggs, but it looks like five. That village in extra something that makes you declare. Nobody treats me quite like Village Inn. For the taste of a special treat. A real German apple pancake. That bring you back again. Nobody quite stacks up to Village Inn. Visit Village Inn in Omaha, Lincoln, Council Bluffs, Bellevue, and Fremont. It's always been tough to be a Kmart price. It's one of the things that makes Kmart Kmart. And we keep a pretty good eye on things to make sure that stays true. But if you do surprise us sometime and find a price lower than ours, on anything we sell, advertised or not, we'll match it. We simply won't be undersold. Kmart, we've got the quality. We've got the selection. And by gosh, we've got the price. Kmart, we've got it. The Minnesota fans starting to file out and go home, and believe it or not, even a few Nebraska fans are leaving their seats because with 14 minutes and 15 seconds left, Nebraska has a 70 to 13 lead over Minnesota. Dan Wingard will kick it off deep back in the end zone. Number 35, Donovan Small has been a busy man tonight receiving kicks. Right, and he doesn't quite make it to the 20 yard line here. He hasn't had a great deal of success running these kicks because the kickoff man has hung him up there real well. You know, I know how Tom Osborne's starting to feel about this time. I, I remember back in 1972, we played Army over at West Point. Yep. And uh, you wondered how to hold the score down. I think it got up to 77 points. Yep. And that's a lot of points. And I, uh, I know Tom don't want to, uh, you know, he don't want to rub this in at all. It's a, it's a tough job for him. Uh, uh, he can't tell the players not to run hard. He can't take a quarterback that he's trying to take a look at and tell him not to throw the ball at all. It's very difficult. Andy Hare now back in a quarterback for the Gophers. We may have seen the last of Murphy. Hare, the better runner of the two, rolls out and gets a couple of yards across the 20 to the 21. Number 43, a good play that time by linebacker Tony Holloway. He drove him out. Even the cheerleaders taking a timeout, Coach. Right. <laughs> I, my producer tells me she uh, she is wounded. Cheerleaders are resting. Boy, I tell you, it, it, it's a dirty, thankless job, Coach, but somebody has to do it out there. Well, I tell you that... Uh... That Minnesota team keeps coming out of the huddle every time, and they give, they give a pretty good effort, but they've got to be tired, and they've got to be awfully discouraged. Second down and seven for the Gophers at their own 21. Small in motion. He's been busy tonight returning kicks. Hare rolls out, pressured. He's nailed. Uh, he throws the ball away. It's intentional grounding. That was an attempted bootleg pass, I guess, but it, the blocking broke down. And they're going to call him down instead of an incomplete pass. They're just going to call him down back there. Yeah, yeah. he didn't get the ball off in time. Jim Scow, the good pressure on that. Great uh, defensive effort by this sophomore out of Omaha, Ron Colley. Two of the 20,000 Husker fans on hand tonight. Let's watch Hare again, Coach. They say he's the better runner of the two, well, but this time he couldn't I, get away I'm from not, Scow. Uh, it's a very poor bootleg fake, and nobody blocks the end at all. And so Minnesota now is... Uh, Let's see, third and 18 or 19. Right, third and 18 at their own 10. So they're going to put it up here. Hare, drop play, no. 85, Wade Priner stops. Donovan Small on a third down and 18. Great play by Priner. Well, I think the Nebraska reserves are playing a lot better now, too. They're making it very difficult for Minnesota to generate any offense. 
They're going to punt again. Nebraska will have good field position. And uh, I don't know what will slow them down. Some of the other fans watching the game. Waving high. Fourth down. 21 to go for the Gophers. Blanchard will kick it again from his own end zone. Gets off a wobbly kick. That's Jeff Smith again. Smith to the left side. Cuts back up the middle. And they bring him down. Coach has scored a pass along now in the fourth period. Kansas State is leading TCU. K-State 13, TCU 3 in the fourth. Good. That was a 37-yard punt. Jeff Smith ran that back eight yards. Well, we mentioned this may be one of the longest football games in the record. We started at 7.05. It's now 9.49. That's, uh, if my math serves me right, two hours and 44 minutes of football. And we still have 12.16 on the clock. It's going to be a long night. And... Uh, the only thing, any consolation, Bob, that if we think it's long, Joe Salem and that bunch of Minnesota players over there are going to think it's forever. Yeah, and it's something you mentioned before, too. They've got the whole Big 8 season ahead of them. Uh, they're, uh, they're, they're not picked very high in the Big 10 race, and uh, uh, I don't know who they might beat. They might have a chance uh, to beat. I don't know who might, they might beat at the present time because... Coach, there's a penalty here on this one. Yeah, Let's see what it was. we got a clipping penalty right, right there. That'll drive the ball back a little bit. But Nebraska keeps the ball on the ground on a first down and 10 at the 40. Let's see who the running back was on that one. Looks like Tim Brungard, number 32. Brungard is a senior out of Norfolk, Nebraska. He's a converted eyeback. Brungard was right. an eyeback last year and a fullback this year, and he's doing a pretty good job. Yeah, I think Minnesota might have a chance against uh, Purdue. Yeah. But I don't know who else, uh, possibly Indiana. But the rest of the Big Ten seems to be fairly good. Jim Thompson now the wingback, Brungard the fullback, and this is Paul Miles the eyeback. Spins inside on a second and six, and he gets four. You know, we, we saw Brungard running that ball a couple of uh, plays ago. Every time I see Tim, I kid him about what happened in the Orange Bowl. Nebraska ran a fake kick, and they threw the ball to Brungard. He was open at the one-yard line against LSU, and he dropped it. Right. And that's one I'm sure he'd like to have back. Right. Uh, Tim has had uh, a little disappointing career. Uh, he hasn't advanced too far. He, you know, he has been a second-string back, and right now he's a third-string back. Chance to show off now. Paul Miles on third down and four. He gets to the 50, and he might have the first down. They give him the first down. First down and 10 for the Huskers at midfield. As you mentioned, Coach, a very sad Minnesota bench. Yeah, you, you look over there, and they all look pretty down. They, yeah. It is 70 to 13. Ten minutes and 51 seconds left in the ballgame. Minnesota plays Purdue in the Dome here next Saturday night. And Purdue played a great game uh, this afternoon, I believe, and uh, they could give Minnesota some trouble. Well, uh... I think probably, Bob, anybody Minnesota plays could give them trouble because yeah. they're, they're lacking in, in top personnel. And there's one of the top people in the country, Mike Rozier. Mike Rozier went over the 3,000-yard mark. That's his brother, Guy Rozier, number four. Mike Rozier, the first running back in Nebraska history to gain 3,000 yards in a career. And we still have nine games left this season. Right. Mike's going to have a... He's going to set a career mark that's going to be very difficult for anybody else to break. Second down and six. Sunberg brings him out. The fake to Brungard. The give to Jeff Smith across the 45 to the 44. Well, Minnesota's done a little better job in this drive. They've slowed him down a little bit here. Coach, some more substitutions now in the game. Anthony Thomas in at guard for Nebraska. He's a big kid. 275 pounds out of San Francisco. And Anthony, more substitutions. Anthony is a, a young man that they try to keep him to get, uh, get him to keep his weight down because he is one of the few that is inclined to get overweight. Yep. Uh, Nebraska is a big team, but there's not much fat on Third down and four for the Huskers at the 44. Sunberg on the option. Has the first down. Good lead block. Sunberg with Mueling ahead of him. Sunberg is in for the touchdown. Well, I think Tom Osborne told him to keep the ball on the ground. And uh, he just ran it in for a touchdown. Greg Sunberg, a 44-yard touchdown off the option play. Great blocking. Brungard takes a man right here. And it's Sunberg and Muling out there alone, a pair of high school teammates. 
These two kids played together at Lincoln Southeast, and Sunberg makes it look so easy. Livingston on to try the point after touchdown as more fans head for the parking lot. Kick is up, and it's good. With nine minutes and 19 seconds left of the ball game, it's Nebraska 77, Minnesota 13, and we will be back. The Pony Express stopped in Omaha back in 1863, and we were their first depository. We were the first then, and we've been first ever since. The first bank with an installment loan department. First to transport money by plane, issue credit cards, and offer other new services. Today, we're still the first, with our first investor's money market fund, variable rate loans, and a plus system banking card good nationwide. The first national bank of Omaha, still the bank Omaha calls first, member FDIC. Announcing for Big Red fans only. 20% savings at the Brandeis Red Raid Shops. Go Big Red! 20% off Big Red t-shirts. Go Big Red! 20% off Big Red jerseys. Go Big Red! 20% off Big Red sweaters. Go Big Red! 20% savings now on Big Red fashions for the whole family. But hurry, these Big Red savings are for one week only. Go Big Red! Go Big Red and go right now to the Red Raid Shop. Go Big Red! Only at Brandeis. Turner Gill surveying the situation of the Metro Dome. Huskers kick off to Minnesota with a 77-13 lead. This is Donovan Small returning a kick again and again, getting nowhere. Coach has scored a pass along now in the fourth period. Vanderbilt leads Iowa State 23-22. Well, Iowa State is playing a little better football evidently than they did last week against Iowa. Vanderbilt has a pretty decent football team. I thought perhaps they would get beat uh, more than that. Unofficially now, Coach, with about nine minutes left of the ball game, Nebraska has gained 728 yards in total offense. Minnesota, 228. Nebraska has 541 yards rushing. Uh, this is about the most yardage I've ever heard of, I guess, in a football game. Yeah, it makes me want to uh, maybe dive into the record book. Minnesota first down and 10 to the 13. Well, I think the worst part about it is, uh, as far as Minnesota's concerned, Nebraska has just good football players here. They have, uh, they don't have anybody else to put in except some good, enthusiastic football players, and they're going to keep making it tough. There is Scott Kimball and uh, Ricky Simmons waving hi, Mom. I'm curious, what is the total offense record? Maybe we can find out how many yards Nebraska has gained. What's the most ever in a game? What if we can look that up? We'll try to get back to you on that. Gopher's got nowhere on first down. It'll bring up the second down and 10 at the 13-yard line. Yeah. The quarterback now in for Minnesota is number 12, Hare. Huskers on a second down and 10. Excuse me, the Gophers on second and 10. The give to the fullback. That, I think, is number 25, Demetrius Chisholm, and he's racked up at the line of scrimmage. Well, I tell you what... Uh, their uh, Donovan Small has received probably as many kickoffs as any kickoff return man in the business. Yeah. You know, I wonder if, if Joe Salem would put her in. Well, I think Joe is wondering right now. Good look at Ken Graber. He's the only Minnesota player on the Nebraska team. He was not recruited by Minnesota at all. He walked on in Lincoln, and I think he's got to, uh, got to think he made the right decision. I'm sure he does. Third down and 12. Hare rolling out. In trouble in his own end zone. Gets it away. Almost intercepted by Ricky Green. If he had thrown it just a little bit farther, Green would have had it. But he underthrew Green a little bit. Yeah. Ricky Throwing. was in good position to intercept. Threw it a triple coverage that time. Yeah. So it'll bring up a fourth down and 12 at the 13. Watch this. Ricky Green, number five, playing it all the way. The ball was a little underthrown. Turned the man around. Ricky had it right in his hands. Blanchard now on to kick again. Blanchard has been busy, and so has Donovan Small. Those have been two very busy Minnesota football players, and I know they'll be glad when it's over. That's a good punt, another good yeah. punt, real good punt. Gets the kick away to the 50-yard line for Nebraska, number six on the return. Let's check see who that is. It's good Minnesota coverage that time. For the Huskers on the return Todd was Fisher. Todd Fisher, number six. He gets maybe a yard. It'll be a first down and ten right at midfield. That was a 39-yard punt and a one-yard return.
First down and 10 for the Huskers. Next week, Minnesota plays Purdue, but they lost. I was wrong about them. They lost 35 nothing to Syracuse. Nebraska plays Syracuse in two weeks. Well, I tell you what, uh, Minnesota has got a chance then against Purdue. Sunberg on the option, keeps it, rolls to the left, pitches out, and the ball is on the ground, and Minnesota recovers. I think they rule it. They may rule out a forward pass. Yeah, there's a flag on the play. We'll now, check, see what it there's is. There's a couple of flags there. They may have ruled rule that he threw that ball forward. Yeah. Let's and check he might and see what's beyond the line of scrimmage. We'll see. Coach, I'm going to dive if into he, the. If he didn't throw it forward, then it's uh, Minnesota's ball. I guess that's right. I'm going to dive into the record book here for a minute, Coach, and see if we can find the most record or right. most yards for Nebraska. Uh, let's let's get the ruling on this play here too, because. I thought it might have been an illegal forward pass, but uh, there must have been some other type of a penalty. And uh, Minnesota recovers the ball on a loose ball. And they have an opportunity now outside of their own 20 yard line, which they haven't had for quite a while. First down and 10 at the 46. Hare, the quarterback, single setback, was small in motion. Hare passing. It's in and out of Small's hands. They're having a hard time catching the ball. They're having a hard time throwing it. And uh, uh, they've got a lot of players that they've used in this ball game now. They've got uh, quite a few different eye backs they've used. And, uh, Hare, I don't think, is quite as good a passer as Murphy. He's probably a little better runner, but I don't think he's quite as good a passer. Coach, the Nebraska record, in case you're curious, for rushing in a game, 677 yards against New Mexico State last year. We're not uh, close to that yet, but we may with eight minutes left. How about total yards? Let me check on that. It'll be a second out of ten for the Gophers here. The draw play, and they get nowhere. Total offense was also in that New Mexico State game last year, 883 yards, and I'm wondering how close we are to that now. Well, we've got to be getting fairly close to it probably not quite but uh, uh, we still got seven minutes and 25 30 seconds 37 seconds to go number 31 for Minnesota carrying the ball that time let me check my chart that is Kevin Wilson a freshman out of Aurora Illinois third down and long for the Gophers third down and 11 here the pitch back to small has a lead block but they nail him they're either going to call Nebraska for a encroachment going across the line too fast or they're going to call Minnesota for lineman moving on that play. It was a third down and 11 call. Small did not get the uh, first down yardage. If, if it's a penalty against Minnesota, I'm sure Nebraska will refuse the penalty. Yeah, here's Vance Carlson. Let's check the call. They refuse it. Uh, Minnesota is going to have to punt again. Blanchard, the busiest man in the field, will kick it away to Nebraska. Deep back for the Huskers. That looks like Fisher, number six. And I believe Paul Miles, number 21. The, uh, the Minnesota cheerleaders, not a lot to cheer about tonight. No, i tell you what, there's not many people left uh, to cheer for Minnesota here. Yeah, the ones that are here all wearing red. Blanchard gets off maybe his best kick of the night. Woo, this one takes him way back inside the 10. That is Shane Swanson up to the 15, and he's down there. That was a great kick. Six minutes and 55 seconds left of the ball game, and there's a flag on the play. Looks like roughing the kicker on the Huskers. Watch Blanchard. Gets the kick away. Here it comes. Guy Rozier well, ran yeah, into they, it. They could call it. They could call it running into the kicker. Yeah. Uh, and uh, let's see what Minnesota does. That was uh, they, by far, I think, the best kick tonight by Blanchard, a 45-yard punt. I'd be inclined to take the kick, unless it's a first down. Well, if it's a first down, then, then they have to take the they accept the penalty. Yeah. Vance Carlson trying to explain to the team on the field exactly what to do and what happened. At this point, it's somewhat academic. Huster's leading 77-13 to 13 with just under seven minutes left. Here's Vance Carlson into the kicker on Nebraska. That's only a five-yard yeah. penalty. Minnesota refuses yeah. the penalty first down. That's what I thought. They, 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 they wouldn't take the penalty unless it was a first down. And they do have the ball back here pretty deep in Nebraska territory. Nebraska's got uh, 85 yards to go to make it into the 80s. 
Let's see who's in there now for the Huskers. On a first down and 10 at the 15, I believe it is Sunberg still a quarterback. Paul Miles, the eye back in the slot. Brungard is the lone running back. Right. Shane Swanson split to the top of the screen. This is Brungard across the 15 to the 17. A reminder for you, Newswatch 7 follows the game tonight. Jerry Fannin will have all the news. Meteorologist Don Novak has the forecast. And Ross Jernstrom will show you all the highlights of tonight's game. And we will be back in Newswatch 7 for live interviews from the Hubert H. Humphrey Metro Dome here in Minneapolis. I think, Brun I think that <laughs> uh, the quarterback here, I, I would Did you see this, Coach? Miss Nebraska, one of the ten finalists in Miss America tonight. Yes. I was just going to say that I don't think they'll throw the ball much anymore when uh, Sunberg completed a pass to Swanson out here. I'd like to know where, how we got that era corn to do that. <laughs> Here's Sunberg throwing out to, I believe it's Ricky Simmons. Ricky hauls it in. First down and 10 for Nebraska at the 26 yard line. Porter now in at fullback. And I believe Paul Miles at eye back. The reverse play, Shane Swanson across the 30 to the 35. You know, Shane Swanson is a pretty good wing back. If he wasn't playing in the shadow of probably the best wing back in the country in Irving Fryer, uh, he'd be a regular on, on a lot of football teams. Yeah. Shane Swanson has really come on to, to be an excellent player. He got some time last year uh, behind Irving, but I think Gene Huey is putting Shane in a lot more this year, and Shane is responding. Second down and one, the kind of situation a quarterback loves. Craig Sundberg surveys the Minnesota defense. The give to Porter inside. He has the first down and more. First down and 10 for the Huskers. They keep the ball on the ground. Five minutes, 23 seconds left in this ball game. Scott Porter is the fullback that uh, carried the ball there. He's a six foot one, 225 pound junior. Nebraska City, I believe. Right. Yeah. His sister was a cheerleader last year. Right. His sister was a cheerleader, and his brother was a football player who was injured right. 10 years ago. Husker is now first and 10 Oops. at the 40. Ball's on the ground, and Sunberg falls on it. And, and there's a flag on the play. More of the Husker faithful. That is Craig Sunberg's family, ladies and gentlemen. Proud to see their brother in the ball game tonight. And Nebraska was called for a legal motion. There's Vance Carlson. Dead ball foul. Illegal procedure. Nebraska moving in the line. First day. That'll bring up a first down and long, I believe, for Nebraska. Sunberg, the quarterback. Brungard now in at fullback. And Paul Miles, the eye back. The give to Miles on the left side. He's got a hole. Turns the corner at the 40, and he's drilled. Right cornerback Kerry Glenn on the tackle. Uh, Glenn has played most of this ball game. Yes, uh, Minnesota is not giving up here. They're they're still hitting in there. Uh, Paul Miles has got tremendous speed, and if he got past just one more man, he was gone. This may be a chance for us to really take a good, long, hard look at Paul Miles. He could be the eye back of the future. He's only a sophomore. Rozier, of course, a senior. And Jeff Smith, the junior. So in two years, Paul Miles will be the man. Right, and he, he could uh, play a lot. Whoops. Fumble. Who's got it? I think Minnesota might have the ball here. It's very, I don't know what Sunberg got on. Uh, Minnesota has it. Minnesota recovered. picks it up. Looks like number 69 recovered the ball for the Gophers. Uh, this has been a kind of a bad exchange uh, between the center and the quarterback. That was a bad exchange there. Scott Tessier recovered the ball for Minnesota. They'll have a first down and 10, but they trail 77-13. We'll be back. I came to help you clear out your lot. Let's clear it all out during H.P. Smith's garage sale. This is the sale you've been waiting for. All of our models are marked way down. New cars, used, trucks. Hurry to the garage sale at H.P. Smith Ford. This weekend only, starting Friday evening at 6. Get a dog gone good Smith deal. H.P. Smith Ford, 50th and L. Last year, 90,000 high school graduates joined the Army. Some came for the challenge. 
some for the excitement, some for the new Army College Fund. For every dollar they put in, Uncle Sam puts in five or more. So after two years in the Army, they can have up to $15,200 for college. Call for your free booklet on the Army College Fund. You'll be in good company. In the Army. It's second down and ten for Minnesota. They try the draw play and get maybe a yard, an incomplete pass on first down. And the Gophers now keeping the ball on the ground. Three minutes, 57 seconds left in what has to be a long ball game for the Gophers. I think Minnesota here right now, are just they're trying to mix up their attack a little bit. They run some, they throw some. Uh, they're not going all out just passing like they did early in the ball game. They're running a little more well-balanced attack. They're not getting far, but I think it's better for them in the future. They got four on that play, third down and six at the 38. Hare looking to pass. To the right oh, side, it's picked it off by number 34, Tony Holloway. Holloway could go, has one man to beat. Holloway is tripped up. Linebacker Tony Holloway. Holloway stepped right in front of that receiver. It's an out pattern here. Uh, he shouldn't have thrown the football. Coach, let me check the player. That is not Holloway. That is 34, Todd Prophet. Holloway is 43. This is 34, Prophet. And a good interception. Prophet, a sophomore from Hartford, Connecticut, and the Huskers have the ball again. And they have it down deep in Minnesota's territory. First down and 10 for Nebraska at the Minnesota 19. Todd Prophet with the big interception. Paul Miles on the right side. He's got the lead blocking. 10, 5, and down at the 1. Ran out of bounds, just short of the goal line. You talk about the speed of Paul Miles, number 23, strong safety Craig White had to bring him down. And he got him at the one yard line. Paul Miles, good running back. What can you say? Yeah, the defensive back had a little angle on him here. This Craig White is a kid Nebraska tried to get. He's a senior out of Miami, Florida. He picked Minnesota over Nebraska. He's played a good game tonight, but he's been on the field an awful long time. He probably come up here because of the weather. Yeah, <laughs> Sunberg on first and goal. Takes it into the center of the line, and he scores. That is a lot of points. That makes it 83 to 13. Craig Sunberg, a simple little quarterback dive. And the Huskers keep pouring it on. You know, Bob, there's not much they could do on that. Uh, Minnesota threw the ball into their hands yep. and uh, they get it down that close to goal line. You got some good football players carrying the ball and blocking. Livingston's PAT is good with three minutes and six seconds left in the ball game. It's Nebraska 84, Minnesota 13. We'll be back. Hey. There's a hot time in the old town today. Z92. The rock. Lots of rock. New rock. Classic rock. Z92 is the rock. You know why? Because Z92 has some variety. New rock and classic rock. For hours and hours. I was with a guy who wouldn't let me push his button to Z92. I forget his name. Z92 is the rock. Omaha's hot time. Z92. The rock. You're going to like the freedom when a new day is dawning. You're going to like the freedom. Fresh coffee's here for you. In our neighborhood, we start our day with 7-Eleven coffee. We love the fast service and delicious blend. What a way to start the day. Come on, start your day with that great steam and brew at your 7-Eleven. Freedom's waiting for you. Back at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metro Dome, three minutes left in the game. And a familiar face among the uh, among the crowd tonight, Coach. Yeah. Nice kind of, looking fella. Kind of ironic here in the Hubert H. Humphrey Dome. You know, uh, on an ordinary situation, Nebraska would try an onside kick like they here because they have nothing to lose by doing it. Yeah, but Minnesota was, was penalized there, right. so Nebraska will kick it off at the Minnesota 45. But I think that they'll kick it up in the stands. Yeah, I think Schneider will put everything he's got into yeah. this one. But th this is a great spot for an onside kick if you need it. 
you saw that briefly, this is the right. most points ever scored in the modern history against the Minnesota Gophers. Small will take it at the 1 to the 10 and maybe the 12. Coach, ironically, Minnesota not moving the ball at all. In their last four possessions, they have lost a total of 10 yards. Right. They have they have been very ineffective. I, I, I think you, you might say that they've given up to a certain extent. I think there's there's a lot of effort out there, but I think as a team, they, they really did not have the zip that they had for a while. There was a while in the first half there uh, when they come back, scored a touchdown. The score was 21-7, and they held Nebraska for mm -hmm. three downs. It, they looked like they might make a pretty good ball game out of it. But since that time, it's just been getting uh, continually a little more futile. First and 10 at their own 12, they keep the ball on the ground, wisely letting the clock run out and letting the punishment end a little sooner. And I hope they're the officials, I hope the officials now, there's Turner down there waving at his folks and that on television. That's right. Turner saying hi to mom and dad in Fort Worth, Texas. Turner had a great game tonight. Right. And I, I, I hope the officials now don't be throwing flags around the ground too often here, unless yeah. it's something serious, because uh, there's no sense of that at this stage. Second and three for Minnesota. This is Small trying the outside. He's going to get the first down. Let's hope he stays in bounds. He goes to the 44. And that's the best offensive play that Minnesota has uh, ran this quarter, yeah. I believe. You know, one thing about this, Coach, Nebraska has played a lot of third and fourth teamers. But you go this deep, you're always putting fresh people in. Right. They may not have the skill level of the first teamers, but they haven't been worn down as much, and so they're ready to go. Right, that's true. Uh, you know, when you're playing at home, you can go down and you can put 85, 90 players in a ball game. Yeah. But when you're in the traveling, you, you've got 60 players, and uh, some of those are specialists. Yep. Give Ricky Green the tackle on that one. Gophers now first and 10 at the 45. They'll keep it on the ground. Small on the pitch play around the left side to the 50, the 45, and the 43. Number 22, that is Woody Page on the tackle with the help from Wade Preiner. One minute and 50 seconds left in the ballgame. Husters lead it. 84 to 13. The clock is running. We see Small again. Guy Rozier in there too. Number four, Mike Rozier's brother. Guy almost exactly 12 months younger than Mike. Product of yeah. six Guy, brothers. Guy is not a bad football player. This is Hare on the keeper. Ritter chasing him down, and Guy Rozier makes the tackle. That was a naked uh, bootleg play. I think he may have done that on his own. He had no help out there at all. There's a look at the Nebraska bench. They've got to be a happy bunch of guys. I tell you, Todd Fisher, number two, Mike Mc or Fisher, six, McCashlin, number two out of Lincoln East. McCashlin came in with a thigh bruise, but uh, he hasn't played hurt tonight. He played a good game as long as they kept that first team in. <laughs> Clock is winding. We are inside a minute to play at the Metrodome. Second down and four for the Gophers. They'll most likely keep it on the ground. They do. It's a draw play up the middle. And uh, they think they get a first down on it. Yep. 48 seconds left in the game. I wouldn't be surprised now. They might put the ball in the air here, trying to get into the end zone. Clock is rolling. 43 seconds left. We may see one, possibly two more plays, depending on what Minnesota does yeah, here. If they, if they decide to throw the ball, why... If they keep running it, well, I think this will be the last play. But if they throw, they might have another one. 30 seconds left in the ball game. Minnesota has a first and 10. Now Hare will pass. Throw. That's a, a bad choice. Well, that's picked off by number five, Ricky Green. Ricky Green with a good run back, and the Huskers have the ball again with 14 seconds left to play. And I, I don't think you see... Uh, too much effort on the part of Nebraska as far as scoring again. No, I don't believe I, so. I think that they will probably run one play or else just get out there and let the clock run out. Both teams have three timeouts left, but I doubt if they will use any. <laughs> 14 seconds left in the ball game. Good interception by Ricky Green. That'll help his stats. Right. He picked the ball off. It was a badly thrown pass, but Green was in the right spot. Husters will finish it out. Craig Sunberg, the quarterback. Porter is the fullback. And Paul Miles is the eye back. This is Porter up the middle. Ten seconds, nine, eight. That'll be the last play of the ball game. It's been a fabulous effort by Nebraska tonight. By far their most points in years. I think this uh, 
this Nebraska team is certainly a great football team, and I, I think that the next ball game with UCLA will be the first real test they've had. UCLA hasn't had a great record so far, but they're a tough ball club. But this certainly uh, was not a test tonight. The final score of the Hubert H. Humphrey Metro Dome, Nebraska 84 and Minnesota 13. Tom Osborne and Joe Salem talking in midfield. We'll be right back to wrap it up and give you the final statistics after this. Bookcase beds, colonial beds, modern beds, soft-sided beds, big beds, little beds, cheap beds, expensive beds, whatever style you're looking for, the Red Room Shop is the place. During our gigantic waterbed liquidation sale, prices went slashed on our entire inventory of quality waterbeds and bedroom furniture. Now you can have a complete waterbed, including frame, pedestal, mattress, liner, and heater for only $114.98. At the Red Room Shop, and we say prices have been slashed, we mean it. Hurry down today to the Red Room Shop, 970 South 72nd. Hey, what's going on? Been like this ever since Culligan started offering water conditioners for a low monthly rate. Oh, how low? That low? No wonder. I I'll get it. Now you can rent the best water conditioner made for a low monthly rate. It pays to call Culligan. Hello? Hey, Culligan, my young. To qualify, you must mention this Cornhusker special when you call your Culligan man. Why are more people turning to Newswatch 7? Channel 7, you know, they, they seem more professional and more sincere and more oriented towards, you know, the everyday people. I really like Dan Gray. He's uh, really professional. His uh, voice and the way he presents himself comes across very nicely on TV. I think everyone should switch to Channel 7. Carol Schrader, Dan Gray, Bob Cullivan, and Jim Flowers. Four good reasons why more people are turning to Newswatch 7. The office. Without organization, it is confused. A vast wasteland. Shepherd's Business Interiors creates a new dimension of work environments with steel case systems. Designed to breathe life into your inanimate world. Office potential converts to productivity as people and their environment reach full efficiency. Office systems for today and beyond. At Shepherd's Business Interiors, 42nd and Dodge. We are back at the Hubert H. Humphrey Metro Dome in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where Nebraska has just beaten Minnesota 84 to 13. Coach, look at the unofficial statistics. Nebraska 788 total yards on the ground, 592 yards rushing, 196 passing. What else can you say? Well, it was a great offensive effort. Uh, Nebraska's a great offensive football team. Uh, Minnesota's not a, a good football team, but I think Nebraska's going to run up a lot of yardage on most anybody they play. They're, they're a fine, fine team. Minnesota had 169 yards on the ground, 114 yards passing, 283 total yards. Here's an interesting stat. Nebraska punted three times. Minnesota punted 13 times. Huskers threw 15 passes. Minnesota threw 31 passes. I think the first two times uh, they had the ball, all they did was pass. They threw uh, seven out of eight times, mm -hmm. and uh, very ineffectively also. I, I think they they probably made a mistake coming out and just throwing the ball every time because uh, they weren't doing it, doing it effectively, and they, they didn't give the running game any chance at all. We'll stand by for the individual stats. Uh, quickly now Nebraska had 68 offensive plays Minnesota had 81 and third down conversions a very telling statistic Minnesota was one of 17 in third down conversions Nebraska seven of 11 and if you can convert it down like that you really can control the game right Nebraska had a lot uh, shorter yardage on third down Minnesota yep. were running third and seven third and eight and things like that uh, while Nebraska was more like third and one or two or three and, of course, uh, Nebraska didn't get into third down situations a lot of times. Mm -hmm. They made it right quick. Coach, I believe this is Nebraska's biggest win since your team beat Army 77-7. But let's look on the other side of a thing like this. Nebraska wins 84-13 tonight. They've got to play UCLA next Saturday. Can a win this big maybe be bad for the team? Well, I, I think it could be, but I, I'm sure that Coach Osborne and his staff will keep this game in perspective. And uh, I think all the players realize that uh, UCLA is a team that they've been uh, really, in their own minds, been pointing for. They know that this team will be the first real test. Uh, they thought Penn State would be, of course, but uh, I think UCLA uh, is, will be the best team we've played so far. And 
uh, well, I think we can beat them, why they're going to have to be ready because yeah. this is a team that could upset you if you're not ready. Coach, unofficially, Mike Rozier, 209 yards rushing tonight. He's the first Nebraska back to gain over 3,000 yards. Now, you've said he is the best back Nebraska has ever had. Is he the best in America right now? I think he is. I think Mike Rozier is the best running back. I watched O.J. Simpson and a lot of other great running backs. Uh, but I don't think there's anybody that, that can run that ball any better or, or as good as Mike Rozier. I, I think he's a great back. There's also a comparison drawn between Irving Fryer and Johnny Rogers. Irving had three touchdowns tonight, almost had a fourth one. Is Irving in the caliber of Johnny after tonight's game? Oh, he's definitely in the same caliber. Irving is fra uh, faster than Johnny. Uh, Johnny made a lot of big plays, and uh, but Irving it was a little faster, and and I I don't know it'd be very hard to choose between Rodgers and Fryer, but Irving is definitely in Johnny's class. You know some guys that don't necessarily get the attention, but being an old offensive lineman yourself, you really noticed it tonight. The Nebraska offensive line just blew Minnesota away. Now, this is a good line. It's a uh, line with not much experience. Dean Steinkohler being the only regular mm -hmm. returning. But I think this has turned into be a very fine offensive line. And there have been many, many plays where the backs have uh, gone long distance before anybody's even touched them. Yeah, Coach, we have the unofficial stats. Mike Rozier, 16 carries, 209 yards. Every time Mike Rozier carried the ball, he averaged 13 yards a carry. Turner Gill, three carries, 86 yards. Uh, Craig Sundberg, three carries, 50 yards. Mark Chalene, seven carries for 43 yards. Jeff Smith got 45 yards on nine carries. Irving Fryer, three carries, 91 yards. Going on down the line, Miles had 13 yards. Mason had 11. Swanson had nine. Brungard had six. And Porter carried for five yards. And you can't say anything bad about this Nebraska effort. I know this, this is the most yardage I think a lot of backs have gained that I've ever seen in a football game. Coach, I want to thank you for being with us. It's been a real pleasure tonight. Game kind of a runaway, but I had a great time up here. I enjoyed it, Bob, and uh, hope we get a chance to do it again. I want to thank our producer, uh, Ken Trinkle, our director, Steve Stamp, our spotter, John Rosenberg, and our statistician, Galen Lillenthorpe. Tonight's final score, Nebraska 84 and Minnesota 13. For Bob Devaney, I'm Bob Cullinan. Good night from the Hubert A. Tumphrey Metro Dome in Minneapolis. Tonight's game between the Nebraska Cornhuskers and the Golden Gophers of Minnesota has been an exclusive sports presentation of KETV Channel 7. Tonight on Newswatch 7, Ag Secretary John Glock talks about the future of PIC. We'll try to clear up the confusion over the switch of Omaha radio stations, and we'll go back to Minneapolis for post-game interviews with the Huskers. All coming up. Ford Escort. We made it with four-wheel independent suspension for a big car ride. We made it with front-wheel drive for traction. We made it with an efficient CVH engine. We made Escort very roomy and fun to drive. Day in and day out. And we made it in America. You, in turn, helped make Ford Escort the best-selling car in the world. Come in for a test drive today at your Metro Ford dealer. It's Sweet 98 Big Guy Bingo. Just five little bingo numbers could win you this classic Rolls Royce Bentley. Or play bingo for your very own Deauville Condominium by Hal Grove. Or bingo for a $10,000 mink coat from Cattleman's Fur Salon. Thousands upon thousands in Broadkey Jewelry. Cash, cash. Rec Room Shop and Richmond Gorman prizes. Listen to Sweet 98 now. Something that you planned for finally comes through. Everything you need in place and working hard for you. Life just got better. Life just got better. is KETV Channel 7. At 10 o'clock, it's Newswatch 7 with Jerry Fannin. Sports with Ross Jernstrom. And weather with meteorologist Don Novak.
Good evening. The payment in kind program used to help American farmers this year probably will not be continued, at least for most crops. U.S. Agriculture Secretary John Block, speaking in Omaha today, says PIC will be a one-time only effort to reduce crop reserves and boost farm prices. A lot of people are saying that what PIC was supposed to do, Mother Nature did better as far as cutting crop reserves. The heat and drought across the Midwest this summer will cut deeply into crop yields. Possibly because of that, PIC will not be around next year for most farmers. I think the PIC program can be useful in the case of wheat. And we're going to have a, and have announced a PIC program for wheat. I would uh, say that we will not have a PIC program for feed grain. I think that our supplies are tight enough there that a PIC program would be unrealistic. Twelve Nebraska counties in the southeastern portion of the state will apply for federal disaster loans. One qualification for the 8% loans is a 30% crop loss per county. Block says he expects most farmers within those counties will qualify, although he says each farmer's financial ability to pay back the money will be taken into consideration. Federal officials say farmers will have a safety net of crop insurance and the PIC program to fall back on. On another matter, just how seriously was a grain embargo considered in retaliation for the Soviet downing of the Korean jet? Not very, says Block. The president is clearly committed that he would not single out agriculture in economic sanctions. Uh, I think that the uh, record and the history of the Carter grain embargo clearly points out to us also that the United States is the net loser when these kinds of sanctions are imposed. Block was in town today to attend a fundraiser for Congressman Hal Dobb. Two U.S. Navy ships off the coast of Lebanon today fired on Drew's artillery positions. That's the second time the Navy has backed up U.S. Marines stationed near the Beirut airport. Syria claims some of the shells hit territory claimed by its troops. A Syrian radio broadcast says if that happens again, they will fire back. Soviet Foreign Minister Andrei Gromyko will not attend the United Nations General Assembly session in New York. For the first time in 25 years, he won't attend. Moscow says the United States is refusing to ensure the safety of Gromyko following the Korean airliner incident. ABC's Paul House has more on the Gromyko cancellation. In response to decisions by state authorities to ban the Soviet UN delegation from landing at New York area airports, the Kremlin canceled Foreign Minister Gromyko's trip later this month to the 38th UN General Assembly. In violation of generally recognized international norms, the United States authorities do not give the guarantees that the safety of the head of the USSR's delegation to a session of the United Nations General Assembly will be ensured and that normal conditions in this respect will be created. White House officials see Gromyko's cancellation over landing rights for his civilian plane as an excuse. And Kansas Senator Bob Dole agrees it is part of a continuing diplomatic well, game. I think there's a lot of very visible public relations going on. I assume this is, uh, this is pretty powerful uh, symbolic gesture on his part. He may not come because he's not certain where he can land or if he can land. I don't think it'll make any great difference if he doesn't show up for a while. The foreign minister customarily uses this visit to make a major policy speech and to confer with U.S. and U.N. officials. But here in Washington, officials say Mr. Gromyko would be more than a little uncomfortable in the audience when President Reagan addresses the General Assembly. One sure topic, KAL Flight 7, a case Mr. Reagan says is far from closed. Paul Howes, ABC News, Washington. Two Blair, Nebraska men were killed overnight in a head-on collision in Cass County. 46-year-old Charles Rowe and 22-year-old Tom Smith died when Rowe's car crossed the center line on Highway 7375 north of Union, hitting Smith's car. A passenger in one of the cars was taken to an Omaha hospital in good condition. Also, a Nemaha County man was killed when his pickup truck hit another vehicle near Schubert, Nebraska. A 60-year-old man, still unidentified, died in that accident. Well, there have been some changes made on the Omaha Airways. That story when we come back. Covered wagons rolled down Omaha streets in 1863. We know because we were there. The first then, the first ever since. The first Nebraska bank to finance livestock loans, offer a night depository, and lots of other newfangled services. Today, we're still the first. 
the first bank to offer discount brokerage services and a plus system banking card good nationwide. The first National Bank of Omaha. Still the bank Omaha calls first. Member FDIC. Take a look at the reports on Toyota. You'll discover experts say Toyota is quality. And Old Mill Toyota can offer more selection and lower prices. That's why we're the number one Toyota dealer in Nebraska and Iowa. Shop around if you like, but if it doesn't say Old Mill Toyota, you're probably paying too much. I'm, I'm ready, ready for, for a, a test, test drive. drive. Thanks. Thanks. Just, Just doing our job. job. Old Mill Toyota, 108th and Dodge. Discover the difference in a Jimmy Swagger Crusade. The spontaneity, the inspiration, the music that touches the heart, and the uncompromising message of hope that can make a difference in your life. Discover the difference for yourself. The Jimmy Swaggart Crusade, Sunday mornings at 7.30 on Channel 7. While most of us slept last night, Omaha Radio underwent some changes. Two stations familiar to country music fans are no longer what they used to be. Stu Nicholson explains what happened during the night. In just a minute, we'd like you to invite you to turn your radio dial to the left to 590 and listen to our first broadcast at WOW. At this time, KYNN Omaha signs off the air. We welcome you to the new 59 country. And I ask you, are you ready for the country? And, uh, we had a lot of listeners who had dialed down to 590 and uh, were happy to see us there. They, uh, Some people were listening to us from a greater distance than we had normally been accustomed to on the 1490 frequency, and uh, they seem to be happy we're here. Simply put, what once was KYNN at 1490 on the AM dial is now WOW, 59 Country. The same KYNN crew, the same KYNN country music, the same KYNN studios, but with WOW's name and WOW's old frequency. Great Empire Broadcasting, the new owner, made the move because... Most of the radio stations uh, on the AM dial are located at the upper end of the dial, towards the 1490 frequency where we were before. And because of this, even a higher powered radio station doesn't have the opportunity to reach out as far, as far as the signal is concerned, because there's so much interference with the other radio stations that happen to be at that end of the dial. But you can take a radio station like WOW, which has 5,000 watts at 590, and uh, it virtually has the largest signal, or the farthest reaching signal, in the state of Nebraska. All that's left are largely cosmetic changes, like replacing everything lettered with KYNN with the new WOW call letters. But not everyone gets the message. A lot more things come. A lady a little while ago asked about the farm programming at KY or at WOW. I keep wondering, I'm going to say KY, and I'm not going to get it out of my system right here. <laughs> For Newswatch 7 at 10, I'm Stu Nicholson. Now, the former KYNN frequency of 1490 now belongs to Albemarle Communications. It will be called 15 Country, using the same call letters. The same format will also be retained, as will a lot of the old WOW staff. KYNN FM at 94 on the dial today became WOW FM to be consistent with its AM counterpart. Exarban hosted a rodeo today, but the Broncos being busted weren't long, were long blue and silver, rather, with rubber tires. For the sixth year, metro area transit drivers participated in a bus rodeo, the object being to navigate the buses through some tight maneuvers under the watchful eyes of local lawmen acting as judges. To compete today, drivers had to have at least a year of service to Matt and have no accidents in the past year. Some drivers say the man-made obstacles are a lot like those they encounter on the streets every day. You run up on different obstacles while you're driving out on the streets and what have you, closed corners and cars parked close together and what have you. You have to squeeze through them without damaging anything. So it's, it's got quite a bit to do with it. First place for today's competitors meant a trip for two to Las Vegas. That lucky driver was Charles Milan, a five-year veteran of Matt. Ostrich races in Papillion and the Sunday forecast from Don Novak and we return.
country's full of bad men. And the meanest of them all was old man Stress. His crime was cattle stressing during shipping, handling, and sudden weather changes. But his luck ran out when the REO S700 hit town. Now our cattle keep on gaining, because REO S700 keeps them on feed and profitable. And whenever old man Stress shows up, we'll be ready. Jerry Redding, president and director of research for Nexus Products Company. Nature itself is the ultimate miracle. It is here that the Nexus products for the hair and skin came to be. Is your hair brittle, oily, too thin? Ask your hairstylist for the Nexus formulation best suited to your particular hair and skin care needs. It took me over 50 years to find it, but it'll only take you a few pleasant moments at your favorite salon to discover the magic of Nexus for yourself. Nexus! When your prescription records are needed in an emergency, Walgreens Intercom Card could save your life. When you need a record of prescription expenses for insurance or taxes, Walgreens Intercom can save you money. When you need a refill but don't have your prescription vial or number, Walgreens Intercom is all you need. It's professional pharmacy service at its best. Pick up your free card with your next prescription at Walgreens. Western Airlines has taken its schedule and torn it apart to give Omaha business a new way to travel in the West. We'll take you to more than 37 cities throughout the West with schedules built around your business day. Call your travel agent or Western. Our new service for Omaha will make a difference wherever you fly. Western Airlines. We've got a name to live up to. Just a gorgeous day outside. We're inching back up towards summertime temperatures. Is that going to last? Fortunately, no. I'm no. not a summertime lover. I like fall, and we're going to get back into fall gradually over the next couple of days. So take a look at our current conditions right now. Clear skies both in Lincoln and Omaha. Temperature in Omaha, 80. Lincoln, 73. Relative humidity is starting to drop off. Now a trough has gone by. We have a relative humidity of 49%. Winds out of the south at 6. Barometers rising from 29.56 inches of mercury. As we look at radar right now, 125 nautical miles, we're not showing any precipitation echoes at this time. The watch that was posted earlier, the severe thunderstorm watch for Iowa, has terminated. No severe weather reported during the evening hours this evening over in Iowa itself. On the national map, what we have is a frontal system that's been inching its way southward during the day. It's moving very rapidly across the northern plains. And uh, they even had some snow showers reported on and off at Cut Bank. Uh, Montana during the afternoon hours, perhaps some heavy snow in the heavier mountains or the higher mountains up there during the evening hours tonight. The uh, north of this warm frontal system in Iowa, they had some heavy rains during the morning hours with some severe thunderstorms, gusts of 60 miles an hour at Mason City, four and a half inches of rain at Gillette Grove, Iowa, and uh, that was only in a 30 minute period, so it was fairly heavy. Off towards the east, some scattered showers continuing ahead of the front, also some spotty heavy showers along the Gulf Coast itself. Back in our area then, what I expect is this front to continue pushing very rapidly eastward, but very slowly southward. I think most of the cold air is going to slide to the north of us, but gradually over the next couple of days, we'll start to see some cool down. Today, though, the problem was the southerly flow, hot winds. As we look at the computer, we can see high temperatures today, quite warm. A band of uh, 60s and 70s off towards the north ahead of the warm front, but the rest of the region, 80s, 90s, even a few hundreds down off towards the south. Grand Island, 98 degrees, tied their record for this day. As looked in at the uh, Almanac, officially the low temperature was 57, the high in Omaha 89, the only reporting station in Nebraska not to climb into the 90s. No precipitation in uh, Omaha, sunrise and sunset for tomorrow is on the screen for you. For tomorrow on the computer then, what I expect, the frontal system will be slipping south during the morning hours, but it's just hanging up down there during the daytime hours tomorrow. Showers off towards the east and to the west, but in our viewing area, becoming partly to mostly sunny during the day with temperatures a little bit cooler in the uh, upper 70s to lower 80s. Details of my latest forecast then look like this. Partly cloudy, breezy, with a slight chance of some showers during the nighttime hours. I wouldn't look for too much, wouldn't hold my breath. Low temperature dipping down to around 60. Winds will be shifting to the northwest at 10 to 15 as the frontal system goes through. Then for tomorrow, mostly cloudy in the morning, partly cloudy in the afternoon, a high of 84. Then tomorrow night, Generally look for partly cloudy skies with a low of 62, and then on Monday, partly cloudy with some increase in cloudiness during the day, a chance of showers late, and a high of 75. The rest of the week right now looks like this. Generally speaking, some showers possible late Monday and Tuesday with a high of 69. Wednesday and Thursday, partly cloudy, but the temperature is dropping off to quite cool levels.
which is normal because the first day of fall is what, Wednesday? It should be Wednesday, I guess. That's right. Okay. Thanks, Don. Okay. They raced on ostriches in Papillion this afternoon, but not all the ostriches had a good time about it. Mary Fellow says some ostriches just weren't cooperating at all. Ostrich racing is new to the Omaha area. It's fun and exciting, but it can be a little dangerous. The, the dangerous part of an ostrich is the fact that they can kick forward. They, they can't kick you from behind, but the forward kick is, is a danger. Plus, uh, they don't have any teeth, teeth, of course, but they can peck at you, which doesn't hurt. Ostriches are notorious for the strength and meanness. After one race, an ostrich crashed the fence and roamed the festival grounds, ending up three miles down the road in a bean field. It took about 15 guys to circle him and just kind of move in and, and get him toward the truck, and then he walked right in. They were just looking for ostriches to rent, but ended up buying them from an animal trainer in Missouri. There are many other attractions at the family festival being held in Papillion this weekend, but the ostrich races continue to be the main attraction. <laughs> it was it was funny. What do you think of the birds? I like them. I thought it was pretty nice. Are they neat birds? Yeah, pretty big. For Newswatch 7 at 10, I'm Mary Fellows. We'll return to Minneapolis to hear from the Huskers next in sports. Plus, Ross Gernstrom will bring us up to date on all the college action from today. Household Finance is backing the Raymonds. We always dreamed that our children would go to college, but it's hard being a parent and still have that balance between loving and letting go all at the same time. If your homeowner's looking to your family's future, Household Finance wants to back you with a homeowner loan that turns equity into capital for your goals. We're here today giving folks a chance, backing you all. Why do 100,000-mile flyers choose United? When I travel, I don't like stops any more than the next guy. Neither does United. That's why United has more non-stop flights to the coast than any other airline. For a little extra, you can enjoy your meal, do some work, and arrive a lot earlier. Take a United non-stop to the coast. United has the only daily non-stop to Los Angeles. Life already has enough ups and downs. People who fly for a living fly United's friendly skies. Introducing the new, rich, roasted taste of Brin decaffeinated coffee. So fill your cup to the rim. In 17 years, we'll enter a new century. To be ready, we need to develop our skills right now. A group of Omahans has organized the ICANN conference to help you prepare for the year 2000. Workshops and lectures planned by training experts for ICANN 83 run the gamut of personal, professional, and organizational topics that are provocative and relevant to the Midlands. To be a part of this exciting future, join us at ICANN October 11th through the 13th. For information, call 399-9146. Minnesota, Minnesota turned out to be not even the slightest bit of competition for Nebraska. Were you at all surprised by that? Oh, no, not at all. I think everybody thought that the score was going to be Maybe 64, <laughs> maybe 13, but not 84 points. I don't think a lot of people expected that. Bob Cullinan is standing by live at the Metro Dome in Minneapolis with more on the game. Bob? Ross, uh, it is raining outside now. I'm with a couple of the, the refugees from the Nebraska team. Middle guard Mike Tranmer and wingback receiver coach Gene Huey. Mike, Minnesota did not present you guys with many problems defensively. Well, no. Uh... They, they, they had a pretty good offense, but you know, I think we shut them down pretty good. Did they seem to give up? No, I don't think so. I think they really tried all throughout the game as far as their offense is concerned. Now, they showed a different quarterback in the second period. Hale came in instead of Murphy. Did that give a different look, present any problems, or was he similar as far as your defensive looks? Well, as far as I was concerned, I didn't even know they had a different quarterback in the game. And to us in the front line, it's just a matter of getting back to the quarterback and, and trying to sack him. You really seem to pressure him all night. Was that a goal of this defense to, to get in there and put the heat on him and, and take them out of their game? Sure. You know, anytime a, a team like Minnesota, they throw a ball a lot. And, you know, the defensive line has to, has to get in there and pressure him, if not make the sacks, at least pressure him to throw it quickly or something like that. Let's be honest. We all thought you'd win, but 84 to 13. Yeah, that's I didn't, I had no... Nor in my mind did I think it'd be like that. I, it, thought, I thought it'd be a really tough game. Coach Osborne prepared us 
for it to be a tough game, and, and the offense kind of sputtered at first, and I really thought it was going to be a close game all the way through. Was it fun out there? Oh, yeah, definitely. Super. Next week, UCLA, how do you feel about them? They're going to be tough. And be similar to these guys, except they're going to be a lot tougher. Okay, Mike, thanks for being with us. Let me move Gene Huey, and I'll let Good. you get on the bus and try to stay out of the rain outside. All right, thank you. Gene, uh, offensively, Nebraska couldn't do much wrong tonight. No, they couldn't. I thought we played very well, and we played a lot of people. And seemingly, we could not stop them from scoring. You know, you put your seconds or thirds in there, and with the uh, limitation on travel squads and so forth, sometimes you have to leave your seconds in there a little longer. And they're all hungry, trying to uh, get their place in sunshine, so they end up running the football uh, downfield and scoring. We had several touchdowns were called back. Um, mm -hmm. Irving Fryer has to realize we're not playing on Penn State fields. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> in reference to him stepping out of bounds inside the five he twice? He had a couple there, and you know, one was close. Now, I know he stepped out over on our bench, but the other one on the other sideline was questionable. I thought he was in and had scored, but they marked him out on the one-yard line. So uh, he had a couple called back, and I think he scored about three or four and uh, had about 250-some yards. Uh, all purpose mm -hmm. as far as receiving and, and running the football and returning the punts and kickoffs. Irving's coming in here. Irving, can we, can we get you for a minute? Uh, you want to say anything to Irving about stepping out of bounds here? Irv? Step out of bounds. You, you didn't step out of bounds? No, I didn't step out of bounds. What happened on those? <laughs> it just called me out of bounds. Yeah? I, I hit the line um, in the end zone, but I was through the end zone. And he just said I stepped out of bounds. Still a pretty satisfying win. Did you ever think it'd be 84 to 13? No. <laughs> we just go out and do the, try to score every time we get the ball, try to do the best we can, make a few errors, and uh, you know, just happened to turn out that way tonight. Gene, a question for both you and Irving. You're up in the press box calling the plays. When you've got such a lead like that, do you call plays that will deliberately play into their strength? And as a player, Irving, are, are you that sharp? Let me ask Gene first. I want to know if you both keep trying to punch it in all the time. Let me qualify that statement a little bit. I'm up there suggesting plays along with Mel Tenniper and I okay. on offense, and Coach Osborne calls the majority of them, but we do suggest some, and, and once in a while we get a few calls. But uh, we see things that we think will work, both running and passing, and we try to get those called. And, and Coach Osborne did a fine job, as, as, as you all witnessed. Uh, and, and play selection and so forth and they came out early and tried to run some uh, split six defenses on us and even fronts mm -hmm. and running their backers through and ran a few traps there and scored uh, quickly and got them out of that and settled them down a little bit their second half where they balanced up their uh, defensive front and didn't jump around so much so we knew where they were going to be which enabled us to run our offense a little bit more and, and certainly put some more points on the board. Irving I'm going to ask you was this your best overall game do you think? Oh yeah definitely. Aside from stepping out? <laughs> yeah definitely I had a lot of fun out there too like um, Coach you were saying, you were saying that, uh, you know, we try to run at their strength. Yes. But um, one of the other reporters asked me if, you know, we didn't want to run the option today because we didn't run it that much the first mm -hmm. quarter. Well, Coach Osmond was such a smart man. You know, we try to run certain plays to set up certain things and to see what, how mm -hmm. to, um, you know, stunning and how to blitzing mm -hmm. and things in certain plays. So, you know, we just ran plays like that up the middle at the strength just to set up the option and other plays like that. You probably had the best view of anybody on, on Mike Rozier tonight. Mike had 209 yards, the first back ever in Nebraska history to go over 3,000 yards. you got to make everybody proud. Well, like I said, I gave him a name last week, Michael Heisman, and I hope he sticks to it. I'm going to keep on pushing him. Coach, that's a question I've got. When, when Nebraska is up so far, and really the game is out of hand and Mike is still in there. Is that an effort to get the stats for Mike or does he just need the repetitions? Certainly not. You know, we can't go in there and take a kid out uh, uh, the first quarter because he put 21 points on the board. Uh, he has to at least stay in a, in a half to three quarters and, uh, and play and, and stay sharp because, you know, you get up against UCLA next week and if you go in there, he's only played a half and he may get in there and fumble a couple times or not be as sharp reading stuff up in the, uh, in the line as far as his cuts and so forth. So we're not trying to run up the score on anybody. It's just that uh, you have second and third units. You're, you're limited in your traveling squad, and those kids come out hungry uh, to, to, to produce and, mm -hmm. and do well. So you have your second and third unit backs running uh, like Mike Rozier ran when he's fresh. So uh, we were not trying to run up any score. If we were trying to run up the score, we'd probably have thrown the ball a little bit more, which made some of our receivers a little bit more happier. <laughs> but I was really pleased with the way they all got downfield, uh, particularly Ricky Simmons uh, did some fine things downfield blocking, which got a couple people in the end zone, a couple touchdowns scored there. Shane Swanson, the two tight ends, Frayne and Engelbritson, and along with Irving, uh, certainly had, uh, I think, three or four touchdowns there, and a couple of them called back. Yep. So I was pretty well pleased with the way they produced downfield and blocking, and that's what helps those running backs like Rozier and Smith and the rest of them get in the end zone. So they did a pretty good job tonight. Irving quickly winning this big, 84-13. Is that good or bad going into UCLA next week? Well, it's good. We're going to go in. We know UCLA is a good team, and we're going to prepare hard for them. We'll prepare just as hard for Minnesota as we do for any team. It's just a matter of getting better every week.
Irving, thanks for being with us. Congratulations on the win Thank tonight. You. Coach Huey, thanks for being with us. Let's get on the I, bus I and stay you, out of the I'll rain. Tell you what, this is like, uh, I think I need a Coleman stove in this tent. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's raining outside. <laughs> Try to stay dry. I'll see you on the bus. You can catch it. Okay, Gene Huey and Irving Fryer, Nebraska wins it 84-13. to Ross, uh, I know you've got the highlights, and you've got to enjoy another look at those. Live from the Minneapolis Metrodome for Newswatch 7 Sports at 10, I'm Bob Collinan. Thanks, Bob. Good job with the play-by-play. Still, Nebraska has yet to be tested. The top-ranked Huskers made it look easy as they beat Minnesota right here on Channel 7, 84-13. to 13. 12 minutes, 50 seconds left in the first From their score. own 21-yard line, Mike Rozier takes the ball and finds an opening downfield. Rozier cuts across the field and goes all the way down to the 27-yard line of Minnesota. The run covered 52 yards in all. Great run by Mike Rozier. Almost 20,000 Nebraska fans are at the Metrodome. On the very next play, Mark Shalene goes up the middle for a 27-yard touchdown run. The extra point was no good. Nebraska led 6 to nothing. Minnesota came out passing quarterback Greg Mer Murphy looks for a receiver, but Scott Strasburger sacks him behind the line of scrimmage. Then the Nebraska offense started to explode. Turner Gill hits Irving Fire along the sidelines and watched the Husker wingback race 67 yards for the touchdown. The Huskers were now in front by the score of 12 to nothing. Nebraska decides to go for two points. Gill rolls out and hits Fryer all alone in the end zone. It's now 14 to nothing, Nebraska. The Gill to Fryer combination is hot, so the Huskers go to it again. This time they connect for a 72 yard touchdown across the middle. The Huskers now lead Minnesota by the score of 21 to nothing. But the Gophers came back on the next series and scored on this one-yard touchdown run by David Puck. The scoreboard now reads 21-7 in the second quarter. But Irving Fryer isn't done. Gill pitches to the New Jersey native and watch Irving go 42 yards for the touchdown. Nebraska now leads 28-7 over the Gophers. Great run by Irving Fryer here. The Huskers' black shirts played super tonight. Murphy goes back to pass. But Jim Scow, a sophomore out of Omaha, Ron Colley, tackles him down at the six-yard line. After a punt, long punt return, quarterback Nate Mason gives the ball to Jeff Smith, and he runs in for the touchdown. Nebraska is now in front by the score of 35-7. to Still in the second quarter, Turner Gill rolls out to his right and finds an opening downfield. He can't outrun the secondary and is pulled down at the 15, a 48-yard run by Gill. Then from the seven-yard line, Mike Rozier scored his first touchdown. Nebraska leads Minnesota 42-10 to at the half. Then in the third quarter, Nebraska drove downfield and scored on this one-yard run by Rozier. It is now 49-10, to Nebraska. Then from the Gopher 13-yard line, Gills rolls left and keeps the ball himself. He fights his way into the end zone to make it 56-10, to Nebraska. Now watch this run by Mike Rozier. He breaks loose for a 72-yard run. Officially, Rozier finished with 209 yards on 16 carries, almost 13 yards every time he carried the ball. That touchdown put Nebraska up by the score of 63-10. to In the fourth quarter, with the reserves in, Craig Sunberg goes back and hits Jeff Smith for a 52-yard touchdown. The Huskers were now in front by the score of 70-10 to over Minnesota. It was the second TD of the night for Smith. Later... In the fourth quarter, Sundberg rolls out and keeps the ball himself. Watch the junior quarterback from Lincoln Southeast go all the way for a 44-yard touchdown. Nebraska now leads 70-10. to The last touchdown by the Huskers was this sneak by Sundberg. That made the final score. Nebraska 84 and Minnesota 14. What a game. We're glad you saw it here on Channel 7. The UNO Mavericks open the North Central Conference season tonight at South Dakota. Let's take a look at the score in the game. At the Dakota Gome, UNO beat South Dakota 17-10. Randy Duran passed to James Quaid for a touchdown with 28 seconds left in the game to win it 17-10. The Mavs are now 1-0 in the conference. They are 2-1 on the season. We will have all the highlights tomorrow on Maverick football at 10:30. Half of the teams in the top 10 lost today. Oklahoma, Auburn, Michigan, Notre Dame, and Florida State suffered their first defeat of the season. In Norman, the Sooners just couldn't stop the arm of Ohio State quarterback Mike Tomzak. For the day, Tomzak completed 15 passes for 234 yards. Here he hits John Frank for the Buckeyes' first touchdown. Then, in the second quarter, he tosses another TD to Frank. Marcus Dupree left the game in the second quarter with a bruised knee. Ohio State went on to win the game 24-14. In its first contest of the season, Texas beat Auburn 20-7. The Longhorns used an 80-yard touchdown pass here and a 66-yard punt return to make a 
20 to nothing halftime lead. Auburn's only touchdown came with two minutes left. The Longhorns should be ranked number two in the polls next week. Looking at the top 20, Ohio State over Oklahoma and Texas over Auburn. In other games, Michigan State upset Notre Dame 28 to 23. It's Arizona 45 and Washington State 6. Elsewhere, Washington beat Michigan by 1.25 to 24. Tulane shocked Florida State 34 to 28. In other games, North Carolina beat Miami of Ohio. Clemson and Georgia tied 16 all. Elsewhere, Alabama beat Mississippi. Iowa down Penn State 42 to 34. The Nittany Lions have now lost three games. In other games, USC leads Oregon State 33 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Now that's in the fourth quarter. Florida beat Indiana State 17 to 13. Elsewhere, West Virginia beat Maryland 31 to 21. Vanderbilt beat Iowa State by the score of 29 to 26. In other games, Wisconsin beat Missouri 21 to 20. TCU lost to Kansas State 20 to 3. Elsewhere, Kansas beat Wichita State. It was Syracuse, Nebraska's opponent in two weeks, 35 and Northwestern nothing. Tonight, Arizona State and UCLA, Nebraska's next opponent, tied 26 all. Oklahoma State beat Cincinnati 26 to 17. In other games, Illinois beat State.